Good morning. It is day two here of World Champs in Altenburg. This is the FIL Studio Show. My name is Kate Hansen. Happy to join you. You know how this works. So let's take a look at where we are. Well, actually, wait. Let me let me talk about the day. Yesterday was a wild day. Day day one here in Altenburg, we had our sprint championships. It was a big day because in the morning they had qualifications. They had to go home, do all their steel work, and then come back for the sprint champs. And it was just a one-run bomb. So we had some crazy winners uh, that came through. Uh, Natalie Mog was off the top of my head from Switzerland. She had an incredible day. Love talking to her afterwards. Maybe we'll run the interview later on. But we'll show you highlights of those in just a second. But let's get to today. So... Today's a normal, well, I was going to say it's a normal World Cup. It's not World Cup. It's normal World Cup standard racing, okay? So we've got two runs. Uh, women's doubles are going to be first. We started here yesterday uh, on day one. This is our beautiful double start. Now you can get the full view of kind of what's going on. Uh, usually in World Cups, they will have the men and women go together for the doubles, but there's just not enough space for everybody. It's too big of a party, so they switched it all up. So we've got women first. Uh, we'll get into that in just a second, but let me take it. Let's take a tour of the start. Uh, yesterday we weren't really able to walk around, but today we've made it possible. So let's take a look. So we've got coaches ready. Good morning, uh, everybody. They have their sleds out. They're doing the sled temps. You know how it goes. Same thing every race. Um, but let's go take a look at the start. We're gonna do a little navigating here. My camera guy Bob. Good morning, Tony. Good morning. How are you? How are you feeling? Oh, excited. I mean. Uh actually excited uh, maybe also a bit nervous okay, yeah okay. maybe because it's not so easy when yeah. you, you want to help sometimes right when you see they need to steer different and then i always like move with them but yeah, it don't yeah. works but the rain yesterday to hard ice today does that like mess with people's minds at all i think it's a much different track today because yeah. the ice will be more flat at the surface yeah scary it's gonna be fast and scary. Oh, no, this is what we want. This is how we want to slide, right, and race. Yeah. And I think for the athletes, it's great conditions today. Yeah. I mean, we are a bit more lucky with the weather, and they, yeah. I'm more than sure that uh, Ralph Mende, with him whole team, make a great job. I talked to him the other day. He's a fun guy. He's a good guy. He is crazy good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's good. Also, I just want to say congratulations on your fourth place yesterday with your girls. That was a, that was a big deal. That was their best finish. Yeah, I mean, we had some troubles yesterday in a sprint for the creation, right? Yeah. And for this, the girls made it good. Yeah. Good momentum. They got time. They'll figure it out. Yep. They got it. I'm rooting for you. See ya. Bye, Tony. Um, that was Tony Egert, uh, now coach for Team USA, but he was world champion year in doubles for Germany. His bottom man was Sasha Benikin. Um Yeah, so this is his first year out of retirement. What a retirement job, becoming a coach. Um, okay. Thanks for chatting with us, Tony. This is kind of how this is going to go, because if I like pre, if I pre plan interviews, people don't talk to me. So I kind of just got to sneak up on them. Um, let's see if we can get in here. Let's navigate through all this. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. We're showing the start. I'm so sorry. We're making you famous. We're here to make you famous. OK, we weren't able to show the start yesterday, so we're showing them today. OK, this is the start. This is where the magic happens. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? You stay here, I'm gonna go around the other side. So normally, I'm so sorry guys, yeah, I'm gonna come I, around. Yes. Hello, good morning. So, normally on a race day, or just on a practice day, none of this is here. Like it's just a start on its own. Um, they, but they set it up for the camera, for the glitz, for all the things. Um, what I think would be helpful is why don't you stand right there and you can get a look down this bad boy so you can see the angle of this start curve going into this first curve. So this is a start that comes in in the middle of the track. Um, there's a lot of curves that happen before this, but this start curve has a really sharp angle. Um, it's pretty tough to get around it. I, think I can find someone to talk to about it because you really have to hook pretty hard to get into it and it's a really sharp steer. Um, actually, can I ask you, Alex? Okay. Alex Goff, we talked to her in Whistler, uh, Olympic medalist from Canada. But now, wait, are you jurying? Are you? Jury. Jury. Okay. Do you remember this start curve? Or like, do, I know you were like a junior when you did it, but I was trying to explain. Enough team rallies. <laughs> okay, okay. Perfect. This is perfect. We want to talk to you. Okay. 
how do you get into like can you explain to people that have never been on a sled like how to get into an awkward curve like this like and is it does it ever get smooth or is it always just hard um this one's not too bad um you want to set yourself up on the right side of the ramp and then the timing of like when you start to cut the corner is usually kind of as that right wall ends um, where the the Y starts um, to come together um, and then it's just a sort of increasing like steer like we call it a cut because you're steering on the flats and cut to the corner and then just sort of try to absorb the the profile when you hit it and then smooth out your your line around so this one's more doable you'd say than other shark curves on the circuit um yeah yeah it's definitely one that's doable it's a bit tricky to get it right um but something like segulda is rougher brutal very brutal <laughs> do you when you were sliding did you like altenberg Actually, I'm going to guess. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I feel like you would just because you're you're that good of an athlete where like every, like for me, this was a terrifying track. And I feel like I keep saying it on the studio show because I want people to understand like it's, it's, everyone. It's a challenging track. They make it look so easy. <laughs> I don't know. There's There's been some, some rough rides this week, but uh, it's a challenging track and it's a challenging jump from one start house to another. So as you come up, um, from junior to senior, um, you have to jump from junior start to women's start or women's start to men's start. Um, and it, it definitely increases the challenge in the track, the, the start house jumps here. So, um, you know, it's, it's a fun track when you get it right. It, and it can be really challenging when you don't. Really, really challenging. Some really great crashes, some that you'll never forget. Okay, I'll let you do your job. You're jurying, you're hanging out, get a cup of coffee, live your life. I'm just going to show you really quick. Oh my gosh, there's our ice guy. So Tony was just talking about Hans Menda or Rolf Menda. Um, everyone calls him Hans. This is the guy that makes the ice. I'm talking about you, Hans. I'm talking about you. Um, this is the guy that makes the ice like incredible. He's also just a funny and just a nice guy. So this is a scraper. Let's get into, let's get into track work. So this is a scraper. This is what you when the ice is too built up you want to it's almost like sanding it down um almost like filing your nails too a little bit so he'll get in there he's trying to make it even and make it smooth um and then they will shovel this out of the way and then they will run water over it and kind of spritz it and make it nice so the ice is so good this weekend because of this guy right here i know it was raining yesterday there's not much you could do but Today, he's working his magic. It's kind of interesting. As I'm like getting closer to it, it's kind of like been built up a little bit. So he's, he's scraping it off. And it's really important to make sure that it doesn't get down the track. So we gave you a nice little intro of what's going on here at the start. Um, what we're going to do, I'm going to show you the highlights from yesterday. Bree Schaff, our commentator, uh, two-time Olympian from Bob Seven Skeleton. She did our voiceover for it. So we'll come back right after this. But thanks for joining us on this intro. Welcome to my, welcome to my hood uh, to show you what's going on. So uh, here are our highlights from Bree. Day one of the 52nd FIL Luge World Championships here in Altenburg, Germany saw tons of action and upset, especially for the home track athletes of the German team. Latvia's Bots Bloom took home the first win of the day in quite an upset set over Eggert Benekin. They flew down the ice early in the start order, which helped them as the ice continued to frost up throughout the day and the podium continued to shuffle as the day went along with a different country winning each race, kicked off by Latvia. Two Austrians followed up the top three there with Italy in fourth and fifth place. Not a German to be seen on the podium, which is unheard of, especially on a difficult track like Altenburg, Germany. In the second race of the day, the rain started to come for the women. Natalie Mogg of Switzerland laid down a blazing run. Potentially her best performance of the season was sitting in first place, but then it was Germany's Julia Taubitz who flew down the ice, 
cheered on by busloads of fans on her home track and the relief on Yulia's face as she crossed that finish line and saw that she was in first place. It was excitement, but you could tell that the pressure was mounting here. One of the few athletes to nail that exit of 14 to 15. Taubitz set the pace and was the only German to win on home ice here in Altenburg. Massive celebration with hometown crowd and dear friend Natalie Mogg and training partner as they both got to celebrate being on the podium for the first time ever. Top three was rounded out by Alina Vitala of Latvia. And again, in the men's race, another big shakeup. We watched Austrian after Austrian come down and pack that potential podium, but it was David Gleischer of Austria who managed the very tricky exit of 14, a splashdown pool there that sent so many sleds hydroplaning and skidding out. It was Max Langenhahn that everyone was watching on home ice, but he could not pull the win over David Gleischer of Austria. Christer Zapriots, again a Latvian, rounding out the top three, the podium here at World Championships. Massive crowds on hand stuck around for the final race of the day. It was women's doubles. Again, sliding in the rain, managing treacherous conditions as they back, popped back and forth between Frosty and slick on this ice, but it was Italy's Vetter Oberhofer, the fourth different nation to win a race here in Altenburg. Dagenhardt and Rosenthal, the hometown favorites, had a wild ride dropped way back, and it was Vetter and Oberhofer that pulled off the first World Championships medal for women's doubles this weekend. Young Latvians rounded out that podium. Massive performance this weekend with Latvia, Austria, and Italy winning more medals than Germany. Is this how you imagine a family business with over 150 years of experience? We have to disappoint you. We are Eberspecker. We shape the clean mobility of the future and inspire our customers with smart solutions. Developed and produced by dedicated people around the world. Eberspecker stands for reliable automotive systems and components. Our aim is to offer the best quality in every application. And therefore, each of our products reflects our passion. Eberspecker, driving the mobility of tomorrow. Friendly heating with renewable energy. That's what the name Hagasna has been standing for for four decades. Maximum heating comfort, innovative technology, and lowest emission standards. A heating system from Hagasna can be recognized by one thing above all decades of reliability. Whether pellets, logs, or wood chips, change to a biomass heating solution by Hagasna. Biomass heating technology. Okay, we're counting down to the race. I just want to point these things out really quick. I won't take too much of your time, but it's nice to be at the start because we get to see all these little contraptions that people use. So they're doing lots of pole things. They're getting warmed up. This was a cool one over here. Uh, Laura Kip was using it. I don't know if we can see it. Sorry, we're shooting this right here. 
this is like a pole, like a whole pulley system that she was using. Uh, so they bring practically like their own little gym uh, to come get ready. So yeah, Laura Kip was over there with Austria. Uh, Egla Kip, her partner, Egla, Selena Egla, uh, they're doing really well this year. So let's take a look at the top 10 of where everyone's ranked. Uh, we'll see kind of the backstories of what's going on going into these world champs today. Five races down, seven still to come on the Aber Special Luge World Cup in women's doubles. Now it's several nations that have been dominating the podium all year, but some of these first numbers you see, 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th place, these are teams that are starting to make their move and gain a little experience in this still brand new discipline. As for those top six, it's a couple of Americans in sixth and fifth place. Forgan and Kirkby with a podium in the last race. Then it's the new team of Deanna Eitberger and Saskia Schirmer just off of the podium for the moment. But then the three teams that have dominated this year as they did last year, Egla and Kip, then Vetter and Oberhofer of Italy, and the defending world champions, Rosenthal and Dagenhart from Team Germany. Okay, we're just a few minutes away from the world's feed. I'm going to send it over to my girl, Bree Schaff. She's our commentator of this weekend, two-time Olympian with Bob and Skelly. Uh, Bree, what do you got for us going on today? Good morning, Kate. I'm here with Argentina's Veronica Ravena, and we are very excited to see how things play out this morning. So, Veronica, we were talking about before we came on air here just how wild the women's doubles race yesterday was. So what do you think? How is that going to play into today? We had two very young Latvian teams bounce onto the podium. I think, I mean, the weather today is a lot better than it was yesterday. So having a later start number for our let's call them favorites yeah <laughs> really didn't help them out as much as we probably hoped but the weather is cold it's really dry and i think it will the track will keep up and it will just be whoever has the fastest run. that's a great point the fast ice is the great equalizer but we did see quite a toss-up yesterday but it was really fun to see a different nation on top of the podium for every race back to you kate All right, thank you so much, Bree. Uh, have a lot of fun in there today. Um, so heading into today, we just they, she was just talking about the weather. Yesterday I got dumped on. Yesterday I was a wet dog at the end of the race. Uh, my jacket was just soaked all the way through. I learned my lesson. I wore a hat today, so my hair doesn't get just so wet. Um, but yeah, it is colder. We were talking to Tony Eggert at the beginning of this show, uh, just what the weather's doing. So they've had such a fluctuation of ice conditions. They were here for a training week uh, last week. It was cold ice, and then this week the weather has just kind of been all over the place. I've uh, been throwing them for a loop. Yesterday was dumping absolute rain, of making it a slip and slide on the way down. And then today it's dry and it's cold. So uh, we'll have to see if these women can keep up with their consistency. Um, it really is tough when the ice conditions change because you'll set up your sled for certain conditions. You'll set up your certain angles and your parallel for certain conditions. So it really, you kind of got to be a weather woman, got to be a weatherman looking into the looking into the conditions for today. So, uh, so what's going on is that they're keeping their bags on. So usually when it's warmer weather, they'll take the bags off. They try and acclimate. Uh, the temps sooner, but right here we've got Team Latvia checking their temps and then they'll adjust after that if they're going to take the bag off or leave it back on. Uh, but everybody's kind of hanging out. We had some women warming up over there. This is, <laughs> this I see this at every race. This is the Latvian training thing. And they get these red lights and you have to hit the lights as fast as possible. I see the girls do it and it looks so hard. And I told the, the Latvian trainer, I was like, one of these days I want to try it. Uh, it just, we'll see how I do. He checks the stats on his phone. So maybe one of these days we'll, we'll get it on the studio show. We'll show you how, we'll show you how least reactive I am uh, as an athlete in retirement. So anyways, let's get going into this race. Women's doubles coming right up. Uh, our world championships today with Altenburg day two. So we'll see you at the bottom. We'll check you at the finish after this run.
Good morning and welcome to the 52nd FIO Luge World Championships here in Altenburg, Germany. This morning we are kicking things off with women's doubles. In fact, the last athletes to go yesterday, the fourth race of the sprint, now they get to begin the day with what I would call ideal weather conditions. I'm your host, Bree Schaff, so pleased to be joined by Argentina's Veronica Ravena. So, Veronica, we were just discussing how the weather is going to help the athletes out in the race today, at least make things a little bit more even keeled than yesterday. Yeah, luckily we have a pretty small field. There's 16 of them. So by the time the first and the last go, we're hoping the track conditions stay pretty much the same because it is quite dry. It's quite cold out here. So hopefully the track will stay the same for all the athletes. And here we have our point of view camera. Veronica, talk us down the track. Yeah, so that start can be a little tricky, especially for the double sled because it's two people trying to turn it around. And then here will be, I think this is where most of the problems will come in corner nine. You really have to try to create a lot of pressure, but going from so far down, there is no pressure. And then Altenburg's infamous Kreisel. It's, I believe, one of the only fully 360, oh, never mind, I see that's not a fully 360 Kreisel. And then it lines you up into two very tricky corners as well. So from double start, it definitely is quite a fight the whole way down. And then here you're going into three left-hand turns, which honestly, most of the times it feels like one, maybe two, but it is three full corners. And then there we have our finish line. And Veronica, I could have sworn that it's a full 360. And from what I remember from my sliding days, it feels like a 720. <laughs> it feels yeah, like I, you're just going around and around and around. I totally thought it was a full 360, but seeing it from that POV, it doesn't quite look like it, but it's, it might have just it's been pretty the close. A look at our start list today. We have 16 women's doubles sleds in order from different seated groups. We have We'll start off with our smaller third seated group, on into the second and the first, where our top athletes will be going later in the field. And like we were saying, not as bad as that would have been yesterday. A bit foreboding in the rain, but today we have nice cold ice, clear conditions. The clouds are moving, they're threatening, but so far holding off. The first sled of women's doubles at the World Championships here in Altenburg from Germany, Elisa Marie Stroch and Pauline Patz. Yeah, they're one of the younger German doubles. We've had the luxury to train with them this year for the first time. But I mean, they're really solid and I mean, just like any German sled, give them a year or so and I'm sure right. they'll, be, they'll be at the top of that seeded group. And it's funny because I was about to say it's a great opportunity for them, but with Germans, they've been, you know, and especially in Luz, you guys have a, a junior national circuit. So by the time athletes come to the top stage, it's not necessarily new. It's just a little bit bigger. Yeah, they're, they're looking quite nice. They had a little hit before Kreisel, but they were able to control it pretty well. Um, I mean, they're looking quite solid down that straightaway. When it gets windy, it can be a little bit dangerous, but... Oh. Yeah, because you get the wind that comes from the left, but then it pushes you over to the right. And that can send you too, too early on a 15. Yeah, we've had quite a few crashes yesterday. If right. Yeah, and out of 14 was really rough yesterday with that splashdown pool. Yeah, for the for the sprint, yeah, it was that, that little area, and it, you just get all that speed, and yeah, it's Brutal. The pace has been set by the young German team. 42.98 is the time to beat. Their speed was 105.5 kilometers an hour, top speed. Yeah, it's nice to see the ice looking shiny. There's that yeah. little hit before Kreisel that it just it messes you up so much. Yeah, because it's not just putting you late, it's sending you in the wrong direction. Like you do not want to go pointed down in a Kreisel when you'd rather be going up. Yeah, and then you just have to fix that loop and the most important thing on Kreisel is just making sure that you're high at the at the end. Back to the top of the track. In the Czech Republic, Anna Chechikova and Lucy Yansova. Yeah, again, another set of quite young doubles. Um, they, they used to do singles, and now they're in doubles. Even the beginning of this week, they trained just in singles as well. But, I mean... They've been pretty solid in every place they've gone, which is amazing to see. And they got a nice exit to Kreisel. And Both athletes come from Usti, 
in the Czech Republic. And like you said, great to have them out on tour in expanding the women's field. Yeah, it would be amazing if we could see some more Czech athletes so they could get their relay. I feel like the women's doubles has been the yeah. hardest to get, and they only have the women's doubles. But, oh, wow, they're only one-tenth behind the Germans. Very that's, close to Germans really on good. home ice. That's great. And this, you know, of course, is the track. Altenburg, Germany is right near the border of Czech Republic, so chances are this is their home track as well. Oh, that's so cute. I'm so happy. Like you said, if you, within a tenth of a German team on home ice. And they beat their start. Oh, they did. They did. That's Strong start, 6.026 compared to Stork and Potts, who were 6.045. It is, I feel like it's needed to say when the start time is that long, you are including the first corner. Right. So it could also depend how you cut around that corner, yeah. but regardless, Take it's a really shortcut. good to see. <laughs> At the top of the hill from Team Ukraine, Natasha Kretenko and Victoria Koval. Yeah, let's see how they cut that corner. Yeah, they did pretty well. You want to make sure that you don't kind of double pump, we say, that first corner. Uh. Just kill your time. And they had a bit of a skid. Oh, I mean, they were able to get it under control, but I guess you have to remember we were training in eight degree weather all week. And then you wake up this morning yeah. and it's minus three or so. Right. It was, did you at least have cold weather the week prior? Because you do get two weeks of internationally called an international training week prior to world championships. Was there cold weather two weeks ago? We had, I think, two days that it was cold, that it was yeah. really cold. But most of the week it was really warm. So, I mean, for some of the athletes, it'll be their setup, like which steels they use. But for some younger athletes, it's you know, how sharp they are, and that will make the difference between skidding around or feeling like they're right. nicely stable on the ice, so. Third place for the Ukrainian team. Uh oh Oh, she got it. <laughs> and for example, Veronica, so you didn't get to train on any cold ice. This is the first cold day, so are you going to just be kind of guessing with your setup for your race tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, we're pretty, we're pretty safe on the side of yeah. World Championships. Um, so I think we'll keep it as is, but we'll have a chat with the coaches later right. to see their suggestions. Dropping in from Latvia, Victoria Zadina and Selena Zvilna, both from Riga. Beautiful town, just an hour away from their home track of Segulda. There we saw in nine that little bit of a lift. That's what you're going to want to look out for. If any athletes don't get that little lift at the end, that's how you know you've done that. Right. And it's tricky, especially because women's start is a little bit lower, so you don't, you know, these corners are built to go full speed from the top of the track, so it adds an extra element. Oh, that was quite late in there. But oh, but they're in the green so far, leading over Stork and Potts. I think it'll be tight at the end. Zadina and Zvilna, a tenth our new leaders. That was amazing considering they had, they had to fight out of 14 to yeah. keep it as metal as possible. Yeah, the corners are definitely built, as you can tell, in most tracks they're built from men's start. Um, luckily from Lady Start, nine isn't too big of an issue, but in the beginning of last week, a lot of athletes took some runs from double start to prepare for team relay. Oh. And we had a lot of big hits out of there. Really? So it's it's like a different corner. I was wondering that. So the, now the women's doubles are, uh, all four disciplines go from different starts, right? So for the team relay, does everyone go from women's double start? Yeah, so okay. I, I believe the women's doubles and the men's doubles okay. all go from the same place. That makes sense. Um, I think there was an exception last year or the year before, just because it was such a new field. Yeah. But yeah, so everyone will go to whatever the lowest start is. On the handles, a fantastic story from yesterday. Bronze medalists in the sprint event, the young Latvians, Marta Robiznica and Kitia Bogdanova. Oh, she looks quite uncomfortable lying down. You just heard her sled uh, the ice. Still half a tenth ahead, though. So. Right. Yesterday, they had that running start. Oh, no! Oh, no. Little warble there. That, Got it back under control. That might be, you know, the ice is so much harder. They just lost grip. Drew, actually, you make a great point that the ice was so grippy yesterday that might have made it 
given given an opportunity for younger teams, you know, who don't have to adapt. Ha oh no! Oh, that is a tough break that coming off of a bronze early. medal. Oh gosh. And unfortunately, the track doesn't really look like it, but it will start to go uphill. So, oh poor girls. But they both seem to be okay. That's kind of the most yeah. important takeaway. Oh, that's too bad. And we were just saying that the ice conditions are so different than yesterday. They had pretty much a choose, choose your own adventure track. Wherever you wanted to go, you could put your sled. Yeah, and what it probably was is they were pushing to try to get a medal in this race as well. So they, yeah. maybe they put their sled a little Ooh. bit too risky. Yeah, that was out of nine. And once you start skidding, it's, it yeah. just hits your confidence to know that the sled's not holding on. Right. Just a little bit too early, oh. and that transition just flips you right over. Yeah, rolled in to corner 14. I'm glad she was able to get her foot inside. It always makes me nervous when oh. limbs come out the track. Yeah. Yeah, it's one thing to crash in a bobsled and tuck in there, but, oh, doubles luge. You're so exposed. They're both up. They're both walking, which is Good great to see. to see. Not easy to walk on ice in your luge booties. But, I mean, at least they're, they're walking away yep. with a medal from this world championship. Yeah, so. huge. They're also quite young, and they're, at, at, like, they're competing with some amazing doubles team. So hopefully they can take that confidence right. into next week. Tough break for them. I don't believe they passed the finish eye, so they, oh, they will not be getting a second run. Oh. Quick check from the medical crew. I imagine a lot of these people might be their family, so it's, it's always nice to have your family around yeah. after a bad race. It certainly is. Back to the top of the track from Team Poland, Nikola Domovic and Dominika Pikowska. We've been training with them a lot because they train with us as well. And oh, okay. They're such, such sweet girls, and they really do give it their all in every track that they go to. So it's really great to see to see them have a good race yesterday and be happy and would you say they consider this their home track as well or would it be Segulda? I I honestly I don't know. I feel like Poland has been training with Germany for as long as I can uh, remember. Right. So they kinda join us and we do like four or five days at each track in the preseason. Yeah. I think they're really hoping for just some nice solid Oh, no. Oh, there we go. See oh, that? wow. And it's again that skidding. But they were able to get a nice entrance into Prizel. Hopefully, you know, they're able to control the loop. And yeah, that was a pretty solid exit. They got things back under control, but they are in the red behind our leaders, Zadina Svilna. Yeah, I mean, that Latvian couple were pretty pretty on set. Yeah. So I think they'll have to be pretty perfect to, for anyone to catch up to them. A little tap after the finish line doesn't hurt, but fifth place for Domovic and Pikowska. All out of corner nine. And that was a really interesting pressure pull. So usually you build some pressure in a corner and you might get pulled left, sliders left there out of nine, and they just kept tapping the right wall. Yeah, what happens is if you don't create enough pressure in the last part of nine, you'll kind of see the sled go down, and then, I mean, what goes down comes back up, right. and they just catch that last little bit, and it just throws you against that wall. And then you just see their sled skidding. Oh, and it keeps getting direction over. Well, you're meant yeah. to you're meant to try to just drive it back into the wall so you don't bounce around. Right. But with the ice this hard and with no speed and no pressure, I think their sled just broke out. On the handles, silver medalists from the first World Championship race of the weekend from yesterday's sprint, Latvia's Anda Upita and Zane Kaluma. Yeah, and I used to slide singles against Anda when we were juniors. Was oh! She was a solid singles athlete, and now she's proven to be an even more solid doubles, doubles pilot. And I mean, their nine was pretty perfect. Let's see their exit, Kreisel. I mean, a little bit of direction, but 
after seeing everything else. I feel like it's pretty good. Yeah. They're coming off of a great race yesterday and looking online three tenths ahead of their teammates currently to take over the lead. It is going to go Latvia, Latvia, Germany. With a track record. With a track record. Ooh, 42.33. Yeah, that was a pretty, pretty perfect run. You know, for silver medalists yesterday, this could hold. They've got, you know, as you said, the ice isn't going to deteriorate too much, but they could hold that lead for the rest of the first run. It is, of course, a two-heat race. Yeah, the ice, I mean, I thought it was going to keep up. It's not looking super shiny. Yeah. But it's so humid here. There's just the clouds are moving. It could deteriorate a little bit. I know the ice mice, I mean, the track crew here are just, if there's something beyond experts, <laughs> they, yeah. they know how to keep it fast for a fair race. And there's so much fanfare built up around this world championships. It is really cool to see how the town of Altenburg has gone all in. Speaking of all in, Raluca Stramaturaru and Mihaela Manalescu of Romania, the most experienced athlete on tour. Stramaturaru is just focusing on doubles this season. Yeah, I mean, both of them have had stellar singles careers and to see them on doubles, it's amazing what they're doing. They're crushing it every run. And also, if you ever talk to them, they're always happy. Everything's yes. always good, which is really nice to see, especially, I mean, it's like a completely different sport. They've gone from having all the control to now driving a double-decker bus. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, their run is looking super clean. They finished ninth yesterday. Let's see their finish time. Clean run, ooh, fifth place, just behind the Czech Republic. Yeah, I mean, their run looked super clean. Unfortunately, sometimes it's just a case of the equipment. Right. But, I mean, between the two of them, I think they did almost as good as, at least from my side, yeah. as they could have done. Which, I, sometimes it's even more frustrating when right. you do everything and the time's just not there because the equipment's not there. Or the tra I mean, the sled before them had a track record, so I right. don't want to say it's the track. Right. Right, slim chances the ice slowed down over 60 seconds there. But, you know, sometimes too much control does slow you down. To the top of the track, from Ukraine, Olena Stetskiv and Alexandra Mok. Another uh, successful singles athlete turned doubles pilot. Yeah. I mean, they kind of had to do that when now in the team relay you had to have the women's doubles. They just kind of took successful athletes and they're like, let's give it a shot, let's yeah. give it a go. Wow, already one tenth behind the start. That just shows us how amazing that Latvian doubles were. Right, this pair finished 12th out of 15 yesterday in the sprint. A little loopy in Kreisel, but hopefully they're able to get out of oh, it. Oh, oh no! Oh, no. Oh, the pressure just pulled them to the wall. But at least they've got a nice early entrance there. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they managed to stay down, that's pretty impressive. Oh, another little tap. I feel like they won't be too happy with this run no. at all. Hopefully their time isn't too bad and they're able to catch up. They'll get a second run, but they are 1.7 seconds behind. That is eighth place for Stetskiv Moch. It's so hard when you know you can do better, and yeah. I know I know they can do better. So they'll just be looking for a second run just to prove, to prove they know how to slide this track and they know how to get down top to bottom. Right, see where you land in the rankings. That will, this will, yes, the next heat will be their last run unless they pass their teammates for the team relay. But not last run for the season. We are coming back to Altenburg next weekend, so there will be a redemption weekend for everyone that struggled at World Championships. If two weeks wasn't enough, yes. we get three. <laughs> yep, three weeks in Altenburg. Which I feel like, honestly, sometimes it's better to take less runs. Once you start getting nitpicky, oh, yeah. that's really when it all just goes downhill. World champions in the sprint from Italy, Andrea Vetter and Marion Oberhofer from Brixen and San Candido, respectively. Again, I sound almost like a broken record, but another very successful, yeah. these were both very successful leash athletes, now partnered together into what seems like the dynamic duo. 
They're having a fantastic season. They're podiumed in every race except the Lake Placid Sprint. Yeah, I mean, they're looking great. They're looking solid. Ooh, a tenth off of Opita and Kaluma, though. That was a little middle into uh -oh. 14 than I would have liked. But yeah, you saw that little bit of a consequence, but I mean, it's looking like a 90% run, but. Right, they'll have their work cut out for them nearly 15 hundredths behind Opita and Kaluma, but we do have a second run coming up. Yeah, for anyone to beat those girls, they'll have to be next to perfect. And I mean, they had the advantage of going pretty early on the field, so. Yes, and we still have Degenhardt and Rosenthal to come, Germans that are going to be very eager to make up for a tough race yesterday. Yeah, I think all of those girls that are coming up now, they started pretty late in the sprint, so they had the consequences of right. not only not, ice. not the great ice, but that little bit of a pool out of 14 where you just hydroplane and it's also an uphill section, so you have no pressure. You're just hoping for the best at that point. Just six sleds remain in the first heat of women's doubles. I'm your host, Bree Shaw, joined by Veronica Ravena of Argentina. And we have Jessica Dagenhart and Cheyenne Rosenthal looking for a comeback run after a difficult race yesterday in the sprint event. Yeah, this is Jesse's home track. So if anyone knows That's so this much track, pressure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she knows this track inside and out, but mostly from the ladies' start. Right, right. So it's... Uh -oh, oh, oh, no! Gosh, I think that happened yesterday as well. It's that corner nine. It was quite funny. I was yeah. talking with Norbert before coming here, and he was like, it's all going to be about nine. Wow. And it really... And it, I've heard that it is cut extra difficult this year. They are two tenths back. Degenhardt hails from Dresden, a gorgeous town, just an hour west, northwest of Altenburg. Yeah, I mean, the rest of the run looks pretty great. But Ooh. with that hit, they just they kill yep. all their speed. Third right place. Four. They'll have their work cut out for them. They are a quarter of a second back. But I mean, it is Altenburg. We, it is. We never know until all the sleds have crossed the finish. Right. Anything can happen, right. as we saw yesterday. Yeah, we still have some top teams to come with Eichberger, Shermer, Forg, and Kirkby. Yeah, you just see that little too much pressure at the end, and it just it throws you. There's, I don't know, it feels like almost maybe a little bit too much ice out of nine. Mm. I mean, yeah, that fall. I mean, the buildup, you can see them falling off of the corner. If you don't have the control of pressure, it's really hard to get things back after taking a hit on that wall. It's a long straightaway if you've taken that hit. <laughs> on the handles from Team Germany, looking to make up for yesterday as well, Diana Eitberger and Saskia Schirmer, who were just off of the medals, fifth place in the sprint event. And it's amazing to note, this is their first season together. Yes. I mean, when you take an athlete like Diana, it's, you know, that sled is, is destined for greatness, but it does take a little bit of time. And the fact that they're doing this amazing after we're not even one season in yeah. is super impressive. And I'm sure Diana has been sliding. Oh, oh, no. She's that been sliding for 23 years, and I'm sure she knows that it's just going to take some time, and this is the learning season. And, you know, to be ranked fourth overall halfway through your learning season is pretty good. Yeah, like she definitely said it. it's, it's completely different. But, I mean, I think if anyone can do it, Diana can do it. And Saskia is also. She's an amazing athlete as well, and she's really giving it her all. Throwing down. Oh, they found some time at the bottom. Third place just ahead of Dagenhart Rosenthal, their teammates. That's, yeah, one just over a tenth and considering their exit nine. Yeah. I think if they're able to clean up that exit nine, they'll give the, the Latvians a run for their money for sure. 
There, there, there's quite a few th teams thinking about exit of nine going into the second heat. I think everyone, honestly. It's just so delicate of a steer there. That's it's, it's one thing if you know that you need to go in and crank it to get out of a corner, but it's the timing is so nuanced in corner nine. And you just, at least for me personally, I can't feel when I'm low through the middle of nine. I can yeah. just see it when I when That's I start the thing, going when there's up. not a lot of pressure, it is really hard to feel. It's a big open corner. It doesn't have a lot. There's not a lot of, maybe I'm making this word up, concavity <laughs> to the corner. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really hard to create that height. From Team USA, Siobhan Forgan and Sophia Kirkby. I believe they've been a doubles team for quite some time, actually. Yes, so they have. It's quite funny to go from Saskia and Diana that it's their first real season right. together to Sophie and Chevy, but... Siobhan was born in Adelaide, Australia. Sophia comes from Vermont. But this is a new generation of athletes that have been sliding doubles for quite some time now, ever since it was added on to the Olympic menu for the next games. Yeah, they've, I feel like they, yeah, they've been going for a couple years now. They were juniors as well in doubles. So they definitely have that bond, that partnership down. Losing a little bit of time. Yeah, Chevy, she, she looks a right little bit there. uncomfortable, but I mean, that's Altenburg for you on cold ice. Currently third, did they hold that third spot? Oh, dropped a little bit at the end, 2200s back, but they are right in the mix. Sandwiched between Eichberger Shermer and Degenhardt Rosenthal. Yeah, I mean, Diana and Saskia managed to find some speed at the bottom, which is quite a hard thing to do because it is an uphill section. Yeah. So hopefully that will we'll be able to ride that up. That's the home track fun, the home track advantage, finding time at the bottom when others typically continue to bleed. There you see her just cutting ice. Yeah, big spray coming out of nine trying to counter. But a great job. It helped them a ton not hitting that right wall out of nine. Slider's right. Yeah, and then they had that, that time to be able to bring it over to Kreisel. Just three, three sleds remain. This is Austria, Selena Egle and Lara Kipp. Another doubles team that have done amazing. Yes. Third place currently overall. Fairly young at 21 years old, but they finished eighth yesterday. They struggled, so we'll see if they can have a better run today here in the first heat. Yeah, they're, uh, they're poor parents at home watching, Oof. both her and her sister. Yeah. Her sister Madeline slides in single, so they don't get a single day off the stress. But, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're pretty solid sisters. Very talented family and a nice exit of 14 there. Yeah, they are the, currently in second. They're looking really solid here. Through and down, three hundredths of a second behind Upita and Kaluma. This is a very exciting race, just ahead of yesterday's winners, Vetter and Oberhofer. Yeah, I mean, three hundredths, it will be anyone's game in the second run for sure. Very exciting second. I feel like it's sometimes such a frustrating second place, though, because you're like, if I'd pointed a little bit yes. more, like, it's so close. Right, as you're trying to figure out when you've had a nice clean run like that, and you're trying to figure out how to find more time for the second heat. It's good. Do I tighten my ponytail? Do I? Yeah, three hundredths of a second. And like, I don't. I couldn't even grasp an example of that in real life. What would be three hundredths of a second? It is faster than you can blink. Deciding these races. On the handles, second crew from Team USA, Maya Chan and Rhiannon Weiler. Maya comes from Chicago, Rhiannon from Whitesboro, New York. Yeah, they've also been doubles for quite some time, which I think gives you, it gives you so much strength. You know that you can trust your doubles partner. And let's see, let's see how they can manage nine. We need to keep an eye out for the exit, see if they dip. Mm -hmm. Oh, really that was steered. really good. Now you could hear that steer. It's not often you hear a steer in luge. No, especially with some nice hard ice, but yeah. sometimes it's better to Crank cut it. that little bit yeah. of ice than risk that. They had a beautiful line, but they're already 1500s back. They've got a very clean looking run, but you can see how much that slowed them down. Yeah. Nice. Oh, oh no! 
That Spoke too soon, 1700s back, but they are still in the mix, hovering around fourth place right now. Let's see. Drewing down, fifth place. Almost two tenths off of our leader, Pita and Kaluma. Oh, that Latvia. hitting at the end. It's, I think, one of yeah. the worst places <laughs> to hit. Those hurts. walls hurt so much. You have that very brief moment of relief that you're done, and then bam! And with three left-hand turns, yeah. that left-hand pressure is so intense. They are sitting just three hundredths ahead of their teammates, Forgan and Kirkby, and struggling to get out on that steep hill. It is a steep outrun here. It is, and it'll also be, it's kind of a race within a race, because whichever, if a country has more than one, whichever doubles team ends up ranked higher usually gets to do the team relay, which is, I think, everyone's favorite event. Yes. And a very exciting to have for the first time four teams in the team relay, adding women's doubles to the mix. Our final sled, Heat One from Team China, Digemo Giulianati, and her teammate, Jiang Zhao. It's, I feel like we should say the first 15 sleds did go from seated group, and then the preliminary run, which is anyone that's outside of the seated group, right, has a bit of a race to see who gets to go first, but unfortunately they were the only sled. Right. So 16 sleds out of 15 seated. They got the last start number. And I know they struggled quite a bit here in the past few weeks, so, I mean, they had a decent nine, nice exit prizel. I think they're just looking to put down two solid runs that they can be proud of, and I mean, so far, so good. Right, they did not compete in the sprint event yesterday because only the top 15 made it. They were 16th, ooh, dropping. Uh, would you say dropping a coup? I always say dropping a runner from Skeleton and Bobsled. Yeah, I don't think we really have a word for that. We, we don't see <laughs> we don't, it too we often. We don't do that. <laughs> That's not a thing in Luge. They are through and down. Place. That's amazing. Yes. They're Ahead of five sleds, a great run. They will be happy, especially considering they didn't qualify for the sprint event yesterday. Great first team for Team China. Yeah, it's always, you always feel a little bit when there's 16 sleds and 15 qualify. Yeah. You're almost hoping that they just add a spot. I know they can't do that, right. but. Big smiles for Team China. Yeah, her head's a little bit high, but I mean, sometimes you're just aiming for clean top to bottom. And I mean, 10th place, that was amazing. From early on, Upita and Kaluma led the race and they held on just 300s back as Austria's Egla Kip and yesterday's gold medalist from the sprint event, veteran Oberhofer in third. Diana Eiberger and her teammate are the highest ranking German team on home ice, but things are very tight. Eiberger's only 1700s out of first place. Stay tuned, we're gonna take a little break here for some track preparation on behalf of my co-commentator Veronica Ravena, we will be back soon to complete and crown a world champion in women's doubles. All right, run one for women's doubles is over. We're in between. We got about 30 minutes before they're going to take their next run. Uh, one thing I like about Altenburg is that they have this lovely TV screen with times. Um, this is really nice for me to look at, so I can kind of see like who messed up where, what's going on. So let's. I'll talk you through what I look at. So. Latvia in first, pretty incredible. Uh, I was talking to Zane Kaluma at the top and she was saying she was nervous, but it was a good nervous energy. I don't know if we can see it very well on camera, but I will talk about it. So like they had a third place start, which is pretty good, but this is what I want to point out. They were first, 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 first. So they just kept gaining time, uh, really had no mistakes. Like you don't necessarily even need to watch the run to know how it went. Um, so for Austria, a little bit of a slower start. Uh, 300s back there were a six place start but then they gained it about midway down the track and then it was clean so they're only 300s back 
uh, from the start. They definitely have some time there. Um, and I also think they're a little heavier on the sled. Uh, third is our world champs, our sprint world champs from yesterday. Had a first place start, but then it looks like they just had a mistake. I'm guessing that would be around curve nine. I, I didn't watch. I'll have to look back and see if I'm correct. But once you have a mistake at the top of the track, you just end up bleeding out all the way down. It's hard to gain back that momentum and that time. Um, this is the team that everybody's watching for, Jessica Dagenhart, Cheyenne Rosenthal uh, from Germany. They are the hometown heroes. They had a third place start, but then again, it looks like they had a little mistake uh, in the beginning, but they were able to kind of catch up towards the end. So like, if the track would have been a little longer, I'm sure they could have made up more time, but it's just kind of interesting looking through. Um, and yeah, and then Germany in fourth, USA in fifth, they got fourth yesterday. Anyways, I know numbers can kind of bore people out, but it's interesting to see, like, you don't necessarily need to watch what they're doing to know, like, where they made the mistakes. I don't know Altenburg as well to know where the timing eyes are at, but, like, if someone's in first and then they go to 10th and then they go to 5th, you can tell they, you know, had a mistake in the beginning, but they can catch up time in the bottom. So, anyways, we'll have to see coming in the next run. It's pretty exciting for the Latvians. They're a really young team. Uh, I'm... I'm an unbiased viewer. I cannot have favorites, but I do love a young underdog team. So uh, countries or whatever, but just the athletes in itself, it's a big it's a big story that they're in first uh, here for the world champ. So talked about the runs. Now, I put an interview together with this guy over here. This is Alexander Schubert, also known as Shuby, right, Shuby? Correct, yeah, good morning. When did you get that nickname? Um, the first time I was here, yeah. 15 years ago, um, it's my 15th season for a broadcasting station here from Saxony, yeah. MDR Saxon, like it's written down on my yeah. head. Um, yeah, 15th season, 15th season in a row, luge, skeleton and bobsleigh. All the things. Okay, so Shubi, you do radio. Do you also do print work or you just do radio? Radio and this time, for the first time, a little bit of TV too. Yeah. How's the TV going? Uh, it's pretty exciting. I do my radio um, interviews and they record uh, the interviews uh, for TV as well. Okay, so a couple days ago we had a press conference up in that room, just up there. And he, I feel like you were practically running the show. He was walking around, he's got his headphones on, and he's interviewing everyone. So he's the guy that connects the media to these athletes, especially from the area. So you're a big part of kind of connecting the local community to what's going on here. Um, when did you get involved? You said 15 years ago, was that your first? Yeah, it was uh, exactly 5th of December 2009. Uh, that was my first run. It was a luge run and it was the first winning in World Cup for Felix Loch. He won his first World Cup here in Altenburg and uh, I found some pictures in the last weeks uh, where I interviewed him after his first World Cup win here in Altenburg. It was 5th of December 2009 and since 2009 I'm here all, all the weeks. Were you hooked like when you saw it? Like, Because I, I feel like luge is a random sport to get into, which is obviously why this is such a close-knit community because everyone kind of knows everyone. So when you first saw it, were you like, oh my goodness, what is this? Interesting sports, that was my thinking. Um, I was interested in when I was a little boy, but I come from the north of Germany, there we only have the Baltic Sea, but no winter sports, but interested in sports and especially winter sports. And so I got uh, very close and very fast close to this sport. And uh, you said the typical Shuby questions at a press conference, and uh, this is the the reason why the sports athletes uh, are interested in my person, and they say, "Ah, okay, Shuby is there," uh, because I like to interview them, to interview the person, and what makes the person uh, being a profi sportsman or sports women as well. I mean, it also helps that you're German and you're from Germany and Germany is technically kind of the best. I mean, I can't, I don't know if I could say that legally on the show, but they just win, they win so much. And yeah. so they're such a dominant country. So it's fun, like for me, so I live in Los Angeles. It's very fun to be a fan of Los Angeles sports because we win, big cities will win in America. Yeah. So it's fun to cover teams that do really well, that probably like gains the attention for the sport. Yeah, and it's it's also interesting to see uh, what is the person beside the track. 
Is it is it only a sportsman or sportswoman only uh, thinking about the sport, or do they have hobbies? Uh, do they do anything else but thinking about the sports? And that is an interesting fact for me. Yeah. So what's like the most interesting or funny thing, not funny, but fun thing you've learned about an athlete that you maybe might not see on race day? Oh, that um, Francesco Friedrich. Uh, yeah. Bob, so he's the bobsled for Luge. So sometimes Luge people don't know. I didn't know about bobsled until I had to commentate bobsled at the last Olympics. So I knew nothing about bobsled. I learned about Francesco Friedrich, though. He's like the most dominant bobsled driver. Like, it's insane how many medals. It's not even a competition, really. He's like so dominant. So anyways, continue with Friedrich. Yeah, and he is not only a competitive sportsman. He likes to play with Lego and he likes to play with uh, constructing uh, models. Yeah. Uh, that is funny and uh, I like it if someone not only thinking about the sports even he is the best in his sport and and also if you're talking to um, Julia Taubert Julia is such a funny person and she likes to ride a motorbike she is a motorbike girl uh, she learned it uh, from her father and now she did it as well and she like it I didn't know that yeah, that's so cool heck. Uh, so now you have more information than you ever had. I'm gonna ask her because I have a motorcycle. So I'm yeah, like, why yeah, haven't yeah, you told yeah, me, girlfriend? Yeah, you can make a great interview with her now. She is riding a BMW um, cross something. Like a touring bike? Yeah, a touring yeah. bike, yeah, yeah. And, and she loves to make tours. Oh, yeah. go girl. Okay, yeah. Julia, I gotta find you. I gotta talk to you about that. Um, so about the history of the track. So I was talking to Rolf Menda Hans great funny guy we mentioned him in the beginning of the show he's here, he is here from the first day uh, the track was open uh, the decision to build and construct the track was in 1980 it was my year of birth as well um, they started to construct it in 1982 and they finished it in 1983 at that time uh, the most famous bobsleigh driver was pilot was Wolfgang Hoppe he was the first to make some uh, runs on the track he came out of his bob and he said, you can't drive this track. No and um, Just because it was so hard or yeah, what? It, it was impossible to drive uh, through some corners. 17 corners still as well today, but uh, they found out uh, that it isn't possible to drive that track. And uh, so the Ministry of Secret Police, because it was constructed by the secret police of the former GDR, yeah. it was top secret. Even the persons and the inhabitants of Altenburg didn't know what happened here in the forest. Wait, why was it top secret? Like, why did it have to be top secret? The secret, the secret police of the GDR was the most uh, hardest secret police I can imagine. But like, what what is what is the benefit of having a secret track? Like, why would you, like, when, what is that? When they open it, the whole world would say, oh, wow, what's that for a track? And so they made it top secret. Uh, after they found out that you can't drive it, they blown up 10 out of seven, 17 corners. Uh, they constructed it new and in, eight, in 1986 um, it was ready and then uh, you could drive the track and it's almost uh, the same like now. Okay, so it was a completely different track. Like it really was impossible. There, there were hard corners you can't drive it. And so in 1983, they decide, okay, we have to construct it in a new way. Uh, they blown up 10 out of 17 corners, uh, built them up new, and then they uh, got that track nearly similar to this track now. That's really interesting, actually, because I know like like Oberhof, for instance, for instance, the track in Turingia, um, bobsleds don't go down it because it's such tight cornering so sometimes when i hear bobsledders say it's impossible i'm like is it impossible is it actually but sounds like this was actually very impossible to go down yeah mission impossible like tom cruise would now say that is nice so then when did the sport really pick up and like when did luge get involved and to create such a history here in 1986 there were the first uh, bobsleigh uh, national um, uh, yeah, how would you say in English? Uh, competitions, yeah, and then um, after this, after in one year in 1987, they got um, the okay from Phil and from IBSF, former FIBT, and then they could do international 
uh, competitions here and the 19 91 here was the first Altenburg World Championship it was a bobsleigh world championship here oh, very interesting I, I like to hear like how we all got here you know like because there's such strong history and I know growing up in America there's not like a really strong history of sliding sports so it's it's special to be able to talk to someone that has been here for so long that knows all about it H have you ever been on a sled yourself no I, I did some ice tubing it was fun, yeah. I feel like I'm good. I don't need. I don't need any more. <laughs> uh, maybe one day, I'm brave enough to jump into a bobsleigh, but um, maybe only if only Friedrich is, yeah. is sitting in the front. Only if it's an Olympic champion. Anyone else? No, thank you. I will not. I will not get back. One time, I told my coach, I was like, I want to get in the back of a bobsled, and he's like, If you want a concussion, don't do it. And I was like, Okay, fair. But for Friedrich. I guess we'll both do it. We'll get in the back of your bobsled. Um, okay, we're gonna show you a little bit about this region, Saxony. It's so beautiful here. There's so many things to do, right? Like people are skiing, people are sliding sports. What else? Like what else are people? What else do people get involved in? Cross uh, country skiing. Uh, you can do some alpine on the uh, track in Altenburg, and uh, famous for biathlon. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, take a look at this video. Here's a little bit about the area. The Erzgebirge, the mountains of the federal state Saxony, situated south right at the border to Czech Republic. Lots of international competitions are held here, like the Nordic Youth World Championship just some years ago. But there's also alpine skiing and snowboarding on the slopes of the Erzgebirge. There are lots of indoor activities you can try. In the 17th century, when the mining industry declined, lots of miners started to produce wooden toys, including the world-famous nutcrackers. Altenburg is 40 kilometers away from Dresden and it also has some interesting slopes and even a little ski hill. The most famous sports facility is, of course, the Altenburg track. It's not only the home track of famous luges, but also for bobsleigh superstar Francesco Friedrich. All right, we're coming back. We're in between runs for the women's double doppelzitzer. Um, so yesterday was our sprint championships. If you guys missed it, uh, you missed out. It was intense. It was exciting. So our winners were uh, Andre Futter and Marian Oberhofer. Uh, they took the world champ spot. So they were, I believe they were world champs last year in the regular race, but then to be a sprint world champion uh, is also cool to kind of add it to their resume. It was a big deal for them. Uh, and also just like with a sprint, it's a one run bomb. Like you just got to put it together in one run. You don't get a redemption run. So uh, we're going to show you our athlete of the week, uh, Andrea Futter. She is from, I, I actually visited her one time in her hometown. She's in like the foothills of the Dolomites. So cool. She's such she's such a fun uh, human to be around. She's a great asset to the sport. So here's our athlete of the week with Andy Footer. Andrea Footer, full sam schlern, Italy. Uh, my dad was very happy. My mom not, but they are supporting me. 
no violence against women. Salt Lake City. Uh, Sochi. And my favorite athlete is Yannick Sinner, tennis player from Italy. My favorite food is the knödel from my mom. A seahorse. Okay, so here at the finish, our announcer, he's doing a little bit of a roll call. He's calling out every fan club. So the Max Langenhan fan club, they're up there with his little face on a stick. Uh, they're wearing the same things. He's got his banner. Uh, they drove over from Oberhof. I saw his girlfriend uh, in the hotel last night. Uh, she was so cute. I, I interviewed her actually in Winterberg, and she said that Max was a little bummed after yesterday. Uh, he didn't win uh, what he wanted to win. He came in second, which for everyone else would be awesome, but for him, he's just so dominant. So we'll see if he'll be able to pull it together today, uh, get his redemption uh, back to be world champion. He was world champion last year as well. So they looked at Max's fan club, Timon, they're on the top. He's a hometown guy. He's from here. One of the younger sliders. Uh, and it's interesting, when it's their home track, they can really throw it out. So I think Timon will, Gran Cagnolo, that's how you say his last name, Timon Gran Cagnolo. We'll see him later on today for the men's race. And then I want to point out for today, for the women's doubles, this family in the middle, so this is the Dagenhart Rosenthal, the family that's wearing all the black hats, uh, that is the sponsor for uh, Jessica Dagenhardt. And then Bernadette Rosenthal, we talked to her in Winterberg. She's the one that makes the incredible waffles. She's right there in the middle. She's so cute. She's not wearing a hat. Uh, I'm I'm her biggest fan of her waffles. And good morning. She's so freaking cute. She's so cute. She's like the quintessential German mother to me. Like so caring, so loving. Just like here to support her daughter. So anyways, that is Dagenhardt Rosenthal right in the middle, who are currently sitting in seventh. Uh, they had some mistakes not what they want so we'll see if they can pull it together they they're kind of a little ways back 2400s back i don't know if they'll be able to make that up but we'll see what we'll happen we'll see what happens so yesterday we showed you a cool feature yulia talbots natalie mogg their best friends their roommates um their roommates when they're here uh they hang out all the time uh, and it was really cool to see them go one two yesterday in the sprint uh, world championship we showed you part one of them learning how to they like got involved with this boat company they learned how to drive a boat uh, and it's just cool obviously we know they can drive sleds but can they handle big boats like that so here's an here's part two of that feature just to kind of show you what the athletes are up to in the summer marina eldenburg 150 kilometers north of berlin julia taubitz and natalie mark our Lush girls from Germany and Switzerland on their very first trip with this 40 feet boat. And the first very tight bridge is coming. Also, jetzt durchqueren wir zum ersten Mal eine Brücke. Und ich denke, die Jule, oder nicht, ich denke, die Jule macht das sehr, sehr gut. Ein bisschen eng ist es schon, ja. ja. Aber das ging ja jetzt schon mal super. <lacht> Und da können wir jetzt zwei davon. Unser Ziel ist jetzt gerade die Müritz. Die ersten kritischen Stellen haben wir schon geschafft im Tunnel. Das ist sehr eng. Wenn andere große Schiffe kommen, das Augenmaß irritiert er ganz schlecht. Ja. Aber wir haben es bis jetzt ohne Patzer geschafft. Und ich denke, jetzt auch der Müritz wird es einfacher. Da haben wir mehr Platz. <lacht> okay, also wir wollten hier gerade angern. Wir haben festgestellt, naja, 15 Meter ist noch zu tief. Deswegen wird jetzt der Ranga wieder reingeholt. Also, uns ist was verloren gegangen und das versuchen wir jetzt wieder einzufangen. Mal gucken, wie es die Jule macht. Aber ich glaube, es macht erstmal den guten, hoffentlich. Komm, komm, komm! Jawohl! Super! Also, Jule könnte auch Profi-Anglerin werden. Let's see if Julia and Natalie will have as much fun at the race here in Altenburg as they had on their boat vacation. Canadian Luge Team. Cole Zajanski, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Devin Wardrobe, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. 
Carolyn Maxwell, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Trinity Ellis, Pemberton, British Columbia, Canada. Beatty Podolsky, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Theo Downey, Airdrie, Alberta, Canada. Dylan Morse, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Emberly Susco, Whistler, British Columbia, Canada. Caitlin Nash, Whistler, British Columbia, Canada. Some of these athletes will be competing in the upcoming Luge World Championships February 6th through 8th, 2025 on the fastest track in the world in Whistler, BC. Make your plans now. Bring your family, bring your friends, and come and watch these daredevils on ice. The best in the world in Whistler in February 2025. Imagine having the elite performance of Goodyear. Now on your Skechers. Enhance your traction, durability, and stability in any condition on any terrain with Skechers featuring the top tier performance of premium Goodyear rubber. You haven't pushed your limits until you've experienced these two trusted brands on your feet. Get all season performance with Goodyear and Skechers. Okay, so this is our leader's box. Uh, this is where you see the athletes when they're cheering on after the after their runs. And they set this up as a nice little, it's artsy. This is our creative, this is our creative, what's the word I'm looking for? But this is what they set up. It gives the nice shots for the TV and it just, it gives a nice vibe. So I was just asking them what this rock is. And they were saying it's like a rock out of the mountains here. There's some metal inside of it. So they have to like carefully extract it out. And so this looks like this might be the trophy. Yeah, FIO Roto Weltmeisterschaft. So uh, maybe this is what they're gonna give out like uh, with the medals as well. Uh, in the back room, they have like the world champs medals. They're ready to go. Maybe we'll take a look at those in just a second. But yeah, this is where everybody sits. This is where they look at the runs as well right in here uh, so they can kind of see what's going on. So we've got some tight racing coming up in just a second. Uh, it's gonna be exciting. Actually, let's look at those medals. I wanna show you what they look like. They're pretty cool. They changed the design about 10 years ago and these are coveted World Champs medals. Like you can only get these on a World Championship race. The World Cup medals are completely different. So we have them back here. I was hanging out with my friend back here and she's got them all nice. Look at these things. Look at these things. They're so beautiful. So they've got the gold, like they look so good. So like back in the day they had like, they were like straight like metal gold. They weren't like this nice glass, but they changed them 10 years ago. And now this is like the world champs medals. I don't want to touch it. Actually, I'm going to touch it. But yeah, they're big, they're heavy. And they're just like, there's a lot of pride in these things. They're very, very cool. So yesterday, yesterday they were not able to do the Sprint World Championships. Uh, they, they were gonna do them as a medal ceremony in the middle of the town. 
but it got canceled. I think it was because of the rain. So they're actually going to do them today after this race. So we'll see the world champ winners, but then we're actually going to celebrate the sprint world champs afterwards. We'll do the whole medal ceremony with the anthem. So we're gearing up for, for run number two. Uh, so disappointing runs from some of the other athletes, but Lafia is currently winning the huge underdog, uh, the young team. Um, I'm going to toss it over to my girl, Bree Schaffer, two-time Olympian. Uh, Bree, how are we doing? What do you got going for us into the second run? Margit Tangler Parr in the press conference, in the press room there, and it was interesting. We learned that the Ando Upita and Zane Kaluma, I didn't know, we didn't know that uh, Ande's bottom partner got hurt in Whistler. Concussion was out in the hospital, and that's why she had to replace her for this race. And, and as Margit was saying, like, well, they're doing pretty well. Yeah, and, and Whistler was not too long ago, so yeah. I guess you got a new doubles partner over the holidays. Hopefully they trained in Segulda quite a bit. And I mean, they're looking pretty good. They are, and so they set a track record. They're sitting in first right now. They had an early start number there, but Austria, Selena Egla and Lara Kipp are sitting in second, and then yesterday's gold medalist, Andrea Vetter and Oberhofer are in third. And again, fascinatingly, there isn't a German. Now, there's Germans within striking distance, but currently we don't have a German sitting in podium position. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Diana and Saskia, as well as Jessica and Cheyenne, are gonna yeah. reassess their sleds and pull right. it all out. We know we know the Germans are good at pulling it out on the second heat. We right. never never disregard them, but yeah, I mean it's great to see so many nations in the top top spots for once. Right. It goes Latvia, Austria, Italy, and then Diana Eiberger and Saskia Schirmer are sitting in fourth. They're just three hundredths of a second behind Andrea Vetter and Marian Oberhofer. And then of course Jessica Dagenhart and Cheyenne Rosenthal. The World Cup leaders really struggling here on home. I say it's the similar issue out of corner nine, and you called it. You said that nine is going to be the make or break, especially for women's, for doubles down there on in this race. Yeah, if you look at their times, like they were third at the first split, and then they just started losing it after nine. Yeah. Oh, but tough. just like it happened to them, unfortunately, it can happen to anyone. Right. We've got a second heat coming up here to crown a doubles at world champion. And uh, it's going to be very, very excited. exciting. We are excited to call the race, and we'll throw it back to you, Kate. All right. Thank you so much, Bree. Okay, we just got a whole presentation from these dancers. These girls from this region must be made of something different because they are just in leggings. It is so cold out here. So I'm just so impressed. They were out here. They just did a whole dance. Uh, this is what makes world champs a little different. They bring in some flashy things. It makes it feel special. Uh, and it just changes the energy of the day. So they just did a whole thing for the fans. They got them excited. Uh, but again, I don't know how they were doing it in just leggings because I'm freezing and I've got like multiple, multiple layers here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a look at our top Top 10 uh, for doubles, for women's doubles, so you can see, you know, how hard they've been working this season coming into World Champs. Five races down, seven still to come on the Aber Special Luge World Cup in women's doubles. Now it's several nations that have been dominating the podium all year, but some of these first numbers you see, 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th place, these are teams that are starting to make their move and gain a little experience in this still brand new discipline. As for those top six, it's a couple of Americans in sixth and fifth place. Forgan and Kirkby with a podium in the last race. Then it's the new team of Deanna Eitberger and Saskia Schirmer just off of the podium for the moment. But then the three teams that have dominated this year as they did last year, Agla and Kip, then Fetter and Oberhoffa of Italy, and the defending world champions, Rosenthal and Dagenhardt from Team Germany. Okay, this announcer down here, he's got this crowd doing a full on wave. I'm so appreciative of this guy's energy, <laughs> getting people pumped and ready to go. Uh, he's just a lot of fun. So fans are filling in. Uh, they're getting ready for it. So things that we got to look out for. Dagenhart and Rosenthal uh, didn't have the run they wanted. We'll see if they can pick it up for the second. But this, this young Latvian team, we'll see if they can hang on. Uh, the nerves are exploding at the top. Uh, I remember when I was in this position 
and you thought you were going to pee your pants. It was so scary. So anyways, I'm really rooting for these girls. Uh, it's a big deal for them to win this. So everybody, let's root for everyone. Have clean runs. Everyone be safe. Uh, we'll sit back. We'll catch you guys after the second run, and we will crown our champion. Welcome back to the second heat of a women's doubles where we are about to crown a 2024 world champion here at the 52nd FIL Luge World Championships in Altenburg, Germany. I'm your host, Bree Schaff. So pleased to be, to be joined by Argentina's Veronica Ravena. Veronica, very exciting first heat. The weather seems to be holding. So any wild predictions for heat two here? I mean, it's all going to depend on that corner nine 14 seem to be a little iffy for some athletes. I mean, everyone is so tight from top to bottom. I mean, one and a half, 1.7 seconds. That's, it feels like a lot, but it's really not any little mistake and it can cost you that. So I think they're all in the running. It's lovely to see the Latvians coming up ahead. And yeah. I mean, everyone's kind of chasing their tail. It showed it wasn't a fluke yesterday. Here's a great shot of the graphic of our track that we're working with here. One of the most monstrous Chrysals on tour. It is, you can't tell how tall that Chrysal is there, but when you're an athlete and you're hitting those G-forces and those waves, it feels like it's three stories tall. And as Emily Sweeney once said, with teeth. <laughs> so a look at our top three from Heat 1. In third place, yesterday's gold medalist from World Championships, from Italy, Andrea Vetter and Marion Oberhofer are 11 hundredths behind Egle Kip of Austria, who are just three hundredths behind our leaders, the young Latvian silver medalists in yesterday's World Championship sprint event, Ande Upita and Zane Kaluma. With a track record as with well. With a new track record. Now, they did have more track prep. The question is, if we're riding that line of freezing here, I wonder if the ice could even be faster for the second heat. That's our start list. It is reverse order from slowest to fastest of the first heat. We did, unfortunately, lose one sled to the crash who did not finish and cross the finish line. So 15 sleds in the heat to here, leading on up to our leaders, Upita and Kaluma. Yeah, I mean, the weather is still, the sun's trying to poke through, but it's not quite there. So, I mean, it's going to be pretty consistent, especially with such a small field of 15. Yeah. I feel like you'd start to see it if we were in the men's or the women's with 30-plus athletes, but with 15, it feels like it's going to be a pretty fair race for everyone. Yeah, it's nice to see conditions like this where you can just focus on your plan and sliding, because it's really distracting all of those variables. Especially like yesterday, I can't imagine what it was like seeing the rain just start to pour down and knowing, okay, what do I now need to adjust for aside from all the knowns? Yeah, for sure. Sometimes you sit at that start handle and you look at the ice in front of you and you know the race is over before it starts. You'll still try your best, but you can only speed up so much if the entire track is covered with a layer of frost because of the weather. It's the one thing we can't control. Right. Track is clear for our first sled of Heat 2 from the Ukraine looking for a better run here. Olena Stetsky than Alexander Moch. Yeah, they had some struggles, and I know they can do better. So hopefully they've just had a chat with their coach, maybe sharpened up their steals a little bit. Right. And are now just trying to climb up some positions. Their start was a little bit unstable, but I mean, we're just going to see, see how they tackle this nine. Oh, oh no. no. Oh. Oh. I was going to say that was looking a little bit better, but then it just broke out in the skin. And you're not from double start. You know, you're not going as fast as the men are from men's start. And it is wild still how much trouble the exit of nine can cause. That was, what, four or five hits before Kreisel? I almost feel like it's sometimes harder to control a ping yeah. pong when you're going slow because you just you don't have that pressure on the right. ice to just really stop it. Right. When we're when we're teaching athletes to slide, sometimes there is a factor of hey, maybe I do need more speed to hit the lines. But unfortunately for Stetsky and Moch, they didn't have the better second run that they were looking for. They are through and down and will likely remain in 15th position there. It's a hard one, especially with it being so high up the track and you know you have a whole rest of the track to do. I know I've definitely done that before and just been yeah. like, maybe I'll just roll off here. Like, <laughs> do we just stop in Kreisel at this point? 
We're going pretty slow. No but. exit button. <laughs> yeah, like they looked okay, but then oh. it was just that little bit, and it just turned their sled sideways. And right, and just keeps taking direction. And so it seems like, you know, with Kufin, they're likely sharper for the second heat. It just kept redirecting after each hit. Yeah, it was. With soft ice, I mean, they probably could have saved that with a little bit more of a rollback and a little bit more of a pressure on the uphill shoulder. But when the ice gets hard, you're kind of at, at its mercy. 14th after the first heat from Poland. Nikola Domowicz and Dominika Pikowska. Yeah, and they will also be competing in the U23 race within a race. Right. Oh, see, that Which was a, is a lot of high. our field here. But I think maybe their steels are quite a bit sharper than, than the Ukrainians before them. They were able to just stop it. Over half the field is competing in the U23. That a testament to the young sport of women's doubles here. Yeah, it's honestly, it's amazing to see the older athletes with the younger athletes. I feel like everyone's just kind of helping each other out, trying to, trying to figure out this new sport. Right. And they all have standardized sleds. So then they're also all trying to figure out this new equipment that isn't necessarily custom made like right. their single sleds might have been. So I can't imagine. I know we change so much in our sleds to be given just a standard sled and right. told good luck. Right. It's an interesting factor that I discussed at length yesterday with my co-commentator Emily Sweeney of Team USA and you know she also pointed out an interesting factor here is with women's doubles when it's such a young sport you don't have like the super experienced top athlete to take someone younger under their wing for a bottom athlete everybody's figuring it out together yeah I mean you're kind of put on the side of maybe someone like Diana who right. has all that experience as a singles but even she said it's a completely different sport. Right. So it's it's just up to them to figure out. Poland takes over the top spot. And on the top spot of the track is our second team from Ukraine looking for a better run here. Natasha Kretenko and Victoria Koval. Yeah, they're also going to be competing to try to get that team relay spot. Right. I mean, unfortunately, their teammates had a pretty big, big issues out of nine. But, I mean, again, you never know. Oh, oh no. oh no. Similar issues. Oh, God, that, that foot sticking out before the entrance of Kreisel. Hopefully she's okay. Yeah, I mean, I really hope. I mean, Ukraine takes a look at their sleds for the next couple races. And it's hard because there's a thin line between you want to be fast and not so sharp, but also one skid and you can lose out the right. entire race. And there's such a big weight difference between the women's doubles and the men's doubles, I would imagine that it's tough to take that as data for the men's race coming up. You know, are they going to change? Are the Ukrainian men's doubles teams going to change? Yeah, it's it's hard. It's really tricky to change your sled, especially right before the race. Yeah. Like mentally, you put all your trust in your equipment, and then as soon as you start doubting it, it can get really hard. But... I mean, it looks like they're pretty set going to be the, the doubles to use for the team relay, so they'll get another shot at it. Second place for Kutenko and Koval. Yeah, they just started skidding before they even hit that first wall, yeah. which to me just tells me that sled's just fighting, trying to hold on, but there's just nothing there to grip. And as you mentioned on the first heat, that might be a scenario where you actually steer back into the wall you just hit so that you don't ping pong back and forth there. We're back to the top of the track for Romania's Raluca Stramaturaru and Mihaila Menelescu. Yeah, I feel like normally you're told to drive back into the wall. I've never been on a double sled. I don't know how easy it is to right. turn those giant sleds back into the wall. I imagine it's a lot harder than, than my single sled. Yeah. So, prob I mean, everyone's just given it they're all once once something goes wrong right it's like when you, a truck breaking out into a skid on the ice is very different than geo metro that was a nice start from them now let's see let's check out their nine i feel like it's where everyone's holding their breath nicely done very nice i feel that was maybe one of the best ones we've seen right currently 9500s nearly a second ahead of our current leaders domovich Pukowska. Beautiful lines, not surprising, out of Stramaturaru and Manolescu. No, they were both great athletes, and 
I mean, they're doing really well in the doubles. They're really solid, I feel like, in every run I've seen them do. And I think it's safe to say, yeah, they'll stay in first almost one and a half seconds. It's quite, quite a lead. I love, I love how each of the athletes have their own little, little thing yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. The Czech athletes hug each other. The Romanians fist pump. Right. Tricky to do with spikes on your hands. Yeah, I mean, she looks really good there. She knows, she knows how to slide this track. Both of them do. Right. I was just putting it together. Oh, the Czech Republic are next. I want to see if they, they hug again. They normally hug after every run. Oh. Anna Chichkova and Lucy Yansova from the Czech Republic, 11th after the first heat. Yeah, I mean, they're doing, they're doing great. Considering the fact that, yeah, like I said, they were sliding singles at the beginning of the week. They were, I think they were supposed to slide in the singles race, but it ended up just, it's too much for those poor athletes, especially like quite young, to have to do two races in two different disciplines from two yeah. different start heights. That was pretty Ooh. so. Minor adjustments heading down into Kreisel. But I mean, not too, not too much. It shouldn't cost them too much time, hopefully. They're all really crushing that exit Kreisel. Yeah. Which is great to see, because at least for late from Lady Star, that's kind of the place where you hold your breath the most. Do you use that red flag? There's notoriously for years, there's always been a red flag hanging at the exit point of Kreisel. Do you use that when you're going through there? Oh yeah, you yeah. just, you look at it and you, at least in my head, I try to make myself go and meet that red flag. You never quite do, but it's such a, it's such a critical point. And I think it's the only track that we have pointers in. Right. Like a very distinct, it is known widely around the world to help everyone survive the exit of the notorious Kreisel here. Yeah, and look, the consequences if, I mean, not so much from double start, but from ladies and men. Yeah. And I imagine bobsled skills. Yeah. If you're not high at that red flag, it can, it's pretty scary. So I'm glad everyone teamed up together and decided to <laughs> yeah to find one flag <laughs> tenth place for the team that did not qualify the lone team not to qualify for the sprint event from China Dikiemo Gulinati and Zheying Zhao it's great to see China keeping developing their athletes you you never quite know when the Olympics are in a different country yeah. if after the Olympics they're just kind of gonna die down the program I believe we're trying to go back to China next year for another race, as well as Korea. So it'll be nice to see see how well they do with some home track advantage. Yeah, like you said, it always you get nervous for countries that pour everything into hosting an Olympics, and you know, for it's since the 2018 Olympic track, Korea just hosted the Youth Olympic Games. Actually, it's still going. They just hosted the sliding events there. So it's nice to see them still in use, team still out on the track, and Julianati and Zhao, oh, they were green for a moment. They are going back and forth behind Raluca Stramacharu and Manolescu. They're looking really clean. Like, they, they can be really proud of this run. This is a great run. Potentially not enough to maintain their spot. Ooh, third position. They drop back behind the Czech Republic as well. Clean run, though. Yeah, it's so, like, this track, there's so many little uphill sections, and as soon as you lose a little bit of time, it just compounds down and down and down. I think maybe just their exit 14 wasn't quite the push that Carmen and uh, Reluca had. Right. But yeah, I mean, they look, they look pretty stellar. Stellar and confident. Not easy to do when you have not been losing for 25 years or in the case of Reluca. 28 years she's been on the ice. That's dedication. Yes. Our first of three German teams, Elisa Marie Storch and Pauline Patz, ninth place after Heat won. Yeah, it's great to see them in the in the top 10. I know they'll be pushing for more. But I mean, when you have teammates like Cheyenne and Jessica and Saskia and Diana, it's hard. It's hard to want anything but first place. Right. 
see their nine. They look like they dipped a little oh. bit. Oh, oh, oh yeah. no. Worse than their first heat. Tough break. Oh, really late into Kreisel. That green is going to turn red by the exit here. Yeah, it's, I mean, you can almost call it before it even happens. You can see them when they dip a little bit down in that nine. Oh. There's, you know, and on the sled, you know. Star clots are going to drop back quite a bit here. That was a little bit shaky, but I mean, yeah, there they go. Tough first world championships for the young 19-year-old pair. <laughs> That's fifth place for them, just ahead of both the Ukrainian teams. I like they seem like they're in good spirits. It's always it's always important to know how to win, but also yeah. know how to walk away from a bad day. They're in a separate set of dramatic corner nines here at the bottom of the rankings. Yeah, everyone's everyone's been having such such strange corner nines. I really feel for them. It's my least favorite part of the track. I'm sliding from there. That just compounds so quickly. Yeah, especially when all the sleds are able to go straight and pick up so much speed down there. It's not just speed lost, but speed that you just can't gain. On the handles from Latvia, Victoria Zadina and Selena Zvilna. The Latvians have been super solid here this weekend. I don't want to say it surprised any of us because they put in so much work, but. Right. They've been absolutely killing it. Oh, oh no! This pair struggled a bit yesterday. They had a better first run, and then again, tough break out of corner nine. You see her really pushing her head back in Kreisel, which yeah. is nice, though. Strawman Terraro and Manalescu are gonna jump a spot again here. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like I called it. It's gonna be an exit nine and exit 14 kind yeah. of race. Oh, that was a bit of a skid. It's hard because you really want to get a nice, a nice early entrance in that corner, but there's so much push over to the left. They dropped to fourth place just behind Team China. That's amazing for Romania, Czech Republic, and China. Yeah. They just keep climbing up that ladder. And ahead of a German team, ahead of Latvia. I believe China will do no worse than a top 10. That's amazing for them. Yeah. There's just seven sleds remaining to decide and crown a world champion here in Altenburg, Germany. I'm your host, Bree Schaff, joined, oh, by Veronica Ravena of Argentina. And we're getting a close look at the struggles of this very difficult track. Yeah, it's nice to see so many people coming out. I don't think I've seen this many people at a race in a long time. But I mean, they're all here. Most of them, I imagine, yeah. are cheering for these two girls. A quarter of a second out of first. The overwhelming favorite that struggled yesterday and is going to try and make up some time. Jessica Dagenhart and Cheyenne Rosenthal of Germany. Yeah, it's the locals from Dresden and Brillen. They're going to be really trying not only to show their hometown. Oh, oh, oh. oh no! Oh, another huge mistake. We've only seen really Raluca from Strom Toro and Manalesco make a clean out of nine on the second heat. I don't know what's happening. Usually, like, you know, usually I'd say it's the first heat. You kind of figure out what, what you're doing, but... It's, it's such a tricky corner, and they were probably just trying to make it a little bit better, and it just got away from them. Going all out, trying to go for the win, and they lost a lot of time there. Stromatoro and Manalescu remain in the leader's box, seventh position, just ahead of the Ukrainians and behind teammates Stork and Potts, and their world championship gold medal dreams have been dashed here. Poor girls, you can see they're disappointed. They, they know they can do better. They, they're just going to try to hopefully go home for the weekend and pull it together and come back the next week and show them yeah. 
show them they know this track. They know how to do it. I'm confident. Right. They do have two gold medals under their belt, but like you said, they came here to win on home ice. They have another chance next weekend in the regular World Cup as we continue the season, but that is a tough break. The Germans are struggling out of nine. Nine is pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, personally, I haven't seen it with so much. I wonder what they were laughing. I haven't seen it with so much ice. I, I don't I don't know what what it's for or what how it happened, but it's at least it makes for an interesting race. From Team USA, Siobhan Forgan and Sophia Kirkby, sixth place after Heat One. Just three hundredths behind their teammates who are up next. They do have quite a bit on uh, oh. Carmen and Raluca, and that was a pretty straight line down there. A little bit of taps, but right. I imagine it's going to stay in the green. Three quarters a of a second to work with. Rizal. Now, in luge, are you trying to flatten those loops completely? Everyone has different lines. Some people call it their lucky loops. Yeah. And they will flatten them a little bit, but almost increase them in certain places. I don't like the feeling of the loops. I try to keep it nice and flat and then loop it right before the flag. At the very least, a top six finish for Siobhan Borgen and Sophia Kirkby. A great run there. 1.17 seconds ahead of Stramaturaru, the first team to unseat the Romanians. Yeah, they definitely picked up a lot of spots. So it'll be interesting to see you know, there's not that many sleds left. Right. I believe they keep them all on the podium now and just kind of wait wait to see who gets bumped around. They were two tenths faster than their first heat. So either they had a much better run or the ice is getting a little bit faster here. Yeah, two tenths is quite a lot. We haven't had anyone to compare to because everyone's been eating it out of nine there. So. Yeah, no one's really been consistent except for the Romanians, and I mean the Americans last one were pretty pretty consistent as well. Our second American pair, Maya Chan and Rhiannon Weiler, from Chicago and Whitesboro, New York, respectively. Yeah, they're hunting down their teammates to get that, that coveted team relay spot. Currently in fifth place, like you said, hunting for the first ever four-discipline team relay. Luge. Yeah, so I guess wh whatever team goes first will uh, get a track record at least for yeah. five minutes. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh! Oh, they were really fighting it, but they kept it in Four track. Four hundredths behind Forgan Kirkby. It's going to be tight, especially when you're all kind of riding the similar equipment. Right. Same, similar line, similar equipment. Eight hundredths now. They're bleeding a little bit. But maybe they can find speed at the bottom. That push oh. from Oh, no! A little bit early into 15 there. I think it's safe to say that we'll be seeing Cheyenne and Kirk. They're going to drop back how much? Second place behind their teammates. They can do no worse than sixth. Forgan and Kirkby now can do no worse than fifth. We have four sleds remaining. Yeah, it's, those straightaways on the double sleds are so hard. And as you said, it is very windy, and that can affect you on that straightaway. Yeah, the wind, it's kind of coming from, you're like from sliders right, but then it gets caught under the track and pushes the bottom of your runners to the right. So it's it's tricky. It's like nothing nothing I can really compare it to other than Calgary back in the day when we still raced right. in Calgary. Yeah, RIP Calgary. That was a great track that Canada closed down to the top of the hill. From Germany, Diana Eitberger and Saskia Schirmer in fourth place, three hundredths out of a home track medal at World Championships in this team's first ever World Championships as a doubles. Yeah, you know they're gonna be fighting for that. That little tiny bit. You can hear their coaches, their coaches yelling, trying to motivate them. We do have to give a shout out to our amazing coach Patrick who had an injury and oh no oh oh, oh a really unfortunate hit there for Diana they are likely going to be out of the mix for a medal here at Worlds they'll have I mean maybe they'll have a chance to, for a medal in the team relay depending on how this goes the rest of the run their teammates are pretty far down there oh no another hit they're just doing damage control at this point 
I think it's going to be pretty tight to see. They threw in down. Oh, not too bad. They lost a bit. They're just ahead of Stramatoraru and Manolescu of Romania, but behind the two American teams. That's at least a sixth place finish, so they will have a chance to redeem themselves with one run in the team relay and earn a medal. I'd be really interested to have a chat with them after after this, this like their race and seeing what yeah what happened. Well, I'll be able to ask Diana on air. She's joining me for men's doubles. Oh, perfect! <laughs> yeah. I'll be I'll be listening. Yeah, to see what like this is so it's so unlike her and unlike yeah. so many of the athletes. I don't know. And, and so different from the first run. And it's cold, but I mean they've definitely slid on colder ice before, like. Right. I think for the first run it was minus 1.6, and that's that's cold. But we've we've slid in minus four, minus right. four and a half degree ice weather. Looking for a second World Championships medal. Yesterday's World Champions in the sprint from Italy: Andrea Vetter and Marion Oberhofer from Brixen in San Candido, Italy. Yeah, they're they're hoping to add some more hardware to their collection. I'm sure. Yeah. They're but sitting second overall in the World Cup, which is completely separate. World Championships is a standalone event, and that is the nicest nine exit we've seen. We've seen. It's hard. It's hard sitting up at the start, and you know what kind of times your competitors get. Yeah. And when you can see their finish time, and it's maybe half a second off or a second off, you know something happened. And when it's been happening consistently, it definitely gets in their head. But Beautiful run, but they're in the red behind Forgan and Kirkby. Maybe a little bit too much control. Can they find some time through the last corner? No, 800s back. Forgan and Kirkby now have a world championships medal. They can do no worse than bronze. That's that's absolutely amazing for them. I mean, Andrea. Yeah. They, they did. They had a stellar run as well. That was a beautiful run. And conditions, weather, ice. It is, it's so different than yesterday. It's like everything you learned yesterday, you have to dump out the window, treat this as a completely separate race today. It's so nice to see Siobhan and Sophie so excited. Yeah. You, you know they're gonna, they're gonna celebrate. Maybe tomorrow after Team Relay, but there's nothing quite like your first championship medal. Veteran Oberhofer will have to wait for two sleds to find out if they collect a second medal. They did not make the podium yesterday, but they are currently third overall. Selena Egla and Lara Kipp of Austria, three hundredths behind first place. And they have 15, nearly fifteen hundredths to work with over Forgan and Kirkby right now. See their nine. Beautiful. That was pretty great. They're really Ooh. pushing back. Lost a little bit of time though. Maybe they just got more control. Right, mere hundreds, but that is what is going to decide this race. I think it's all going to come down to that exit 14. If they right. do a straight exit 14, I think they're bringing it home oh, to Austria. Oh. It's close. They've got nine hundreds to work with. Oh, Egla gosh. and Kip have secured a world championships medal. Oh, oh and a crash out of the finish. Ouch. Thirteen hundredths of a second. They can do no worse than silver. Waiting to find out if they can turn that to gold. Oh, it's lovely to see all their families. Oh, it's huge that crowd on crying. hand here. Oh. That's great to see. They're both such hardworking athletes. Hopefully they're okay. It's a gnarly finish roll. I mean, I think the adrenaline excitement. Yeah. <laughs> it won't feel anything for a bit yet. And they'll, they'll get one more run for the team relay. But I mean, they nailed that pretty well. Yeah. Great composure there out of 14, despite going in a little bit early. <laughs> and a victory roll never hurt anyone until it actually hurts. <laughs> As you said, once the adrenaline wears off. And having to carry, that's what hurts, having to carry that giant double sled yeah. up that steep, steep uphill. Final sled of the women's doubles race here in the 52nd FIL Luge World Championships in Altenburg. The silver medalist from yesterday's sprint, Ando Upita and Zana Kaluma of Latvia. It's hard compared to last uh, race, which was kind of a one-run race. Right. There was a qualification, but it was a one-run race. Oh, Lay-in back, that is so much confidence going into the Chrysler nice and early. They're, they're super solid. 
little bit of direction exit Kreisel, but nothing they can't work with. You can see her poking her head up a little bit. They're gaining time. Latvia looking for the win here, like their men's doubles team yesterday in sprint. Oh, they're losing a little bit. They've just got a tenth of a second coming through the they last two corners. They found a lot of speed here in their first run, so let's see. Oh, oh. my God, drew it down five hundredths behind Egla Kip. That was that was tight racing. Remarkable. They still have a medal. I'm sure you can tell. You can see their relief. They don't have a win, but another silver medal for the young Latvian doubles team. And they're the Austrian yes. team. Yes, take home gold. Egla and Kip, who came home without a medal yesterday, are the new world champions in women's doubles. Just all around excitement. It's so cute to see. What an exciting race. And again, not a German on the podium. Top finishing German was Eiberger and Schirmer in sixth. That was, that was, I think, the shock of the day. But, I mean, that's just luge for you. Yeah. It's, everything is so tight, and you push for fast, and sometimes you push too much. Right. And the Germans, you know, tried to take advantage of home ice, took some time off this week. Oh, the coaches. <laughs> <laughs> That's relief. You can't. You're excited for a second, but yeah. you're also. It was so close. Yeah. It's kind of what we were talking about. It's a point of the toe difference from first to second place. What an incredible race! Five hundreds back. Latvia landed in silver medal position behind our gold medalist Egla Kip. Forgan Kirkby of Team USA just edge out, edge out world champions veteran Oberhofer of Italy to earn a spot on the podium. Rounding out the top six, we have Chan and Weiler, Team USA, in fifth, and Eiberger and Schirmer in sixth. Oh, it's so nice to see them all so happy and excited. Yeah. And I believe all three of them are also in the under 23. Yes. So that, that won't be a change right, in the podium right. at all. <laughs> oh, no, I don't think Siobhan and Sophie are in the uh, under 23. So we'll see them step away. And there we go. Their awards ceremony will be held later in town tonight. They always do really cool wooden awards here in Altenburg. It is, and I like that they now started a tradition of giving out stuffed animals instead of flowers. Yeah. Because typically we leave the next day, so we get right. these beautiful flowers, and then you just have That's to leave point. them at the hotel. Yeah. I think the stuffed animal's name is Flocky Floxen <laughs> for world championships. Like we said, Altenburg has gone all out here. They really have. We had a nice opening ceremony. Beautiful. The fireworks were amazing. A cauldron <laughs> of all things lit by the ice meister of the track, Hans Mende. And there they get the coveted bib world champion yes. bib they can proudly, proudly wear throughout the whole rest of the season. Just a little reminder. Race one is done on the second day here in the 52nd FIL Luge World Championships. I'm your host, Veronica Ravain of Argentina. Thank you so much for joining me this morning for a bright and early race. Don't go far. We still have men's singles and men's doubles coming up today. So many more medals to give out in a very, very exciting World Championships.
Okay, FIL Studio Show. We just finished our women's doubles world champs, and I'm sitting here with the bronze medalist, Siobhan Fork and Sophie Kirkby, Team USA. Okay, there's so many things to talk about right now. Sophie was just telling me that they almost beat the start uh, record. What is the start record? The start record is a 2-4, and we pulled a 2-5. Uh, and we pulled 5.925. It's still though, I'm looking at the time just behind our camera guy, it still was the first place. You guys were tied with Italy for a first place start, which the start, is that mostly bottom woman stuff? I know it's both, you're both pulling, but like, do we attribute that to these babies or what? <laughs> no, Siobhan and I are both equally pulling that start. Yeah. Love it, very cool. So first run, I was just talking to Siobhan really quick. So you think it might've been start curve, but then second run was like pretty flawless or what? Like. Are you just kind of surprised also that it was so fast? Or like, what are you feeling? I was a little surprised it was that fast coming down. The start curve on the first run was pretty rough, so we definitely lost, scrubbed some speed off there. Second round, the start curve was so nice, and I think it just set up the whole run, and we were just kind of flowing, just going with the flow. <laughs> so awesome. It just, it feels good. So I know you guys have been here for two whole weeks, which is a lot. It, it is a lot. I've been asking every person, did that two weeks benefit you or did it get too long for you? You know, it's really hard to say because the, the weather changed while we've been here these two weeks. Last week we had two feet of snow and now we're getting two inches of rain. So the track really started changing as we were here. Like last yesterday when we had our sprint world championship, it was raining and it was really soft where this morning the ice was hard. So I think it was great that we got those extra runs. Okay, okay, interesting. I, I've had mixed reviews. Some people are like, it was too long. Some people are like, no, it was neat. Hunter on Team USA, he was like, no, I needed it. <laughs> a men's start was was terrifying. I needed it, yeah. So to go from rainy yesterday, which I was down here like a wet dog. Like it was, just, I couldn't imagine for you guys, I was trying to explain on camera. I'm like, it's like a slip and slide. Like yeah. it changes, the lines change, the slide feels different. Were you guys nervous? Like with the conditions changing today? Um, this is what I would prefer. <laughs> Hard ice, I think, is where we usually feel a little bit more comfortable. Maybe just having Lake Placid as a home track. <laughs> Yesterday, when it's so rainy, it's you're, It's so easy to hydroplane. You can't tell if it's like a little harder under the layer of water. I feel like it's more unknown for us. This we know, we can do that. <laughs> okay, and can you explain really quick Curve 9 to the viewers? So there was so many issues today with Curve 9, and I don't think people really understand like why it's it's the worst it's it's actually the worst and I remember as a junior it was the worst and so I can't imagine as a doubles like how you do that and I even saw with the Latvians like you can really see them drive hold up drive like it's really like it's really extended type of thing so how if you could describe it to people watching how would you describe it I would say that from the double start there's not enough speed to build the kind of pressure to get out straight. So it wants to loop because you're going so slow, you can't, it's so hard to straighten it out. <laughs> so you're fighting right on the edge of skidding the entire curve, just trying to squeeze it out in one straight line instead of it bringing you all the way back up and smacking you out to the right. Yeah, not to mention with doubles, we're top heavy because we're a person on a person. So that weight can solidly shift since we have so much more downforce than on a single sled. Well, congratulations, guys. This is massive. You got bronze at World Champs. This is so big. Do you want to say anything to families at home watching? Um, I'd like to say hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. And I'd love to thank all of our sponsors. We really can't be here without you, especially Norton. We got U.S. Venture, Dow, Fossils. They got their burgers. Mwah. Yeah, hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. We did it. Sweet. Amazing. All right, you guys have the weekend off. You're done. Well, no, Team Relay. I'm sorry. I spoke too soon. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Go enjoy your JF. Go get a pretzel, some bratwurst. Congratulations again. Bye, Team USA. Okay, I'm moving over. Oh, oh, excuse me, excuse me. Are you kidding? Hold on, I'm gonna go on this side. Um, wow, wow, wow. Okay, first, how do you feel? How do you feel? Unbelievable. I just can't realize it. Yeah, it's insane. Upita, and then how do you pronounce your last name so I get it right? Kaluma. Kaluma, but not Kaluma. Kaluma. If I say Kaluma. Ooh. Kaluma. Oh, Kaluma. No. I'm sorry, this is why you have to say it. Sure. Kaluma. Kalo Upita Kaluma. Oh, that was pretty good. From Latvia, you guys took second. So I was 
I was talking about you guys before this run, and I was like, the young Latvian team, I don't pick favorites because I'm not allowed to, but I am a rooter for the underdog, and you guys were an underdog this race, and I'm so happy for you, and I'm so proud of you because you're such a young team. The ner and I was telling people, I was like, at the top of the run, you are peeing your pants because you're so nervous. Uh, you guys obviously weren't because you threw down. So your run looked great. Coming out of nine, it was real. I was like, wow, go girl. I say the night in this week was crazy. I was really happy when the second run we do the best in our nine. I was holding my breath because we saw a lot of people have issues, and I was like, ah, oh, get it, get it, get it. And poof, you, you just, you looked great. And then at the bottom, you just barely lost a little bit of time, but I was so excited to see you guys come up and still be like so pumped because you guys were leading most of the run but truly a silver at world champs did you think this would happen with your season no <laughs> in a season when season starts we don't think we ride together so this yeah, is you guys just got switched out like in whistler right or when did you guys get put together in january uh, like uh in january first we start riding together well, literally like a month ago yeah that's a lie. Are you serious? 48 runs together. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Stop. Yeah, Christmas present. So how did so did the did the coaches just decide? Okay, we'll put you guys together, and it was it just worked out. Basically, we will uh, like we will talk him about like it's a joke, but now it's real. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm really happy for you guys. Congratulations. We're gonna turn over and we're gonna watch ceremonies. Do your thing. Get up there. auf dem Siegerpodest. Ja, und, äh, bevor wir jetzt äh, zu den strahlenden Siegerinnen kommen, wollen wir uns erst einmal noch diesen entsprechenden Siegerlauf anschauen und erinnern uns an diese tolle Fahrt. Also Andrea Vetter und Maren Oberhofer hier Richtung Ziel, Richtung Sprint-WM-Sieg im Zielbereich kommen sie an und lassen sich ihre Führung nicht mehr nehmen. Das ist der Weltmeistertitel gewesen für die beiden. Und jetzt äh, bitten wir sie auf das Siegerfest. Gold Medal representing All right, we're taking a look at our sprint Yesterday, they didn't get a chance to do the medal ceremonies last night. Uh, so here we are congratulating Team Italy, Andrea Futter and Marianne Oberhofer, and then Uvita and Kaluma from Latvia, and then Kitia and Marta from Latvia as well, getting in third. Big weekend for Latvia. Für die Nationalhymne der Siegernation, Ladies and Gentlemen, attention please for the national anthem of Italy.
Congratulations to Team Italy, our sprint champ from day one here at the World Championships in Altenburg. Jetzt gibt es noch die Ehrengeschenke. Ja, jetzt haben wir natürlich äh, die Kollegen. Jetzt geht es um den Wagenkopfmann, der Presse. Ja, das ist einfach ein Fokus machen. Und dann machen wir natürlich noch den Wagenkopfmann. Hans Mendel, als Häuser ist schon äh, auf der Bühne. Es gab nämlich noch ein paar Rekord, und zwar von Martha Rolfmitze und Pizza Bogdanova. Mit 28,234 Sprüngen. Also das ist die Barrikord hier geholt für der Qualle und äh, die beiden hier im Letztgrade für der Barrikord. Die Qualle ist auch eine Barrikord. Ich bin hier in der Sonne. Also, das war die Siegerung im Schwimmwettbewerb. Der ja, Doppel ist jetzt verzahnt. Recht herzlichen Dank, wenn du der Matsch... Und äh, wir machen das gleich weiter mit dem Programm am heutigen Tage. Es geht um 11.03 Uhr, dann weiter mit dem Einsitzer der Kevin. Kevin holt sie in den Start der Durchgang an der Mess Single Competition. 11.03 Uhr, das ist also die öffentliche Zeit. Die Halle 40 haben wir jetzt. Das heißt, in den 22 Minuten starten wir den ersten Mal. Lauf, da wird es auch noch mal einen Vorläufer geben, um 11.01 Uhr ist das der Tag. All right, so congratulations to all these girls. Wait, I need to see, what is this? It's, I have no idea. What, what was it for? For the track record in sprint. The track record in sprint. Also, congratulations. Is Marta okay or is she? Hopefully she's going to be okay. How are you doing? I'm, I'm well, sad because she's, yeah, get hurt, but yeah. It was a big crash. Well, Marta's her partner, this is Kitya, but Congratulations. This was a big weekend. And I know you guys were third in European champs, so you guys are just racking in the medals. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Is there anything you want to say to your family back home? Yeah, Look at her. This is a girl of a winning weekend. Look at all the stuff that she's carrying. Congratulations. Good job, Kitya. Um, her partner, Marta, so they took a crash. This is actually them. This was their DNF, do not finish. Uh, Marta is her top woman. Um, they didn't finish. I don't know what's going on with her. Uh, it sounds like she's kind of hurt. So hopefully we're sending prayers her way. Hopefully she gets better. Um, but a big weekend for Latvia. I was just talking to the Latvian coaches and I was like, oh my gosh, congratulations. Uh, this is massive because these two girls, they just got paired together this hour. Good job. Woo! They just got paired together a month ago, which is just insane to me. Uh, that they just did it. Um, Upita's partner previously was Ozolina. Uh, she got injured. And so this pairing just came together. Uh, it's gonna make very difficult. Ozolina, if you're watching, hi, I hope you're doing okay. Um, it's gonna make it difficult for the coaches to decide uh, the pairing and who they're gonna keep together going on. But again, congratulations to Upita and Kaluma. Hopefully I said that okay. Um, but we're gonna take a little bit of break. We're gonna show you uh, a little bit of the tourism that's going on in this area to see what people do outside of these sliding sports. So check this out. The city of Dresden, capital of the federal state Saxony, is among the top travel destinations in Europe. Its famous sites like the beautiful Baroque Old Town, the River Elbe with its unique castles, and the famous Canaletto view, named after the Italian painter, are well known around the world. Dresden is situated 150 kilometers south of Berlin and always worth the trip. Okay, everyone's getting pumped. I remember the song. Do you know the words? Do you know the words? 
I don't understand. Do you know the words? Weißt du diese Wort? La 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 la. Heute ist so ein schöner Tag. La 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 la. Heute ist so ein schöner Tag. <laughs> that was good. That was really good. This is, it's a it's a banger. It's a banger. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I need to take a breather because that just made my day. Um, okay. Previously to the season, previous to the season, we interviewed some of the athletes. You guys have seen them. We've shown you their favorite books their favorite movies, uh, but we asked them what their favorite moment in their life was. Uh, we'll show you this video, but maybe when we come back, they'll be playing another banger. Look at this, look at this. Oh, see, Australia's getting ready over there. That's Alexander Falazzo's family. I'm just loving this moment. Anyways, uh, here's this video with the uh, athletes and their favorite moment in their life. Best moment. Uh, so this past June, I actually was able to get married uh, down in Charleston to my uh, to Rachel, who was a former teammate and now my wife. The day I born. <laughs> Both best moment uh, when my kids were born. Each Olympic title is um, undescribable. So 14, 18, and 22, that was yeah unbelievable. The best of my child. Uh, the best moment in my life was when I bought my motorcycle. When I was in Iceland and stood right next to an explosive volcano. I think my life has, ma has married many ups and downs, so I can't really pick one. Probably maybe the first time I started doing doubles. It was really fun. Um, it would have to be two. It would have to be the moment I graduated and became a doctor, and also the end of my first run at the Beijing 2022 Olympics. Um, yeah, to get two kids, um, that's one of the, the best thing in my life, um, uh, but in sport, when I talk of the sport, it's the, yeah, the, the first um, gold medal um, 2010 in, in Whistler. Every moment is the best moment in my life. Is this how you imagine a family business with over 150 years of experience? We have to disappoint you. We are Everspecker. We shape the clean mobility of the future and inspire our customers with smart solutions developed and produced by dedicated people around the world. Eberspecker stands for reliable automotive systems and components. Our aim is to offer the best quality in every application. And therefore, each of our products reflects our passion. Eberspecker, driving the mobility of tomorrow. Environmental friendly heating with renewable energy. That's what the name Hagasna has been standing for for four decades. Maximum heating comfort, innovative technology, and lowest emission standards. A heating system from Hagasna can be recognized by one thing above all decades of reliability. Whether pellets, logs, or wood chips, change to a biomass heating solution by Hagasna. Biomass heating technology. All right, I'm right next to my guy, my, my track announcer guy. It's pretty loud down here. I mean, this whole thing is a speaker. They know how to get this crowd really hyped, but I would love to talk to Team Australia. The thing is, is I to kind of get over, it's kind of a ravine. So maybe in our next break, I can get over there because I just want to know, like, how far would you travel? 
Like, what was the travel day? How many hours? Uh, and are they able to come to a lot of races? I know Alex Ferlazzo uh, from Australia. He's a one-man team. Uh, he trains with Canada, so this is a big deal to have his family here. Uh, they just came so far, and it just means a lot to have your family uh, on a World Champs weekend. So uh, hopefully, oh yeah, they're into it. They're into it. They're into it. Okay. See, we made contact, so maybe I'll try and jump over there in a little bit. Um, so. We're going to show you video uh, with these athletes. Again, we're taking the helmets off the athletes. We're showing them the personality. So here's another one of our clips for you guys. If I had to be a fish, I think I would be like a whale shark. I researched this is a fish, therefore, but I just think they're the most fascinating creatures and if I could be one, that'd be so cool. I would probably be a salmon. It seems very Canadian to me. I would be an eel, a seahorse. I would be a piranha. Uh, I think it's a uh, dory from Nemo. Tuna. I will be the same as my double partner, whale. Goldfish or maybe a dolphin. I'm shark. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm running. I'm running. I'm in the crowd. We're going behind the scenes. I have to come. I'm right here. My hands up. My hands up. I'm running through. See? I'm running through. Hold on. I'm coming. Okay, I came to talk. Oh, you're chatting with the... Yeah, the, the mascot came in before I did. This is fun. This is good. Okay, wait. Are you mom? Mom, this is mom. This is dad. Are you mom? Okay, wait. You're your sisters. Sister, sister, friend, mom, dad. Hi. Okay, wait, come in here so you can hear me. I was talking about you guys right before this. Our camera is right there. And I was talking about how, like, how far did you guys come? Like, how many hours? Like, how long is the plane ride? It was roughly 24 hours to get here. Get out. 24 hours. From the moment we left home till hitting Prague and then the drive here. So I I feel like I'm a huge fan of Alex. Like he's he's training with Duncan. Duncan was my old coach. I know that Duncan's had a big influence on his career and I talk about his sled all the time. So I really like I, I feel his ups and downs. Not as much as you guys feel his ups and downs. So are you able to come to multiple races or do you just come to world champs every year? We try to get over when we can. It's a bit tricky, but we just try to get here when we can. He's really having, like, I feel like he's really had a jump in his career. Like, it was kind of, he didn't know what he was going to do, but now he's really making a lot of strides. As a family, does that excite you, or are you just, like, happy for him to support him? Oh, it does. Like, we we, we have re re really noticed the last the last season or two that, 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 that he has stepped up. He, he has stepped up a lot, so we are very, very excited for for like uh, this year's season and the seasons to come uh, to see how far he he can actually go. He's in good hands. He's in good hands. Duncan w worked on my sled my Olympic year, so Duncan is really I, I they're just good together. They're just good together. I love it. Have you guys ever gotten on a sled before? Not only on a natural track, way, way in in the beginning in New, New Zealand, we, we we tried to yeah slide slide a nice. Did you try it? No. No, no, no. no. You would never. No, nope. Are you sure? You could be good. You have the genes of your brother. I mean, you might be good. Alex has tried to recruit myself and our other two brothers so we could do a relay, for like the double. Cute. But no, we didn't go for it. Not your thing. Not. For also, I love, I just, the whole, can you, can you give us an, a... Boxing kangaroos, yes. Boxing kangaroo. Is that the Australian thing that I don't know about? Yeah. Kangaroos actually box each other as their way of fighting each other. So it's, it's our national symbol, the boxing kangaroo. I knew kangaroos. I didn't know the boxing part. So this is, this, are we, are we getting the shot? Wait, hold up, hold up the box. You see the boxing gloves? That's pretty good. Hello, okay, I have to say, I saw you, we're in the same hotel, I saw you guys with the hats, I'm like, I'm like, those must be, those must be the Furlazos, no one else will be wearing that. Anyways, I'm so happy you guys are here, it means a lot to have family come, I know when my parents would come to races, it just felt nice 
to have familiarity. So thank you for being here. Thank you for representing uh, the South Pacific and everything. Um, we're going to take a look at our top three from Oberhof last year, how the men did last year. Uh, so here's our top three for that. The 2023 World Championships were held in Oberhof, Germany. And in men's singles, it was the Olympic gold medalist, David Gleischer, taking the bronze medal. Max Langenhan, who won everything else all season long on the World Cup, took second. And both of them were behind the Austrian, Jonas Mueller, who captured his first ever world title. Hold on, wait. OK, I'm, I'm just going to come to the front right here. I was, I, I'm going to tell them a little bit more. I, I was chatting with them for a second. So we're gearing up for the men's race. Um, I didn't have enough time to come back. Uh, this is going to be really cool. So Max Longahan yesterday, he got second. He was disappointed about it. Usually he just wins and dominates. David Gleischer, if you look to the right, you can see their family. You can see the family sign with the boys. That's Nico and David up there. Um, so they've got their parents here. We saw them on camera. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting. They got to put down two clean runs. Consistency has been hard for the sprint world champ, David, uh, David Gleischer. We'll see if he does it. So let's take a quick look at the top 10 for men. You'll see where they're all ranked currently and what they've got going on going into this race. A little less than halfway through this FIL World Cup season in men's singles competition. The top 10, Tucker West of the United States, one of two Americans sitting in ninth and 10th place along with Johnny Gustafson. Then you have four Austrians holding the top eight positions in the world rankings right now, including Olympic medalists Gleisha and Kindle. Sixth place, Felix Locke. The German has won seven overall World Cup titles in his career. The defending World Cup champion Dominic Fischneller is in fifth. Christers Aperiodes, a top six in every race so far this season. Then it's Nico Gleisha starting off the top three. Just ahead of him, teammate Jonas Mueller coming off of his victory last week in Eagles. And Max Langenhan, with five wins so far this season, leads the way. All right, I'm caught in the middle of the wave. They're trying to get the wave going. That is massive. That is so big. Are we kidding? That, that's not a flask. That's a whole big, yeah, very big. That's good. I'm OK. I'm OK, but thank you so much. Wow, I, that caught me off guard. OK, Bree, Bree Schaff in the comments. I was in denial. I was, denial. Uh, I was like, measure me again. <laughs> I, made, <laughs> I made the staff in Lake Classic Sports Med measure my height like four times. Yep. I am like, here with Team USA Summer Britcher, and we were just talking about getting our heights measured in Sports Med and how disappointing it can be if you get undercut. And I've gotten in some huge arguments with weight room interns. Anyway, back to the racing here. We're just making sure that we are in the frame here, two tall women on television discussing luge. So Summer, we've got men's singles coming up. It was a wacky race yesterday. They've all been wacky. Women's doubles earlier, we didn't see a single German on the podium. What was it two? We saw Julia Talbots yesterday, Max Langenhan. That's right. It has been some really exciting racing here in Altenburg. Um, I mean, of course, my biggest wish for myself and all my competitors and all the other athletes is to have, you know, your best runs at world championships. But when you're watching, it's so exciting when the unexpected happens for the spectators, um, for all the Luge fans. When we have those twists. It really just makes this racing so exciting and so fun to watch. And we've had quite a few twists, Ooh. and I expect that we'll see quite a bit more today in the yeah, men's race. There have been some gnarly twists this morning in Ladies Luge. Maybe, I don't know if you would prefer not to talk about Corner 9 until your race, <laughs> but it we can was talk about it. wild. So, I mean, it looked, for some reason, from Heat 1 to Heat 2, it looked like it got significantly more difficult. I mean, I know we're hitting nearly ideal conditions for Altenburg, covering it so, free. <laughs> It's, it's pretty, it feels pretty warm out to yeah. me. And the tough thing with this training week, it's been for the whole field, is we've had a lot of different weather conditions. Um, so we had warm weather, we had in the international training week, very cold, hard ice. Um, and then the weather's been all over the map. We've had rain, we've had wind, um, like sun, we've had everything bad for luge. For, for winter sport, we've had all the bad weather. Um, so there hasn't been a lot of consistent training. Right, and that's gonna make it really tough. Really and tough. 
And we got our 40 second warning, so we are going to throw it back to Kate. Join us on air for the start of Men's Singles World Championships in maybe 30 seconds now. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Bree. Uh, I gotta say, it is a whole different world being over here with the fans. It's a lot quieter over there. I can't even really hear myself talk because that speaker is so loud. And they are just, I mean, I don't know if you noticed that flask was huge. People are drinking, they're having fun, they're getting ready. Uh, this is gonna be a great race. I'm gonna come back over, uh, but let's sit back, enjoy this men's run. We'll be back at the top for in between the runs. Welcome back to day two, race number two here at the 52nd FIL Luge World Championships in Altenburg, Germany. I'm your host, J Bree Schaff. Please be joined by Team USA's Summer Britcher. Summer, the sun's coming out a little bit. The sun is coming out, the wind has died down a little bit, and I'm hopeful that we'll see some slightly improved conditions for this afternoon's race. Right, we saw I mean, we, great conditions, wild ice this morning in the women's doubles race, so very curious to see how this plays out from men's start at the top of the track. Tell us about the difference and what we're going to expect here. So Altenburg is a very challenging track from the men's start. Um, there's some really tricky sections, they're reaching high speeds. Um, to kind of contradict expectations actually, curve nine is supposedly easiest from the top of the track. But we see here starting off a nice difficult um, start curve to get into there because you have the bobsled uh, entrance, the luge entrance and the old luge entrance. So they have to steer around that, stay nice and calm. There's some really long sections here. And this is coming into curve four here and into Omega. This is a very massive curve here, curve four. And we'll see potentially a lot of trouble out of here. I've seen a lot of crashes from Menstar into this curve five. Um, it goes uphill there, so it's really important to stay stu super relaxed, no mistakes. And here we are, we're about to come into curve nine where we saw a lot of trouble earlier today in the women's doubles field. Um, long straightaway aerodynamics, super important, and then into the Kreisel. They want to have a nice level line in the Kreisel and have enough height at the end that they can come safely off the curve and, and early into this next curve. This is a tricky little small curve here and then a nice tight transition here. We might see some trouble there um, again into an uphill section. And with this warm weather and some water sitting on the top of the ice, it's possible we'll see some hydroplaning and actually some sleds, even at those high speeds, losing grip when they would otherwise be so stable. And now we're finished, and this is just the braking curve, but that will be important tomorrow for the team relay. Summer, you make a great point. Coming off of yesterday's sprint event, the men really struggled with the water that was piling up out of 14, hydroplaning, sending them in all sorts of not straight directions. That's right. Here's our start list, men's singles. We have every athlete in the field gets to take the first run. So all the way down to sled number 36, Jing Li. And the second run will be cut to the top 20. That is a World Championships protocol. We are in a standalone race here in the middle of the season, crowning a world champion. And our first athlete off the hill is Mateusz Sokovic from Poland. So the format of World Championships is a new format, actually. This oh, really? Is, it's the second year it's been in place. Um, previously, in World Championships, the seeded group, the athletes with the highest ranking um, through rank 12 would go first with a random draw, and then a preliminary run won through the remainder of the field following the top 12 athletes. The last year it was changed to, there's a preliminary run for non-seeded athletes, um, and the top 10 finishers of that go first um, ah. to kind of make it a little, a little more similar to a World Cup format. Um, and to kind of level the playing field a little bit there and not give too much advantage to those seated top athletes. So that means Matthews here finished 10th place in the preliminary run. So we'll go 10 through one, and then we'll get into the seated field. He's having a fairly decent run here. Um, he looks very relaxed. And I believe um, that Matthews has posted online recently that this will be his final season, if oh. not his final race. So um, he's definitely wanting to end it with some quality sliding, some quality runs. 
The pace has been set. 54, let's see how that compares to finish records here. The record was set by Roman Repolov, 53.45, so he's a little ways off, but I mean, we had a track record set by women's doubles earlier. It would not be unheard of. The ice is absolutely pristine. We did, but with women's doubles, last year was the first year they had a uh, regular format World Cup race here, so. True. Um, on the handles from the Ukraine, Anton Dukov. That is the benefit of, of going off first in a race. You're always going to have that place number one. You'll at least see it yeah. on the clock one time. <laughs> and you've got the nice fresh ice, the fresh spritz. And that, when the weather deteriorates like this, going early in the field is a massive advantage. It's always an advantage. You always want to have the earliest, almost always. There's some, right. sometimes some really weird conditions where the ice gets faster, but usually the ice is fastest, as close to the track prep as possible. And so you want to be going off as quick as possible. And it is pretty humid here in Altenburg. So it if is. you are sled 36, you're going over an hour later from the first sled and things can deteriorate fast. You know, they've got their tricks. The track crew can turn the refrigeration off, play with it a little bit. I mean, I will say, I'm, oof. He had a little bit of height yeah. curve 12 there, but he handled it really well. Um, the track crew here in Altenburg have a reputation for having the track in phenomenal condition. And they had some, some really difficult weather to deal with this week. They and they've did. done an amazing job um, keeping this track in the shape that it's in. So props to the track yes. here in Altenburg. Mende, the Ice Meister who travels the world. That's a first place for Anton Dukak, our new leader. Travels the world to help other tracks fix their eyes. He, he's, he called Tony Carlino the former track meister of Lake Placid, <laughs> his big brother. He always fly out there to help out. That's nice. Now this could be interesting. We have two Germans up very early in the field on their yeah. home track here. Um, so they were not seated. They were in the preliminary run. And this could be a good signal of how fast we can expect some of the later sleds to go. Right, this is a huge opportunity on home ice for Germany's Timon Grancagnolo. Really hugging sliders, right? Pretty far back on the start time there. Yeah. You would, ex for some reason, I just expect young athletes to be fast starters. <laughs> There's like Come that on, sweet you're spot, you know, you're young, but then you like, you get that sweet spot before you start getting oh, you know, the, too old. Oh, yeah, you gotta get the man strength too. Yeah, the old yeah, woman that's strength. true. You're at your strongest, um, what, late, late 20s, yeah. early 30s? It's always a little bit of a give and take with speed, explosive speed going down a little bit, but he's already in the green. This will be the German pace set with so many sleds to go. He's having a really nice run. He had a small loop in Kreisel, but sometimes that's okay because then you get the, the height you need to make it out of there um, with a really nice line. Oh, really multiplied his lead at the bottom, went from 1500s to 3200s. And we have a new leader with a 54.435. But that's a second off of the track record. Second off of the track record. Wow. But again, I mean, the weather conditions are so different year to year. Um, it's just, you never know if, if you're gonna be winning World Cup time a second off or breaking that track record. Right, and for the Germans, they took last week off to take, you know, take advantage of being at home and get some rest, and the weather has been all over the map during that time. David Nussler, our second German on the handles, home track. Oberhof, Germany. Oh, oh, and that, ah, he hit. So what we saw there was he pulled out of the handles a little crooked and went over to the wall. And when you hit a wall in the start, it is just detrimental to your time. He stayed off the wall and he, he did a really nice job of fixing it. But when all of your power in your paddles is going towards fixing your sled's direction and keeping it straight, you're not putting power into building any forward momentum. It's all fixing that mistake. So that is gonna cost him just the whole run, unfortunately. But he is, look at his position. He knows he messed up on the start yeah. and now he is 
laying back his head. He is doing everything he can to make up for that mistake. Like to your point, there's a reason you don't see an Olympic sprinter with their feet going out sideways. <laughs> it's always directly behind them. So exactly. now you're paddling sideways to correct, and he's not going to have as fast a start. He's already a tenth behind Gran Cagnolo. I mean, he looks so relaxed on the sled. And I, <sighs> I wonder, I mean, of course we won't know how much of that is from his mistake at the start. Um, but he knows that he had certainly uh, more time with that mistake on the start. It's a two-heat race. He only has one heat to fix it. And they're well off the record, the, the track record. So very curious to see our top athletes go, especially Max Langenhan. He's not up for a ways. He's sled 19. But we do have a good barometer, as you said, uh, Summer. We've got two Germans early off, setting the pace. But, I mean, I... Germany struggled here at least so far over yesterday and this morning. That's right. And they're they're going this early off because the next six athletes um, beat them. In right, the, exactly. On in their the preliminary home run. So this is Valentin Kritu of Romania. One of the few athletes born in the 80s. I don't know why I love pointing <laughs> that out. The 80s were glorious. You missed out, Summer. <laughs> Valentin's a very experienced slider. He's been on the World Cup tour for, well, a long time. I'm not quite sure, <laughs> sure how long. Um, but he, he loves luge, he loves sliding. Um, and he's, he's looking very yeah. calm and relaxed on the sled. He's been sliding for 24 years. Wow. A little high on the Anacryzel, but he was very calm on the exit. Looks a little so too quiet. soon over to that curve 13, yeah. but again, stayed calm. Just really quiet on that sled, or maybe it's a quiet sled. Oh no! Speaking too soon, a Big little late. skid there. He's throwing down, ooh, four tenths back. That's fourth place for Valentin Cretu. And he'll be wondering where, I mean, he knows some of the time went, obviously, in curve 16 with that big skid, but um, there were there were small things in his run, but overall he looked very calm on the sled. Yeah, um, <laughs> very confident. But this, you know, it's uh, one of the bigger advantages of a home track, in my opinion, is when the conditions aren't great. Right. Um, a lot of people know how to make sleds run fast on really good quality ice. Because they come for race weeks. They don't often come for all the variables. Exactly. And, and for a long time, we had better ice conditions consistently. Um, but when the weather is all these different, funky, different types of ways, the home team knows exactly how to be fast on all the different ice conditions at their home track. And so that's where we see um, the home track advantage, in my opinion. On, on slower ice, there's a greater potential for advantage. On the handles from Slovakia, Josip Ninis, who finished eighth in yesterday's sprint event. Josip is also a very experienced slider. Um, 33 years he's been sliding. <laughs> so he he's very good in the sprint competition. He doesn't have um, a necessarily very competitive start, uh, but he is a very calm, relaxed slider, very experienced. I mean, he looks so good on the sled right now, uh, but it's just more difficult in the regular format races to make up that start deficit. But he is only 200 behind right now. Big loop in Kreisel. So what we call looping in Kreisel is when you see a sled go up and down um, instead of keeping a level line. And it's so slow because it's actually adding meters onto the length of the track that you're running. When you keep a level line, it's a shorter distance through that 360 degree curve. Right, it's like putting different finish lines down on the track. He had went a little bit farther. He is 14 hundredths back. That's third place behind the two Germans. He was going back and forth in the green there and now has to sit and wait to find out if he'll get a second run. Let's see if he'll be in the top 20. And that's one of the hardest parts. When you go off early in World Championships and you don't quite have your best run and you are just waiting. And you never want to hope for someone else to not do well, but when you're on that bubble and you're just hoping for a second run, it is yeah, it is a lot of warm? suspense. Oh, so we see that he bumped quite oh. early there. Big skid, I didn't catch that. Yeah. yeah just skids here and there. In a very experienced field, it's hard to beat home track Germans with tiny mistakes like that. On the handles from Sweden, Svante Kohala. Oh, 
Okay, so a bit of a faster start time. But we haven't seen any start times um, even really within two tenths of the start record yet, actually. Right. So I, I kind of expect as we get into the seated group, we'll see, I mean, I would say at about a tenth of an advantage just from the first split. I expect a lot of these athletes that are coming up to... Um, oh, oh, oh. Small skid there, but he did a really nice job staying calm. A little bit more of a level Kreisel. Oh, and to your point earlier, Summer, you were saying that curve nine, even though we saw a lot of difficulty with doubles, it is actually easier with full speed from the yes. top because the track is built to be at full speed. That corner it's was designed <laughs> to go from the top. So Altenburg is definitely most challenging from the top of the track. Um, but curve nine is one of those unique spots where it's the hardest from double start. It's a little bit easier from women's start. Right. And I haven't gone from the men's start here, but I've heard that it's not so challenging. Um, well, you just have so a bit unique. more it's pressure. Just, that little spot, speed. yeah, the little spot that you steer in, you get more out of. That's right. So it pushes it, your it height. I'm speaking bobsled skelly lines yes. now. But <laughs> <laughs> it works with some effort from women's start, but from double start, it is so challenging. Yeah, the big trouble spot yesterday was exit of 14, and so far that's gone quite a bit better. That's right, and I think it's just a little bit drier out. We're not seeing that puddling on the track, which is a good thing. Um, so there's a little bit more splashdown pools aren't typically a part of luge. We've got Ukraine's Andre Monzi on the handles. Another one of the smaller nation athletes that qualified for the sprint, he finished 12th. He was doing pretty well and then had some trouble at the bottom of the track yesterday. into this long Omega curve here, curve four. Manzi is from Kremenitz, Ukraine, and he actually makes his own sled. He's having, what I'm seeing is okay lines, but little small mistakes, um, not totally uh, smooth. Big, see that when it, the sled moves up and down in Kreisel, that's the loop we're seeing but really nice exit, nice and early onto the curve following the Kreisel. Oh. His feet are a little bit down there in curve 13. There's a lot of pressure in curve 13. Oh, is um, there? That there is, you go in late there and there's... You're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's just, I'm not sure, he had a lot of feet dragging there, but yeah. it wasn't quite, when, when athletes drop their feet on the ice, it's for one of two reasons. Um, it's either a way to quickly fix the sled when you're in trouble, it's a, it's a way you can steer with a little bit more stability if you're losing control and losing grip, or sometimes if your legs just ride a little low, you hit some pressure and your feet skim the ice, costing you time unintentionally. Um, and I'm not sure what we were seeing there. Um, so it was just little skims. It didn't seem like he was trying to uh, adjust where the sled was, but it's, it's so subconscious sometimes too. Right. You just know that'll keep you a little safer, a little more um, where you want to be. So yeah, we see his feet skim there, a little bump on the wall. He does a really good job adjusting back into it because that's where you want to be going into the next curve. You don't want to be going late. It's hard not to be exact when you can be. In the ice, we've got Gintz Berzins of Latvia. Comes from Segulda. We'll be headed there in a few weeks. They'll get to finish out the season on home ice. And the Latvian team had some success earlier today. They had a, yeah. a silver medal in the women's doubles competition, and I believe they had some uh, medals in the sprint competitions yesterday. So they certainly have found speed here in Altenburg. So we'll see what Vince Bersons can do here. Yeah. He's a former badminton player, which if you watch oh, Olympic level is High they action. Have, they really have the yeah. fast switch muscles, fast reflexes. So I, I, I could see some transfer to Luge. Quick reaction time. Yeah, for sure. He's in the green ahead of Gran Cagnolo on German ice. Can he hold it? Oh, oh, oh. Small foot drop there. Out of 14. Oh, wow. He lost a lot of time there from 14 down. Fourth place for Gintz Bears and just behind Josef Ninnis. Our two Germans, Gran Cagnolo and Nussler, remain at the top here. And you are then also. Kaspar Srings, his landsman, is the next. Kaspar Srings, let me please prepare you the next.
Yeah, yeah so that's just... Extended foot drag. And it's just, there's so many strange pressures happening on the sled sometimes. Uh, you want to keep the pressure going down the hill straight. Yeah. But when you come out of a curve with that pressure, it's trying to send your sled into a skid. And you can steer with your body weight, you can steer with your leg, you can steer with your handle. Keep that sled online, going straight, not losing speed as much as you can. But sometimes the best fix is to drop your foot, but that yeah. is costing you. You're, you're actively braking. That is how we brake at the end of the run, is we put right. our feet down on the ice to slow down the sled. So every time you see an athlete touch their feet to the ice, they are costing themselves time. For Mopatsi, Latvia, it's Kasper's Rinks on the ice, her second Latvian of the day. One of the young up-and-comers, 20 years old. He's a little high on um, curve eight there and a little late to curve nine, it looked like, but stays very calm and has enough speed there in curve nine to kind of get that exit a little more consistent. One of my favorite parts about the camera angles this year is that rock and roll feeling out of Kreisel is how it feels <laughs> as well. Like, you, it's very visceral. And so if you're wondering, yes, that is very much how it feels coming out of Kreisel. Five hundredths of All a second. Right. We, we have a new leader. Yeah, the first sled to pull ahead of those two um, Germans who were early off in the order is one of the Latvians. And he is actually, this was the top finisher in the preliminary run. Right. So, that makes sense. He he <laughs> went the yeah. best out of this field of he athletes beat the so Germans far before. on he did Thursday. It again. And now um, we get into the seated group. So these are the athletes that did not have to have a preliminary race. They had a random draw. Um, rank 7 through 12 will go first, random draw. And then following them, rank 1 through 6, um, random draw. And then we'll have the rest of the field and then flying the field. into the top 20. That's right, which is so, so brutal if you finish in that preliminary run 11th place Ooh. and you go. 25th off then, yeah. that's, that's rough. It was almost an hour's worth of good ice. 20, 23rd. And Dropping this, in, Tucker West. His start is so powerful, and um, I'm, I'm hoping we see a fat, and there it is. A tenth and a half at the start is so valuable to have. 300's off the record. 300, well, I know he's hungry for that in the yeah. second round then. As we were discussing before the race, hails from Lake Placid, New York, like, almost the entire luge team, the <laughs> right. whole US luge team. Just got married in June. He did, I'm sure Rachel is, well actually I'm not sure she's up watching. She Wake might up, be up Rachel. watching. <laughs> <laughs> he's having a pretty decent run. He's making some little corrections, but relatively calm on the sled. I mean, he's such a talented slider. He works so hard and oh, you just see Ooh, that hard work coming in to play. A little bit little late, that bit loop late always there. gets me. And it's 400, Tucker West is our but new leader. By 400 of a second over Casper's rinks. Beautiful run there. He had a great run yesterday in the sprint, but unfortunately his start gets kind of taken out of it. That's right, it does. Tucker's always said, and I, I, I mean, the name doesn't quite make sense. The sprint is the, the first section. He said, why don't we just have a race where it's the first three curves instead of <laughs> everything but. Splits race. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Sponsored by some ice cream shop. You just do a splits race, and right, then everybody can right. celebrate the one through three champion, four through six. Great. Um, I'm your host, Bree Schaff, joined by Team USA's Summer Britcher, and we have Alex Verlazzo of Townsville, Queensland. Australia on ice. Ooh, so we saw his sled kind of go back and forth on the start ramp there. It went a little to the left a little early. He's having a great season. He's ranked 11th overall. He is. He's had, I think, a, a few of his best finishes this right. year. 11th, um, 11th, 10th, 15th, 11th. And I believe a few weeks ago, um, when he got into the CD group, it was his first time in the oh. CD group, and he, he stayed in it. So Excellent. He's um, a really nice season. Is it based on how many cumulative races? Uh, the previous three races, the previous three World Cup races determined yep. your uh, World Cup seeding. So he was 11th, 15th, and 10th. Well done. Best finish was 10th on Whistler, which would we call it his home track? I think that's, yeah. that's fair. So Alex trains with the Canadian team. They have a, a partnership program. 
Um, so he travels with them, stays with them, gets coaching from them, sled. So I think Whistler would be a fair, a fair. Oh, track. two hundred wow, behind Tucker close. West. Very close race here. Alex did not qualify, even though he's a seated athlete. He missed out on the sprint yesterday. And that is some of his family and his girlfriend there, I believe, cheering him on. And I don't know the rest of them, but good, good Australian crowd to show yeah. up to Altenburg, Germany. That's a good support system. So we see here, I don't know if cut off. he went a little to the left, a little mm. early to cut it around that um, start curve entrance bend. That's my way of saying nub. We would call it a, around the, the nub or the Yeah, bulbous. yeah. It's funny, every country <laughs> has a different <laughs> term for yeah. that. And people always laugh at the American term. <laughs> or we call it a bunk. Or a bunk? <laughs> I haven't heard that one. From Italy, Leon Felderer. He comes from Latzbonds. One of the younger members of the team, 23. When you said 23, it reminded me there is a race within a race here oh, at World right. Championships, the... and that's the U23 World Championships. So Leon is, he's unfortunately out being 23 already, but... Yeah, we've got we about 16 athletes racing for U23. Well, race within a race, never heard anyone at World Championships. Felder is 800s behind Tucker West. A little high on the end of curve 12, but... It's no problem, he stayed really relaxed. I was just thinking of the Swiss term, Bankina, another term for the Bankina. build up. I haven't heard that either. <laughs> yeah. A list of these. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing is that there's no standard language for sliding sports. Every nation kind of has their yeah. own dictionary, their own terms. Felder is in fourth behind Tucker West, Alex Verlazzo, and Casper's Rinks. So he will be waiting to find out if he gets a second run. I think, I mean, I think sitting in those positions right now, yeah. I, I kind of expect um, He's ahead most of Germany, of the people you would think. In the seated group and in the, the first 10 to go, I expect right. to get a second run. I mean, the, so the interesting thing about World Championships is we always get a full international week of training before the race week. Right. So you guys have been here. Yeah, we've been, we've been here. Um, so for a normal World Cup week, uh, seated athletes get five training runs five runs for the whole week going into the race. So you have just five chances on the hill to figure out your lines, how to be relaxed, your setup for your sled. And here at World Championships, um, we had a full training week, and it's, it's fantastic because you want to have that experience going into the biggest race of the season. But we're seeing a lot of athletes have pretty similar runs and pretty similar times. And I, I honestly don't know where all that excitement came from in the women's doubles race earlier right. today. Fourth place yesterday in the sprint event. It is Germany's Felix Locke, two-time gold medalist in singles, 14 and 2018. That's right. Locke was, for a very long time, the dominating force in men's singles. He was unstoppable. And we just haven't really seen the speed out of him in the last couple of years. Of course, he has um, results here and there, but he hasn't been able to find that magic that he had for so long. Still ranked six overall, but like you said, it's, it's he's a very consistent, yeah. very consistent slider um, in the in the top six and the top, you know, several sleds. Yeah. But um, he's been sliding twenty nine years, he's right? At oh, the three hundreds ahead of Tucker West. We have our new leader. Not surprising on German eyes, Felix Locke, but we still have his teammate that's been leading the World Cup, Max Langenhahn. And Max Langenhahn has has not just been. Yeah, the World Cup, is, but it has been. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there have been quite some big gaps. He's been first crushing and second. the World Cup. There's only um, one race that he didn't one win. One race. Well, two now with yes. the sprint yesterday. So one World Cup since, I believe, since last World Championships. Yeah. So Jonas Mueller won World Championships last year. And then Max has won every World Cup until Eagles two weeks ago right. when Jonas Mueller um, won the race, and yesterday we saw David Gleischer win the Sprint World Championships race, um, also from Austria. Beautiful run by Felix Luck. It's nice and not surprising. 
all business with Luge on the German team. Back to the top for David Gleischer of Austria. That's who we were just talking about. Yep. So David won the Sprint World Championships yesterday. Which is his best finish of the season, his first podium of the season. Oh, wow. It was a, it was a gold medal. So, of course, he wants to do well today. Um, he certainly can't improve on that result, but yeah. he's definitely aiming to match it. So far, everyone's been managing four to five pretty well. That is such a tricky spot. It is tricky, and it's it's hard to see on the camera angle, but it's a pretty steep uphill from curve four into curve five. Curve five, half the curve goes uphill before it starts to go downhill. So, I mean, I guess technically there are three uphill sections on this track. Right. It's uphill in curve five, uphill in Kreisel, and uphill in the straightaway between 14 and 15. And it's such a long track. Those uphill sections are really checks on speed. Leischer's got quite an advantage over Felix Locke. Capitalizing Three on yesterday's <laughs> performance. 53-9-3. That's a half a second off of the track record. And wow, what a gap. Three tenths ahead of Felix Locke. That's wild. I did not expect that. I mean, it's not like this is a crazy weather wacky race. No, no, but. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I just think there's some advantages at play. Um, Austria has been doing very, very well. Yes. Coming yes. off of a big win. And the longer you've been sliding, that's a confidence boost. If you're younger, Definitely. sometimes it can make you anxious and you wonder, oh my gosh, how did I do that? How do I replicate yeah. it? Yeah. We saw a young I mean, Latvian technology is a massive, massive part of yes. this sport. And um, actually, Christian Eigentler, who is an Austrian coach, um, was the head of technical for eight years. He had a look into every single sled, and now he is the Austrian coach. On the handles from Team USA, Johnny Gustafsson. Three hundredths of an advantage over Gleischer. Johnny's been sliding really well these past few weeks. Um, Tough break yesterday fell to 11th place. Tough break, yeah. The sprint, it can be, you know, it can be so fun or it can be so heartbreaking <laughs> because yeah. it's such close racing. Ooh, Ooh, Ooh dancing through the straightaway. back and forth. I have to wonder if he is as relaxed as he could be with that. Yeah. But he, in general, he's very calm, very relaxed in the sled. Behind Gleischer, working for it. 3,800 back, but he's not that far off of Locke. back off Gleischer is not that far back with, yeah. the, with that difference in Thir Ooh, an eighth place. That expanded quite a bit at the bottom. He's just behind Timon Granconiolo. Split the Germans down there ahead of David Nissler. That's right. And Johnny is, what bit number is he here? He's 16th off, so he's already going about 30 minutes later than those right. first two sleds. And I, I mean... I think we'll see some position swapping in the second run when we see those ice conditions yeah. level out with people going in different different bib numbers. Right, 20 will be a lot tighter in a field. So yeah, we see here he's he's correcting back and forth a little bit and all of those tiny little movements. Um, every time you steer, it costs you time. You have to steer. That's the whole the whole sport. You have to steer. You have to catch these pressures, get the correct lines. Um, but when you can, you want to just let the sled run. The lone man doing double duty. It's Wolfgang Kindle of Austria coming off of a World Championships medal yesterday in men's doubles. You'll go straight to the next race. That's right. It is, I mean, You've done it. Props, props to, <laughs> to Wolfie Kindle. It is, it is really challenging uh, to do two disciplines. Uh, and he's had a, a, a lot of success for a very long time um, in the men's singles category. And his doubles partner, Thomas Doy, has had success for a long time in the men's doubles category. So it was uh, really exciting. To, I was excited to see how it played out when I heard they were teaming up. And they seem to be working really well together. Yeah, it's fun to watch. I mean, to see them do so well this fast. Now he's, ooh, we see him really high a few times in Chrysler there. That's that loop I was talking about. So that's going to cost him some time. Oh, no! 
Oh! And that would definitely also cost him some oh, time. Oh, we saw oh. He kicked up so oh. much ice that we could see it out our window. Oh, that's a tough break for Wolfgang Kindle, who unfortunately is, is gonna have tough. a lot more time to prepare for doubles as he is more unlikely time. to get a second run. I mean, that's wow. so upsetting. You never wanna he see that. He was in second place. In, I mean, that makes sense, but. He was 1700s behind his teammate. Until. I will say props to him keeping the sled yeah. under control on the exit of curve 15 there. Um, good job yeah. keeping it shiny side down. Jeez, that's, that's, a, that's, that's someone that's been sliding 25 years. Well managed, but really unfortunate. He's all the way 16th place. Yeah, 16th out of 17, just ahead of Svante Kohala. Oh, what a bummer. Beautiful run, a fast run up until that point. Oh, he just caught that pressure and just didn't quite level out um, the pressure with the steer to keep it straight. So it caught him and just swung him into the wall there. Oh, and then into the lip. 15. Another Austrian, Nico Glacier. Chasing his brother. Nico is currently third overall. Silver medal in European Championships and a silver medal at the last World Cup in Innsbruck. It's got to be so cool to travel and compete with a sibling on the road. Um, yeah, it's, I, I did it a little bit. I did followed you? my brother in a skeleton, and it for me, it oh, was absolutely nerve-wracking. <laughs> I will say I hated it. <laughs> really? It was just, I was so worried about him that oh, I couldn't focus okay. on my own That's race. Tough. I really wanted him to do well. The men's field was really tight. So I imagine these guys, though, they've been doing it for so long. Yes. I can't they imagine. They grew up together yeah. in the sport. Um, their, their dad, as well, um, was a slider. Right. So sliding family. A lot, there's a lot of legacies it's all um, protocol. coming up right. now and yeah. in the next um, several years. And I people making more before. legacies. <laughs> I want to say, yeah, people making more legacies. I want to say that... Oh, so oh, he is second behind place. his brother, but almost Ahead three of tenths long. back wow. from David. I guess that, that confidence from the Sprint World Championship win yesterday just really helped. Because this, I, I would expect to see... Usually when a team has found a good setup, I don't expect to see such a gap within the team. Yeah. Um, if they're a team that yeah, collaborates between brothers well, and... Um, of course, this is just what I, I assume, but I, I think that the Austrian team um, does collaborate and work together on setups. Um, so I'm, I'm surprised to see such a gap between yeah. the two Glacier brothers. Especially on relatively hard, fast ice. I don't know if this ice is too, too hard or fast. <laughs> I don't know about that. Max Longenon will tell us our overall World Cup leaders is on the handles and in the ice. This is where we're going to get Chasing a win. Oh. Second place yesterday. Silver medal in the sprint. Max is normally two tenths ahead of second place. So this will be really interesting. The sled this is to the watch. sled to watch. This is the sled to chase in almost every race of the last year. And he has a 10th lead already. Now, the question is, will that lead hold? And we'll find out in just a few seconds here on the exit of nine. He's already seen his biggest competition from yesterday. And the the, ooh, the gap is hundreds. closing. He is wow. losing that lead. That's so unusual to see a German lose time on home ice. Oh, 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 oh! Good correction. He's still, he's losing that lead. And we've seen in these last few curves, we've seen he's gonna crazy fall back. changes. How far? No, he does it two hundredths of a second. On he lost about two hundred <gasps> split. Wow. Oh wow! Max Longenon is our new leader, but it is tight, just over two hundredths a second of a second over yesterday's world champion from the sprint, David Glersher. And thumbs down, he did not wow. like that run. He's got stuff to fix. That's a good position to be in. And we have three sleds left in the seated group, all three of whom can go very fast. But just seeing a, a 200 gap between Max and David, that is gonna be some exciting yeah. racing in the second run. I mean, 200 is nothing. <laughs> that is anything. It could be anything yeah. in your run. So they are both knowing they have to be absolutely perfect. Max to hold on to his spot, David to beat Max in the second run. This is what I like to see out of racing. Very I like exciting. to see close racing. And 
there is no better position to be in than in first with things to fix, big things to Absolutely. fix. Absolutely. But for Max, this is a new spot to be in. In yeah. first with only 200 lead. Woo, it's tight. Christer Zapriode's having a great season and coming off of a bronze medal in yesterday's sprint event. He's currently fourth overall and has finished no worse than sixth place this entire season. And that is some solid consistency. Yeah. So we saw David on the podium yesterday. We saw Max on the podium yesterday. Christos was in the third sled in that Sprint World Championships podium. Yeah. And right now, Max and David are at the top of the leaderboard. Just 8 thousandths behind Long and Hunt right now. He is right there with David and Max. Oh, 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 oh no. no. Oh, oh. Oh, that is so painful. That is the, that is such high G-force to go in late there. That is, oh, you hate to see it. It's too bad. Normally in a, in a World Cup, it's you get back on your sled as quickly as possible because you, you want to have that chance at a second run, maybe to have You'll a good time for the through. team relay for your team, or if you're the only sled, but in 20th place, yeah, that curious to hear there. 12 seconds back, that's 20th off. That's so unfortunate. He was having a really nice yeah. run. He would have been right between Max and David, maybe ahead, maybe behind. Every team has their own protocol to determine who so you see takes here. that relay spot. Not really a mistake there, but just a little too much pressure on curve 12, sent him into the wall, and then you went exa he went exactly where you don't want to be, which is very late into curve 13. There was so much pressure in curve 13. There's pressure when you have a good early entrance to curve 13. Yeah. It feels like your grilled cheese sandwich getting flipped in there, no matter what. It's boom, boom. And like, it, it almost feels like you invert. It is it a is wild corner. a lot of pressure when you do it right. Dominic Fischnaller on the handles, the last of our seated group. Or we wouldn't call it seated at Worlds. It's, I mean, seated. it's still seated. Yeah, yeah I think so. Um, Dominic is another extremely consistent athlete. He's, he's someone who's not, you don't necessarily expect him to be on the podium every week, but every week he's got a shot at the podium. Um, he's very consistent, yes. he's a very talented slider. Yeah, still and any weekend top could five be his weekend. this year. He had a silver medal, finished second in Winterberg. Circled yesterday. Fell to 13th after mishap. So many people the, struggled before. There was a lot of struggle, and the ice conditions yesterday were wacky. just wacky. It was pouring rain, yeah. and it was pouring rain on and off. And, Really nice, maybe a little too early to Kreisel, but what a nice exit out of curve nine. Some small looping, but to get enough height on the end of Kreisel, it's sometimes worth it. Let's get a time check yes. on intervals. He was only 600s back, long and hot before, 1700s, but that, that, that is in the in mix. Third. That'll put him, oh, behind, yeah, ahead yep. of Nico Lesher. That'll put him into third place. And right back in out. there, third place for Fischnaller. Just 400s wow. ahead of Nico Gleischer. So he's. Over two tenths behind David Gleischer and Max Longenhoff. Yeah. But just a little bit ahead of Nico Gleischer. And there's really one one more sled coming up who can, I think, a contender fight for those top spots. And notably, Alex Ferlazzo of Australia is in seventh, Tucker West in sixth right now. I'm your host, Bree Schaff, joined by Team USA's Summer Britcher, giving our expert so analysis. A little skid, he had a lot of pressure, and so he fought it, he kept it off the wall. Track is clear for Jonas Mueller. Jonas Mueller. Second overall, having a great season. He is last year's world champion, I right. believe. Um, and he's the only athlete other than Max Long and Han to win a World Cup since then. Wow. That was last year on last week on his home yeah. track in Eagles, Austria. Also took home the European Championships gold. That's right, and that's a that's a big deal, the European chip. I've never raced one. But yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well you did. You just they just so didn't they, wouldn't take, get, they take wouldn't give you a medal. Sheets, yeah. <laughs> And he has Ooh. just about a 200th lead coming down into this the prize is interesting. Oh, and, and he's in already the in the red. Oh, that was hard. Hit 
late. Really late to 13. Oh no. Big skid. It was just. Oh gosh. Okay, we're, we're back online, 1600s. That's gonna get worse as he comes to the finish, but at least he's on his sled. Mueller. He's on his sled, but that's really gonna Ooh. cost him. 11. And that's, that's tough. That's a tough wow. spot to be in. I mean, just behind Germany's Timon Gregoriolo. So we saw a similar mistake to what Christos Apriot made before him, and yeah. that was, he didn't hit the wall before curve 13, but he went in late. But I think what saved him was, without hitting the wall, he was going in late at a more parallel angle with the walls of the track instead of coming yeah. away from the entrance of the curve. So just a little less pressure to fix, but he was in first place up until the third interval. And he started bleeding a little bit, and then, of course, it all fell out from underneath. And there we see, yeah, just still, still the results of that mistake in curve 12. So now these are the standings following the, the first 10 of the preliminary and the seated group before we continue on with 11th place from the preliminary on through the rest of the field. We do have 36 sleds total, so that is our interval current standings. This is a very, very exciting race. It will be, I mean, be even more exciting if we see someone pop up there. But now everyone is racing to get into that top 20. We've had it set. 22 athletes have been down the ice. Wolfgang Kindl is sitting in 20th position after that gnarly crash. That's He'll right. drop back even further. Dropping in from Italy, Lucas Pache. Early to curve five, but not a not a major mistake. Just little things here and there. Nice exit Ooh. of curve nine. He's already almost six tenths back though in the Kreisel. I mean, I imagine the ice has deteriorated quite a lot, and so Lucas Pecky here is in. Poor guy, the worst spot to be in, finishing 11th place. If he had been one spot higher in the pre preliminary run, he would have right. been would have the 10th sled off nice. ahead of all the seated athletes. And 20th place, wow. Just edges out Wolfgang Kindle, who now officially has a break until the doubles race later. That's right. Great crowd on hand here. Look at that, there are so many people, busloads of people out to watch the action here in Altenburg, Germany at the 52nd FIL World Ooh, Championships. See that lot of pressure. He almost got pancakes into curve 12 there. He handled it really well and handled that pressure over to the right well as well. But that's all costing him time. Yeah. And when you go so late in the order, you can't afford to lose any of that time. And that, yeah, there are, a lot of great fans and spectators here, which makes the event so much more exciting. There's great energy at the track. Daniel Marcioski of the Ukraine on the ice. Wild to see, you know, to go from is someone going to take first place to now so quickly a half second back. Exactly, and now it's the question: of, Okay, will they make it into the second run? He's currently sliding in 24th position. He had a big loop in Kreisel. but he's relatively young, um, not a ton of experience, and I've been impressed with his position, um, especially in the top half of the track. He looks very relaxed in the sled, and I think with a few more years of experience, um, we'll see that time drop yeah. quite a bit. He's sitting just ahead of Christos Apriot. He will not get a second run. His race at World Championships is finished now. Whoa, some big height in the Big height, there. very low. 
Very That's high. Skeleton line. <laughs> <laughs> Insulting my people. <laughs> but it's true. You don't have a lot of steering, it's, and that is oh, it's it you is know it's a scary Chrysler. In skeleton. my opinion, it's what makes skeleton both. It's like what makes it easier and what makes it harder. Right. It's so much easier to learn, but then with so many athletes able to learn the sport quickly. Yeah. You got to roll with There's it. There's always that that competition coming in that's fresh. And then how do you find that speed? Yeah. And luge, when you see someone loop Kreisel, it's very easy to say, well, that's where your speed went. Yeah, yeah. Done. Gone. Right there. Alex Scuffler from Team Italy on the ice. One of their younger athletes, 21 years old. He's from Rippian, Italy. Very level and curve forward there. He's having a really nice run, but I mean, we've seen some mistakes. We've also seen a lot of athletes have really nice runs. Yeah. Um, and the time is just not there, and that can come down to the weather, the setup, things we're not seeing on the sled. Uh, but with that training week I was talking about, we see typically a lot of this closer racing when you have athletes. Yes. Um, and is that standard protocol for a world championship? Yes, so always we always have, a training, have week. a training week for world championships. I don't think it has to be directly before Worlds. I think it can oh, be, it can be early, early, early in the season. But I think it traditionally is directly before Worlds. I'm not sure if that's a rule or not. 18th place for Alex Guffler. So he's got a shot at yeah. that second run. And if he makes it in, these athletes that are sitting in 17th, 18th, 19th place, uh, Especially Alex Guffler having gone so late. When he has that fresh ice in oh, the second run, yeah. he can expect to drop, in my opinion, tenths off of his time. That's a great point. So any of these athletes that are going so late and make it in, they could what we call ride the elevator. Yeah. And they sit in the leader's box um, for quite a bit of time. But before that can happen, he's got to stay in that top 20. From Team USA, Hunter Harris. How has Team USA been deciding who to bubble up? And have, has, have there been some substitutions on World Cup? Um, we haven't this had year? substitutions. So we had race-offs um, in the fall uh, to determine our kind of core team. And then when there are spaces available, um, the coaches have just decided when it makes sense. And I think with some communication with the junior team as well uh, to bring some of the junior athletes up. So we have, this week we have a um, nice correction from Hunter is pretty far back, but he's having a, an okay run here. He looks pretty calm on the sled. This is his first World Championships. A little early to 13, but he kept calm. He kept it over and got onto the curve nicely. He's actually, he's controlling the sled quite a bit. I'd like to see him relax a little bit more, but overall, I think he's doing pretty well. Threw him down 25th. 25th place. That's a shame, I know. He was, of course, like everyone else, wanting to make it into the top 20, but with going so late in the order, it's a tough uphill battle. And I think he can he can hold his head high after that. Yeah. Run. He's got a lot a lot more world championships in his future, um, where I expect to see um, some drastic improvements, I think. Yeah, so he had that pressure, he corrects it, he does a really nice job of correcting it, but he might just be controlling the sled a bit too much, but it's always that fine line. If you if you control the sled too much, you're losing time. If you don't control the sled enough, you're crashing. So that's, you know, you have to find that line of, of letting the sled go, but maintaining control. Controlled chaos, if you will. Our one and only athlete from Japan, Seiya Kobayashi. So in the same way that Alex is, um, kind of with Team Canada in a partnership. Right. We have a partnership. Team USA has a partnership oh, with Seiya Kobayashi with Team Japan. So um, Seiya stays with us, trains with us. Um, yeah, and he Nagano closed, seen, right? So he doesn't have a home Nagano time anymore. closed. Um, I know he is actually the, the Asian champion. They had Asian championships in Pyeongchang this year. Wow. So Very um, cool. Seiya is the Asian champion. We were talking about European championships earlier. Yeah. And he has that proud title to his name. Um, yeah, and he's been having a, a pretty good season. I've seen, oh, what a correction. Phenomenal correction out of Seiya there. He was 
really high on curve 12, came out with a skid, went over to the wall and just stayed so calm and corrected right back into curve 13 to be early. 25th place, so he will not get a second run, but he did have that mistake. I don't know if it would have been enough if he had had a clean run to make it in, but he can be really proud of that correction. Yeah. And he should be really proud of, of his weekend. So yeah, he gets bumped, a leg bumped, all of a sudden big skid off the curve, goes to the wall, cut away his, his awesome correction there, but we've seen um, a lot of people make that mistake, and he, he really had a high level correction. From Team Romania, Eddie Krejci. There seems there's more male athletes on tour this year, would you say, than last year? It seems like sometimes the races last year, everyone uh, made it in. I was just looking at the standings here, and it appears that there have been a few races that he didn't get to race. The I, main show, oh, no. Gonna... Now, I mean, with the ice the way it is right now, any tiny mistake is costing you a shot at a second run. But right. with the skids so high up on the track and curvy. Oh, yeah, and another one out of Kreisel, feet down. Frosting up. Tough run. What's right tricky is, is sometimes when it frosts up, you, you technically have more grip and control, but the ice just doesn't react the way you know right. and expect it to. It takes. So even though it should be safer, it should be slower, it, it, it doesn't work the way you're used to, and it can actually be kind of nerve-wracking. We're used to this good ice. Last week we had phenomenal conditions here, yeah. and now we're fighting the weather. 27th place for Eddie Krejcian. As we see there, laid a big, big skid in curve eight. That, I mean, if you miss those upper labyrinth corners, it is tough to get a good So much nine. time. Small mistakes there yeah. are so much time. Back to the top for Canada's Dylan Morse. Did not get to race the sprint event yesterday. That's right. This is uh, Team Canada's only men's singles competitor this season. 19 years old. They're definitely in the process of rebuilding that program. Sam Edney, their high performance director, is here. That's right. On hand to saw support. Him yesterday. He was on my flight, but I was very confused and jet lagged <laughs> to Dresden. And he didn't have any Canadian gear on. And I was like, this German looks exactly like Sam Edney. You know what? Actually, I have a funny story about being confused by Sam Edney on a flight. It was my first World Cup. So I never like slid with Sam or anything. I think we were, it was training in Sochi, Olympic season, 13-14. And I guess Sam and someone else had talked to the flight attendants and convinced them. It was a charter flight, so everyone was on the same right. plane the whole tour. 26th and, place for Dylan Morris. Uh, so he will not make it in nope. to the second heat. That's unfortunate. Yeah. But he's young, and he has a lot of a lot of racing ahead of him. And I, I look up from my seat, and it's Sam Edney asking if I wanted him to drink. And I, I didn't know Sam Edney. But I was just so confused because I knew I knew I was I just didn't know. I, I huh, not that interesting of a story, but I was just like, oh, the it's not the first time he's been confused. And I was I was 19 and I was like, is this this guy looks this flight attendant looks just like I think one of the sliders that I don't know. <laughs> so just a silly story. Yeah. When I saw but, him later at the um, opening ceremony celebration, I was like, oh, you you look exactly like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Oh, there he is at the finish. Helping out, hopefully commentating with me tomorrow for one of the races, either the relay or women's. And we've got Walter Wickstrom on the handles from Finland. Exciting to see uh, Finland on the timesheets again with a competitor here. And this is great because we get to see athletes that don't often make it 
into the actual World Cup race, whether they're racing the Nations Cup or taking breaks, they're oftentimes on and off the circuit. That's right. That's right. But Walter is 30th off the handles here, which means he would have actually made it in to a World Cup field. 30 yeah, athletes right. make it in, so he would have made it in um, from, from a traditional Nations Cup. Very potentially racing for funding as many nations are here in World Championships. Oh, oh, oh. Nice correcting there. Ninth out of 30, just ahead of Christers Abriotes, who had that very unfortunate crash, but still crossed the finish line. I mean, I think Walter can be pretty proud of that run. Yeah. Um, not a super experienced athlete, and I think he's not going to get a second run. I think it'll be it'll be tough for any of these athletes going late to make it in, but. You can still be proud of your performance at World Championships. And he like he has a lot of these mistakes, but he doesn't have a ton of experience. He fixes them very well. And that's one of the most important things is when you get into trouble, how quickly you can fix it yes. and how well you can fix Especially it. Especially in Altenburg. Especially in Altenburg. From Bosnia, Herzegovina, Hamza Plejo. Somebody's excited. excited about her for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the crowd is increasing here. It'll be a very exciting final for the men's race. And looking forward to some of the bands. We should have some music showing up here in the Ooh. middle of Kreisel. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh, oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Good to Whoa. see him get it back yes. under control. That, that was the lucky skill. so line. disastrous. And he... He had a massive skid in, into Kreisel and big loop there, but he was able to get it under control where it counts for safety and security on this difficult track. Well done. It's through and down. Just ahead of Christer's Apriotes. Poor Christers, I keep comparing everyone to someone who crashed. <laughs> he did stop. get back on yes, his sled and finished. He did, though, yep, which he is... finished, so he's technically currently in 31st. Oh, almost out of sight in the gutter of the curve. Shonen Lu from Team China in the ice. Oh no. Just five sleds remaining. Oh. Struggles at the top there. And with two hits at the start of the oh, track. Oh boy. That, I mean, that's, gonna, that's, that's his whole run sort of gone there. So now that's he's the really first just we've aiming. Seen. We saw, oh. A few mistakes at the start, but I haven't seen anyone yeah, hit hit like that, and not twice for sure. This is You're sad for him. You know, he wants to have a good run. Try oh, oh, no! no. <laughs> Less speed going into corner 12 helped him out there. Yeah, yeah I think it did. I think it did. He's through and down, 30th place. We have just four sleds remaining of the 36 sleds. Heat one, men's singles world championships. I'm your host, Bree Schaff, Summer Britcher, calling the action here with me. Really impressive what this Chinese program has done, building a program for an Olympics. Your former teammate, Tony Benchoff, back coaching them. That's right. I don't know if I can count Tony as my 
<laughs> was my teammate. Yeah. He was my coach briefly. Oh, um, yeah. I, I guess I technically, I slid in no overlap, huh? training sessions with him. Okay. I raced in the same nationals as him. <laughs> well, not the same, women's and men's. Right. But I was never on World Cup at the same time as him. I was a junior athlete um, when he was, um, before he, he retired, so. Our second of three Chinese athletes on the ice, Jin Yu Bao. Teammate is relatives. Everyone I just say from that America to make him sound old. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they have done an amazing job um, keeping the program over there. Um, props to them. Uh, Korea and China both had luge programs essentially built for the Olympics on their home track. And it's incredible to see the legacy of those programs and to see these athletes um, continue to improve year to year. Uh, and so I just, I really hope that they continue to build on that and maybe in a few years we'll see uh, oh. on the podium. Some struggles Big here mistakes. at the end, but not too bad up until that point. Bow is going to be through and down. Will not get a second run. That is 28th position. Just ahead of Eddie Krejcian of Romania. When you think about how new the program is, the Chinese luge program, um, it puts these mistakes into perspective because right. a huge part of learning in luge is making a lot of mistakes. Um, so that really teaches you years, how to react. It years of mistakes. You. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Well, you're Before programming you really learn. all of that into your brain. That's right. And so the Chinese program, a lot of these athletes who they're the only or maybe one of two athletes from their country, um, they don't have a big program to rely on. They don't have that foundation of knowledge and older athletes and experience. They are out here working so hard, like Mirza here, who's up next. Um, he doesn't have a massive team and support system and his own coaching staff. So, you know, they, they're up against a lot more struggles um, than a lot of the athletes we've seen go already have. Where's it? Nikolaev is another one of those athletes just looking for experience. They get their run at the big show at World Championships because we don't cut the field. Until the second run. That's right. <laughs> second back going into the Kreisel here. When he's not steering and, and correcting, he falls into a really nice natural position. Yeah. Um, so I think his challenge is to find a way to keep that nice position when he's, look at that, head back, yeah. so relaxed, but then he sits up to correct. So if he can find a way to keep that relaxed position when he's steering, when he's driving, when he's making those corrections, I think that's where he'll yeah. see a lot of improvement. I believe they used to have a home track, right? A decommission kind of... I think so. Something to look up between heats or for those at home or Ken Childs, if you're still watching, let us know. <laughs> so see, he's looking, he puts that head back, his feet are high, they're pointed, and then he sits up, he kind of shrugs up a little bit to make those corrections. <laughs> He's happy. <laughs> Great run there for a young athlete. And on the handles, we have Marian Skupek of Slovakia with the second to worst, to worst bib number in this race. He's had a bit of a tough time these last two weeks. Yeah. Um, so hopefully the struggles pay off. He knows how the track works now, knows where the tough spots are. Still a young athlete, but he has been sliding for 16 years. He's having an okay run so far, but his position's not looking great. He's sitting up a little bit. But he's currently only 23rd. five tenths back. That yeah. is, can you find some time? He started range. out 15th. We've seen a lot of mistakes low in the track. If yeah. he can nail this bottom section, he has a shot. Striking distance. Has a oh, shot. he's losing a little bit of time. Currently 24th. Nope. He's continuing to lose time. He's 1.18 seconds out currently. He'll be through and down. 26th. 
So unfortunate. I mean, my heart really goes out to the athletes with this these ice conditions. You know, it's it's such a tough battle when you're battling the actual weather. Yeah. So you know, they're these athletes going so late in the field. They're doing everything they can, but. He's sitting just ahead of Canada's Dylan Morse yeah, and, and Tim USA's Hunter Harris. I mean, he had a relatively nice run. He's, position's not great. He could be laying back a little bit more on the sled, but honestly, that wasn't going to get him in the top 20 with the way the track has deteriorated. Our final sled in the first heat of men's singles at the 52nd FIL World Championships in Altenburg. We have Jing Li oh. of China. Interesting. So we see Lee Drop kind start. of rolled off. Um, no paddles, not really much of a pull. And there's, I mean, there's two reasons an athlete, I have no idea uh, why this athlete would, would make that choice, so I'm not making any calls on him, but there's two reasons an athlete, or three reasons, I guess, an athlete would roll off and not pull a full powered start. Um, one would be an injury. Another would be nerves for the track and trying to not go as fast. Um, and the third reason would be to not go as fast because they want to sandbag or, or, or hide their speed for some reason. Um, or save energy maybe in training. But in a race, it's really just the, oh. Oh, that's tough. Oh. Ouch. Tough break. The Chinese athlete that, and you know, we, as we said, is a bit tentative to start out with. Seeing seeing that crash, I would, I mean, I hope, because I hope he's okay and not injured. So I'm, I'm guessing it was just a, a way to kind of cut some speed. This is his, I, th I think, first world championships, maybe. So one of the rules is of luge is to, to the best of your ability, never let go of your sled when you crash because it can be so yeah. dangerous. So I recall quickly, a race in Segulda watching you sprint to yeah, catch your sled. I get did. Out of the track. It, it, well, it's like it's dangerous, but then also yeah. you don't want your sled to break. Right. Um, yeah. I, oh, man. Oh, so just a classic tip in curve 12 there. Yeah. It's such a, a strange little curve where you have a lot of pressure from curve 11. It just you come in at such a harsh angle into curve 12. The lonely sled finishes the run. We have our results. Max Longenhan, 53.94, set the pace. David Gleischer, yesterday's gold medalist in second, and Dominic Fischnaller, who had a rough day yesterday, sitting in third. David's brother, Nico, sitting in fourth. And we will have an extremely exciting race. Rounding out the top six, Tucker West and Felix Locke in fifth. Alex Ferlazzo of Australia is looking forward to a second run. And our highest currently ranked Latvian is Kaspers Rinks in eighth because their bronze medalist from yesterday, Christopher Zabriot, crashed. That's right. And I expect, I mean, there's one athlete that made it in to the top 20 after the seated group went. I think just yes. one. Um, and I am really curious to see what he does with better ice conditions in this second run. It was uh, Lucas uh, Pecky. Yeah. Made it in. He's 18th, I believe, so he'll be third off the handle. So he's going to go from having 23rd starting ice, so that's 40, 50 minutes into the race after a track prep, to the third sled off the handles. And I am just, I'm. that's what I'm most excited for the start of this next run, is to see how much time he can build off that. We are going to take a little break here. I'm your host, Bree Shaw. Summer Richard, thanks so much for joining me. We've got the top 20 sleds to determine and crown a world champion here today. Take a break, get some coffee, maybe a little snooze if you're back in the States <laughs> and watching. Hello to the Luge Moms and the Luge Dads, and we will see you shortly.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, your FIO studio show is back. Uh, my name is Kate. So we made it up to the start of the track, to the very tip top. This is men's start. Um, so before I show you around, I always say welcome to my crib. Let me show you around my house. Um, I'm looking at the timesheet over there, and it's exciting racing at the top. I know it's a little far, but so at the top, we've got Max Longenhan. No, you're good. You can stay. You can stay wherever you want. Max Longenhan is in the lead, um, something he's looking for from yesterday. He got second, not what he wanted, but right now he's in the lead, but only by 23 thousandths of a second. That is like, that's like maybe three blinks of an eye. Like it's not much. And this track is so long. So the fact that it's so close, David Gleischer, our sprint champion from yesterday, our sprint world champion from yesterday, he's sitting in second. So what a weekend. Like that would be such an insane weekend for him if he went back to back world champ. So again, I don't have favorites, but he's a little bit of the underdog and I pull for the underdog. So David Gleischer in second and then third, Dominic Fischnaller. He's a ways back, 2400, so over two tenths, almost two and a half tenths. I don't think he will be catching up, but there's gonna be a race with Nico Gleischer, David's brother, to get onto the podium. So I'm excited to see those last two runs. Um, it's a little crazy at the bottom with all the fans, so it's gonna be loud. Uh, it's just gonna be a great environment to be around. So that's what happened with the first run. We've got about 30 minutes before we get into the second run. Uh, people are kind of hanging out. Uh, we have some cool stuff we're gonna show you. But yeah, let's take a look at what we've got going on here. So this was Valentin Kratu's sled. He, with coach was just doing steel work. He was going back and forth. Um, he keeps the towel in the middle so the residue doesn't get on it. But I don't know if you can, like get a look at these steels because they're pretty incredible like if you look into it if you can see your reflection like if you can do your makeup in the steels that's when you know they're good enough the mirror because um, normally they're really cloudy but once you do steel work like you'll move up from 320 grit to 600 800 thousand like you'll spend you could spend a few hours doing steel work but as soon as you can see, like, you can do your makeup in it and it's a mirror, that's when you know uh, you're good to go. So on race day, they have to keep those mirrors shiny the whole day. So, like, if they hit dirt in the track or if they hit something, they have to start over and redo all of their steel work. So it's a, it's a tedious part of the sport. We were talking to Christer Zaprios yesterday. He said it, he loves doing it, so more power to him. Um, not a lot of people love doing it, but... We will leave uh, Kratu's sled alone to be at peace. So I'm going to pull you around here. Jury, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, we're going to come around here, try and get out of everyone's way, and we're going to show you the start. So we've talked to a few people, and the start can be a little scary. Uh, before they get onto the ice, this is, the, this is where they weigh them. They weigh them with their sled, uh, with the athlete. If they're overweight, they can be disqualified. So they have to make sure that they don't eat too big of a breakfast. Uh, that's happened before. You gotta make sure that you're underweight. They'll grab their sled and they'll come over and then this is where they get set and they get ready to go. The start ramp is not very intimidating. Luckily, it's a nice kind of easy going start ramp, but the track is intimidating from the top. It is so fast from up here. Like it's really a different ball game. Like it's not just like, an easy thing to do. Um, I don't know, like, there's only a few women I know that have gone from the top here in Altenburg. It really is just like a whole different thing. So we're talking to like Jordan, uh, no, excuse me, Jordan. I'm talking to Hunter from Team USA and he was saying how he really appreciated that extra week of training because it's just, it's just kind of scary from up here. So one thing that I'm noticing is I'm noticing that there's a little bit of water, which I don't know if that means it's getting a little warmer or if they just spritzed, but it's something to watch for. You'll see the grooves right here. They filled them in quite nicely. When this ice is soft, um, the grooves can actually get pretty deep. And if they get deep enough, you'll actually hit concrete. So anyways, we could talk about the start a lot, but let me, let's get going with this little break that we're going to show you. So Max Longin on, he's currently winning. Uh, we have an athlete of the week with him. He's such a great guy. Every time I talk to him, he's just a nice dude. He he's like, doesn't say mean things about anyone. He's always so positive. Even when he doesn't have good runs, uh, he's just like a joy to be around. So here's our Athlete of the Week with Max Longenhan. Max Langenhahn, Ernst Roda, Germany. Um, my sister was doing like Luge in our hometown club 
and I was yeah doing really really much soccer in between and then uh, I, we picked her up after some training sessions and I was like we had like 30 minutes rest of the training of, of uh, the luge club and I was saying to my mom come on let me try this and uh, yeah in the end I landed here <laughs> Good question. I think if I sh should describe it, I would say it's like going down a hill uh, as a child on snow with so many friends and now it's like a professional thing. The, the uphill part is really, really icy and uh, we are way, way faster than uh, driving down like a, like a ski slopes with the sled as a child. I think stopping at first stopping the war in the Ukraine, but all in all, stopping all wars all over the world. And I think, uh, yeah, love more every kind of culture um, you have in the world, every kind of person, every country, every male and female. I think that would be the second one. I think with some small things like I putting on for the competition the same socks every time the same underwear mm, I think Overhof because it's my hometown but um, there are so many places in the world where loose tracks are amazing to drive down um, and that, that's the reason why I have not one special uh, favorite track I think Michael Phelps. I think he's he's the one who's uh, gaining so much medals with such a different lifestyle. Um, but yeah, I think the, the success on the Olympics give him the right to do anything he wants. I think sushi. Mm, I think Sicily is great. Uh, for Europe, but there are so many great places like New Zealand, also America, Canada, Bali, Indonesia. There's so many amazing places in the world. I think privately that uh, all my family members, my parents, my grandparents, uh, my girlfriend are all healthy and no one is ill. I think that's the most important thing to me. And on the sports side, I think the World Champs in Overwolf last year was one of the greatest things I've, uh, yeah, I've going through. Uh, winning medals at home is, is such a cool thing in front of all the uh, friends and family members. Oh. I like uh, these big tuners, like the black tuna or blue tuners because they're looking so great and being so fast in the water. I think I would pick one of the one of the tuna species. Invest in my luge club or in a foundation. I believe there are so many good foundations in the world where you can where you can spend money on because they're doing such a great work for like um, some problems in the world which been solved. The Erzgebirge, the mountains of the federal state Saxony, situated south right at the border to Czech Republic. Lots of international competitions are held here, like the Nordic Youth World Championships just some years ago. But there's also alpine skiing and snowboarding on the slopes of the Erzgebirge. And there are lots of indoor activities you can try.
In the 17th century, when the mining industry declined, lots of miners started to produce wooden toys, including the world-famous nutcrackers. Altenburg is 40 kilometers away from Dresden and it also has some interesting slopes and even a little ski hill. But the most famous sports facility is of course the Altenburg track. It's not only the home track of famous luges, but also for bobsleigh superstar Francesco Friedrich. Okay, FAL Studio Show. So we are up here at the men's start, but we, we found something up here that I want to show you. First, this is bobsled start. It's a really long runway. This is where everyone's cheering. Uh, they come off of here. This is in between the men start over there. Bob is in the middle. Now this is this is what I'm going to show you. I found the Germans. They were pulling out a grill. I was sitting in the car. I was staying warm and toasty. And all of a sudden I see one of the German coaches dragging a grill with wheels. And I was like, what are they doing? So we're going to sneak in on them and I'm going to show you. They're tailgating. They're tailgating mid run. It's pretty awesome. Um, look at it. I was like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, uh, a special lunch for coaches only. So this is <laughs> Norbert Locke. He pulled this out, put charcoal on it, and now they're grilling up all of this bratwurst. I was explaining to them, I was like, I was like, this is this is German tailgating right here. Is this the the Schnellgeheimnis, the speed secret? Yes, yes, that's the, the secret, the fastest secret yeah. for, I hope, of the victory and yeah. uh, Max, uh, what to eat? Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Thüringer Bratwurst. Is this, I was going to ask, is Thüringer? Thüringer. Yeah, yeah, it's a Thüringer Bratwurst. Yeah. Was ist der Unterschied zwischen Thüringer Bratwurst? What's the difference between Thüringer Bratwurst and... Der Wein yeah. ist Weißwurst, Thüringer Bratwurst ist Thüringer, ist... Uh, so white. Wie sagt man? Uh, meat? meat? Yeah. yeah, it's meat. Yeah. Meat, no, no meat is... Uh, was the fat. spices. The, the fat. More, more fat, more Ooh, fat. More fat. Oh, so it's better for us. That's very healthy. Yes. yes. Very healthy. It's extremely yes. healthy. It's better for my genug. Yeah? So is it, it's better for my health. Yes. Is this... Wait for Diana. Diana bring the, uh, the broth. The broth. Uh -huh. Yes, and then we can eat. It's a team effort. Yes. It's a for the man. Is this for your athletes or new coaches? For athletes or athletes after the race. Oh, after the race, after the race, I just love this so much. Um, yeah, so Turing and bratwurst—it's a special kind of bratwurst. Uh, they have special spices. He says there's more fat in it. Um, but this is kind of the nice part of racing at a home track. Uh, you get like your own space. Um, you can come cook your own food. Uh, in here, this is the clubhouse that they have going on. We won't go in there because they're in race mode but we can see some athletes they're doing uh, steel work in there they get to stay warm inside we saw the Romanian team earlier they were just doing it out in the open on like a sled stand I guess but this is the hometown crowd this is what happened so I was telling him I was like I was like what's the word for tailgating in German and they're like was is tailgating I was like you know with the truck you grill it's for football take your shirt off you jump on tables you know the whole thing so anyways this is just cool we had to sneak up on them um just a lot of fun we've got spectators over here so we're gonna head back over to the start but i just had to show you i think this is the german secret i think they figured it out i think this is how they this is how they win uh but of course norbert Locke, his son felix Locke, has so many gold medals so i believe it um okay we'll catch you in a little bit after this break Valentin Prezu, Sinaya, Romania. Motska Sebastian, Sinaya, Romania. Handarik Tudor Ștefan, Vatra Dornei, Romania. Șerban Darius Lucian, Brebu, Romania. Gătulan Vasile Marian, Brebu, Romania. Raluca Strămoturaru, Bușteni, Romania. Mihaela Carmen Manulescu, Sinaya, Romania. Eduard Crăciun, Azuga, Romania.
Is this how you imagine a family business with over 150 years of experience? We have to disappoint you. We are Eberspecker. We shape the clean mobility of the future and inspire our customers with smart solutions. Developed and produced by dedicated people around the world. Eberspecker stands for reliable automotive systems and components. Our aim is to offer the best quality in every application. And therefore, each of our products reflects our passion. Eberspecker, driving the mobility of tomorrow. Environmental friendly heating with renewable energy. That's what the name Hagasna has been standing for, for four decades. Maximum heating comfort, innovative technology and lowest emission standards. A heating system from Hagasna can be recognized by one thing above all. Decades of reliability. Whether pellets, logs or wood chips, change to a biomass heating solution by Hagasna. Biomass heating technology. Okay, at Final Studio Show, we are back. There are lovely mascots. Those are those are fun guys. Every year they're here. <laughs> they're just fun. I've been laughing so much today here at World Champs. Okay, we've got a special guest. This is Achim Roser. Is that okay? Did That's I do that? That's okay, absolutely. I've Thank been you practicing. For that. I've been practicing off camera. <laughs> he is the managing director of DHL. Here, show the show the goods of Global Event Logistics. So, That's right. yeah. I, when I asked him off camera, he just flipped around. So, I it's perfect. It's great advertising for what you do. It works. So, tell me, tell me about your job specifically. Like, what what do you do? Yeah. So let's say we are within the um, DHL family. We are the the entity which is doing the special things. You know. So we are doing Olympic movement stuff like that. We are doing motorsport logistics as such we are very well let's say also placed within the trade show and events business doing photo shooting stuff and and, and yeah doing the transportation behind the logistic behind the scenes let's call it like that and we are proud uh, now for the very first time being partner of the of the uh, luge federation that's great stuff you know and so we are very happy uh, being here you know and supporting the teams that's how cool. did you guys get connected like luge is not like your top sport of the world you know how how did you find yourself here how are we so blessed that you are here yeah. today and that you've been connected with luge so it's absolutely likewise to being blessed you know but it's it's uh, as a matter of fact i mean if you move goods and if you have an international event like that one of course it's it's, it's quite um, obvious that you need logistic support as a federation and so we are there of course also to let's say optimize the the, the logistics behind that sustainability is uh, i think a very important topic for all of us and we can help a lot let's say to work on conceptions um, for consolidations and stuff like that really to let's say to 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 uh, better the the co2 footprint for the for the ent entire event you know and so this is something what we are doing and we aim for yeah helping and of course making it possible there's also always a very tight schedule and that means so we really have to to make sure that the flights are really in line uh, with the calendar and stuff like that and i mean this is what we do for many many years in a couple of other sports and event stuff and so we are happy right now to be a part of that here as well you know it's, it's fascinating for me so I was an athlete 10 years ago and it's fascinating for me because I never knew the behind the scenes of like what it takes to get sleds everywhere and get athletes and it, it's like a traveling circus so like are how many sports or organizations are you with at the same time like how do you manage all your partnerships so that's of course that, that's a good question i can't answer you concretely it's a secret it's a secret it's not a secret not really no no it's quite obvious that we are doing that but uh, we, we frankly we don't know yeah so we adapt to the calendars which they are and how they are and we try of course to do the best out of that and that means so we have of course in parallel uh, simultaneously uh, quite a lot of events running so the loose federation is right one right now one of it uh, another one my team or one of our teams is currently working on the MotoGP winter test for instance the formula e is just starting so we just 
in Mexico, for instance, as well as a team and stuff like that. And Formula One is, is just behind the corner. Yeah. It's our UK team doing something like that. But anyway, so that is what we do. Yeah? Olympics is right now also, I mean, it's taking place in France, but we moved already hundreds of containers for the uh, broadcasting service center behind the scene. It's not important, you know, yeah, yeah. it's also not important to know that, but that is behind the scenes and the athletes should concentrate on their sports and we are concentrating on the, let's say, logistics behind making that it happen, you know. They're, they're really lucky to have you because if it's not, if it's not, de I mean, you guys are also just like a world leader in making this kind of stuff happen. Like if it's not for you, then it's one person, it's like the team manager that has to do it and like has to figure all of it out so i feel like uh team deutschland they're really lucky to have you so did you head to mexico like or do you go personally to every place or how do you pick uh, no 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 of course not yeah uh, luckily not but of course we have a team it depends of course on let's say on the volumes which we are moving yeah. but we, we of course our promise to the customer is always being there yeah. always being the one taking care of the of the goods and always being there if there are any any kind of challenges come and arising so that our people are taking care of it so our team Teams are always traveling with the freight. That's that's a, a matter of fact, definitely. Yeah. So, have you personally been on a sled yet? Have you gone down a track? I have been on a slide, but not here, you know. Where, where did you go? On the usual wooden ones, you know. Oh, like the like growing up on yeah, a... Yeah, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm coming from Hanover, the very north of Germany, and the highest mountain over there is 118 meters. So maybe, you know, we have, so I don't have the, the winter sports background, let's call it by that, but we have people, of course, you know, anyway. Yeah. We got to line you up. We got to get you a sled, especially, you know, <laughs> well, here in Altenburg. So, you know, there's Germany has four tracks. You guys are like the king pin of sliding sports and every track has its own personality this one is one of the scarier ones i think so this could be the perfect starting point for I'm you sure to get we should start with the most scary one you know i'm not sure but of course lucky so i i will, I will do that out of question yeah okay i can't wait I'll, I'll i'll talk to some people they'll talk to your people and we'll get it lined up so moving forward with dhl and luge is there anything that you guys are working on or is it just kind of staying on top of the schedule yeah, fr frankly speaking we just had a couple of of, of meetings right now um, I don't know if this is a secret which I'm telling you right now, but there's, I mean, there's, um, let's say, a kind of plan behind to uh, visualize the footprint of the entire sport, you know, the CO2 footprint, because, I mean, it's, 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 uh, we have to care. Everybody has to care of that and the Federation as well. And so we are, of course, looking what can we maybe bring into that sports in terms of um, making the logistics behind that more sustainable. Yeah. So in terms of, I don't know, using sustainable air fru uh, fuels, for instance, for the planes, which we are using, that is, of course, bringing down the footprint of the entire sport. And this is our intention in general, you know, helping also, um, uh, yeah, federations like the Luge Federation to let, let's say to to become a bit more sustainable than they are all, always you know and already yeah? well, especially for these sports that have been around for so long and like sustainability is such a big topic these days and so I as just an individual I appreciate your effort in doing that uh, it's a big you know everyone's talking about it how can we be more green help the earth and I love the earth so I this is important to me so anyways thank you for everything that you're doing uh, team Germany is very lucky I very lucky to have you I just talked to BMW before and now I'm talking to DHL I'm really starting to see how Germany is so successful in what they do. They've got quite the backing. So again, thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you very much. I mean, so it's a pleasure for us being here and thank you for having us. Huh? Well, so we've got a cool little feature on DHL uh, that we'll show you guys. We, we've, we've got you hooked up. We're going to show everyone what DHL is doing, make you guys look really flashy and good. So here's a little bit on DHL. We'll be back in just a minute. The International Luge Federation is very excited to team up with DHL. Together with this special logistic partner, we hope to do things better. In the sport of luge, being on time, exact on time, is very crucial. So as in logistic business. So we hope to be on time with our sport and also with our logistics. And also helping environment with our sustainable shipping partner, DHL. We are the official logistic partner of the International Luge Federation. So we do the logistic for the equipment of all the athletes, the marketing material, the hospitality material, and all the things which are needed at the track worldwide. Okay, FIL Studio Show. We just ran up 
probably five flights of stairs, so excuse my heavy breathing, I am out of shape. So I wanted to come show you guys this. This is the old Altenburg men's start. And you can't even, well, first, we're locked out. The door wasn't even open, so we made all this effort to come see it, but the door is locked. So we're showing you just from the window. And this is why this is interesting. It's because that ramp is so steep. Like, you can't even walk up it. And when you, when you look at it from here, like, it drops off so fast. So back in the day, when they first made the track in the 80s, this is what they used. It's insane, it's so crazy. So apparently, it's so steep that when you hit the bottom of the ramp, you'll like your head will hit the, will hit the ice because there's so many G-forces at the bottom. So if you look back out here, you can see it just drops off immediately. It's like, it's like that really steep water slide at that local water park, and you can't even like see where the ramp goes. So back in the day, this is where they used to go. It was so intense that they, when they rebuilt the track, they ended up making the men's start, which is what they're currently using today. So unfortunately, we couldn't get out there. The door was locked. We ran all the way up here, and we we're like, it's locked, shoot. But truly, like, they had to hike up their sleds all the way from the bottom. Um, those sleds are heavy, and so this is where uh, everything started with men's start. So it's kind of like a little piece of luge history. Um, it's fun to come. It's fun to come see this stuff because it's not used anymore. However, it's still here. So this was like way back in the DDR time. So it's just cool to kind of see the parts of history that uh, still exist. And yeah, I don't know if anyone would go off from the top. Uh, that that's just too sketchy. So, anyways, uh, we just want to show you a little bit of the behind the scenes and kind of what they have going on here in Altenburg. A little less than halfway through this FIL World Cup season in men's singles competition, the top ten. Tucker West of the United States, one of two Americans sitting in ninth and 10th place, along with Johnny Gustafson. Then you have four Austrians holding the top eight positions in the world rankings right now, including Olympic medalists, Gleisha and Kindle. Sixth place, Felix Locke. The German has won seven overall World Cup titles in his career. The defending World Cup champion, Dominic Fischneller, is in fifth. Christers Aperiodes, a top six in every race so far this season. Then it's Nico Gleischer starting off the top three. Just ahead of him, teammate Jonas Mueller coming off of his victory last week in Eagles. And Max Langenhan, with five wins so far this season, leads the way. Thank you so much, Tim Singer, for that top 10 replay of what we got going on. So now you know where the men are. Uh, the stories to talk about right now, uh, David Gleischer sitting in second, just a little bit behind, and then Max Langenhan winning. Those are going to be the ones that we're watching for. So Bree Schaff, you're in the booth. I believe Summer Britcher's with you. Uh, what are you guys thinking about this next run? Summer and I were just talking wild predictions, and Summer, you made an interesting call. Let's hear it. Um, looking at the timesheets here and when people went off in the run and where they're sitting, I would kind of, I kind of expect uh, Jonas Mueller to move up a few spots here in the second run. He's sitting five tenths out of first place, but he had some pretty major mistakes down bottom. Um, major, major mistakes. So I, I would expect to see him climb pretty high in the rankings. Yeah, and he's not far off of that farther out chunk, that bizarre like three tenths off of no. first, you know, the Felix Lockland. <laughs> if I remember correctly, he was, before his mistakes, I think he was right between Max Longenhan and David Gleischer. He was right around, yeah, he was up until the last split, he had a third place split, and then he dropped to 11th place. So, so sled to watch, he could ride the elevator, as you were saying, and it's gonna be a very, very interesting second heat. Very Max Longenhan hanging on by a thread there, by two hundredths of a second over Gleischar, gold medalist from yesterday. So like you were talking about, Kate, I mean, Felix Locke can't really count him out, except he's, you know, a little ways back there. It's a wild race and a wild time, and very excited to see how these last 20 sleds play out. Back to you, Kate. All right, thank you guys so much. I was just taking a look at the times right over here, looking at what you're saying. Jonas Mueller is sitting in 11th currently. I think you're right. I think he can move up a few. Uh, as you guys just saw, the Germans are having their tailgate back there. I'm sure uh, Felix is going to have one of those bratwurst. <laughs> He's going to speed up. I just love that we found that. That, that is like 
what is giving me life over the studio show that we're showing the different aspects that you don't see on TV. And they were just funny. Like, I feel like the Germans are come off so intense because they win so much. So to see this like jokey side of them of like, yeah, we're tailgating, cooking bratwurst. It's the speed secret. Because I was like, is that the speed secret? And Coach Locke was like, oh, it's the it's the speediest. It's the fastest secret there is. So I just that just made me just so warm and happy. Um, I loved it. So getting a lay of the land. Um, they are getting the sleds ready. That's Alex Ferlazzo's sled right there. We were talking to his family earlier down at the finish. They traveled 24 hours to be here. So insane. That's so far. Uh, but he's currently sitting in seventh, I believe. Yep, sitting in seventh, which is awesome. I mean, a top 10 for him is incredible. So we're watching his sled, Timon Grancagnolo. He's the hometown guy. We'll see how he does. Uh, and then we've got Mateo Sokovic. That's his coach over there. Poland is getting ready to go. So we will chat after this race where we will crown our world champion. Welcome back to the second run of men's singles at the 52nd FIL Luge World Championships here in Altenburg. I'm your host, Bree Schaff, joined by Team USA's Summer Britcher, studying lines, studying the ice for her singles race tomorrow morning. The sun is what we call it officially out in Altenburg. The weather seems to be holding pretty well. What do you think, Summer? I do see a little bit of blue sky. We have a small window here in the broadcast booth, and I see blue sky. Um, hoping that means maybe the humidity has gone down a little bit and maybe the track can hold up just a bit better in this second run here. We only have 20 sleds as well, which means a lot of the, a few of these sleds will be going earlier than they did in the first heat. Right, a better start number could shake things up a bit. Our leaders from the first heat, Dominic Fischnaller, off of a terrible race for him yesterday, sitting in third position, and it is tight up there. David Gleischer sitting in second, won gold yesterday in the sprint event, and sitting in first, not surprisingly, is Max Longenhan, the overall World Cup leader that has dominated Luge since he came back onto the scene after injury last winter. We are reverse order from 20th to 1st after the first heat, and unfortunately we did have to cut quite a bit of the field. So these are just the top 20 athletes all the way down to Max Longenhan to determine who will be crowned world champion here in Altenburg and also who will get a chance at another medal with the team relay. So we've been discussing some wild predictions here, but we'll hold off when those athletes show up. It is so much fun here. When they ho when Altenburg hosts a race, it's always fun, but they've gone all out for world championships. They have, it is a fantastic trackside environment here. Look at all of those fans cheering everyone on. Look at the different flags in the crowd. It's a great event here in Altenburg. The track is clear for Andrew Manzi of the Ukraine. Andre was one of those athletes that was early off in the order. He had bested the young Germans, but he held off and was able to maintain this 20th spot position to get a second run here. That's right. The last sled to make it in. The first sled off the handles in this second yeah. run. So he had relatively good ice in the first run, but there's no ice like the ice of the first sled down the hill. He's having a pretty decent run here. We're hearing some small little skittering sounds, and I think that's just either tiny skids or his feet just bumping the ice as he hits those pressure points. Through and down, 54, 6, 5. So that was three wow. times better than his first run, and that's the type of improvement you want to see. You right. always want to be going faster, so that's a better run. Know. Yeah, yes. I mean, if it's the ice conditions, if he had a better run, I think I remember seeing some bigger mistakes in his first run. I think he had his feet down True. Um, a good amount. They've definitely given the track some preparation here, but he had a small skid there. He had an early ranking on the first heat, but nicely done. That's a run to be proud of. 
I believe he's our only, yep, he's the lone Ukrainian in the top 20. Nope, sorry, Anton Dukak is up to up next as well. Mateusz Sokovic, our number one start bid from the first heat, 19th after run one. He's getting his second chance. Really great position there coming through. Could lay his head back a little bit more, but he'll slide through these top curves. I wonder if it's... <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a lot of the men picking their head up there going into curve three, so I'm guessing it's, it's really crucial to have the entrance correct. When you see all of the athletes kind of taking more of a peek somewhere, that's generally a tell that this is a really important spot and it's better yeah. to cost yourself that little bit of aerodynamics and make sure you're in the right spot. It's a weird corner, it's a bit blind. It banks hard right and you can't see the entrance to corner four. So it is definitely an odd spot. Makes sense people would want to take a little look there. He's having a pretty nice run. He could have been a little earlier to 13, but ended up very nicely. Over on the right early to 15. Nice curve 16. We've yeah. seen a lot of time. Dare I say 16. the ice is faster? That's a 54-6-0, two tenths faster than his first run. Also, good run. A good run. The yes. nerves have been shaken out of it. And the first thing you can ever want out of a second run is to hold your position yes. in a race because you never want to come down. Second runs are always reverse order outside of the Olympics. Um, second run is always the reverse order from the first run. So. All the athletes that have gone before you, you already beat in the first run. So you always want to see that number one in the second run. It's not a random draw. It is based on the first run. Hanging out, chasing medals. There will be some continued shuffling here. as so we go back to the top for Alex Guffler of Italy. So Alex, this is going to be really interesting. He was the 25th sled to go in the first right. run. So he went after the first 10 for the preliminary, after the 12 seated athletes. He had, I think he's the only athlete to go after the seated group to make it into the second run. So that's quite a feat. He had yeah, the worst ice out of anyone that's in the second run, the first run. So I really think we can see an improved time out of Alex Goofler here. He's currently ranked 21st overall. He's from Riffian, Italy. He's actually only been sliding for eight years. Oh, wow. Great line there out of nine into Kreisel. Really nice position on the sled. A fairly level Kreisel. Someone's dog does not like the Kreisel in there. <laughs> I thought the that was alarm a person too. making dog noises, honestly. <laughs> He had a little bit of pressure on the end of 13 there, swung him into 14. Yeah, 14 I am is right surprised right to see him two tenths back. Oh! Yeah! Wow. Already by the third split, he was in last. So now I take a climbs to at least 18. I'm so curious if there's if there's something we missed or if it was just not the right setup because he had way, way, way better ice and we saw. Manzi and Sokovic speed up to yeah. the three tenths um, with similar ice conditions. And right. Alex Goofler went the same time. Uh, so that was a lot of pressure on the end of 11. Big swing into 12. But this isn't a major mistake. This isn't something we haven't seen out of a lot of athletes. Um, a little too early over there on the right, but I'm not seeing anything that can explain. Wow, he, he's definitely got some questions after that, that downtime. Back to the top for Romania's Valentin Kritu. 17th after run one. And pretty much, you know, with this many athletes in the field, we're looking at a lot of athletes with no major mistakes now. So people are, you know, make, fixing yes. things here and there, but the disasters got I mean, weeded I'm, out, unfortunately. I'm, I'm questioning everything I know because I, <laughs> <laughs> I, my one prediction was to see Alex Guffler climb the leader's box yeah. with that late start time in the first run. I really, um, I'm at a loss, so right. I'm, I'm sure he is as well. I mean, there, of course, we don't see everything from these camera angles, right? Um, there's pretty good audio right now, so you can hear sleds on the ice. You can hear when they make those skids, but there's so many things that can happen in a loose run. Yeah. Again, he's got such a quiet sled and setup. It sounds great, but he's losing time. Quarter of a second back. He's currently in fourth place. At least he can do no worse than 20th. Oh, third, he found a little time, so he is just ahead of Alex Guffler. <laughs> wow. 
I guess uh, Monzi and Sokovex just really showed up in this second yeah. round to improve their, their first run times. Small skid there. Back to the top for our second and final Ukrainian athlete, Anton Duka. Now we saw his teammate improve his first run time by three tenths with what I would say was a better run. All right. We'll see if um, Anton can pull off the same feat and improve his run time. On a rare sunny afternoon here in Altenburg, it's not going to change things too much. Everybody's had their run on the ice. I did hear a small skill yeah. for three there. That's what's so interesting when the audio sometimes you can pick up things you don't see as the camera angle is changing, but you can always hear a loose skid. That's why we have mics sound. all the That's way down the track. <laughs> yeah, the gnats we call them. He's looking really good on the sled. A small loop in Kreisel, but no one, no one's done it perfectly yet. And he's still in the green, but less than a tenth of a lead. We've seen some crazy things happen in these last three curves with people losing leads, gaining Unseen leads. Unseen Sokovic, he does by he does. almost six hundredths of a second, maintains his spot. So now he can do no worse than 16th place at World Championships. Not bad, but he's had some good finishes this year. He finished 13th in Lake Placid. He's sitting 13th overall. And he has a chance to, to move up from where he's currently sitting as well. True. It's a great run. He could ride the elevator. It's very relaxed on the sled. Yeah. Summer, I'm curious. I, I can't imagine you've slid here too many times when it's sunny, but when it's in 14 <laughs> there, does that is that distracting if the sun is on the corner? Just a sudden blinding light? Um, I don't think I've ever slid where it's at an angle that it mm. that it's hit too sharply there. Against Berzins from Latvia in the track. Gins finished 10th wow. in the sprint yesterday. A much faster second run start time there out of Gins. Five hundreds faster on a second run start time there. He's a gold medalist from the 2020 Youth Olympic Games. He finished 7th at the 2022 Olympics. Hit a little bit of pressure out of curve nine, handled it well and got nice and early. He has a three-tenth lead already. Which, actually, a three-tenth lead. He, oh, 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 he down. That might be mainly out of the first run. Yeah. I don't know if his, I don't think this will be a first place. I think he'll come down to first here, but not in the run time. Ah. Oh, it was. So I believe our, our second fastest run was 600 slower. Yeah. yeah. So he had a handy lead, largely from his first run. Um, he only improved by 500s on the first run. Maintain oh. that spot. Our new leader from Latvia. Latvia always brings it to races. I love it. The so you see there, is. foot down, little correction. He's trying to keep that sled straight. It's a tough section of the track. Coming off of an eighth place finish yesterday in the sprint event, it's Slovakia's Josef Ninis, currently in 14th. Comes from Kachta, Slovakai. And he is the most experienced athlete in today's race, I believe in the whole um, World Cup tour. Ever. Ever. <laughs> he has been sliding a long time and good on him. I mean, the ability to maintain just your health, and uh, he's undergone so many G-forces over the course of his life doing lose this long. Absolutely, maybe it's the key to health, just keep sliding. Just keep sliding, yeah, I mean really, like professional sleigh riding, it just 
It doesn't it feel like, like a cookie <laughs> to help. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe. Really calm on the sled. So relaxed. I mean, that's what you see out of the more experienced sledders. He's having a loop there in crisis. So he's not having perfect lines, but he's handling his imperfect lines with such relaxation. Very late to curve oh. 13. Big skid. A hit before 14. Oh, his experience really helped him out there. He's still two tenths and back. And he didn't flinch. Yeah. Um, he, he acted to correct it, but just stayed so calm through all those mistakes. And that's Lost what you see time, in experience. But very Did well done. Time. That's fourth place that drops him now to 16th finish at best. Well, we have obviously more sleds to come, but tough break after a great race yesterday, but still. You need no worse than 17th now. No worse, and yeah. Ooh, a little bit of pressure to the right as yeah. he's settling there when you want to start turning the sled to the left. It's always interesting to get these additional and camera here, angles in the replay. This is where we see the major mistake. <gasps> so late to curve. What he did, so we've seen a few sleds make that mistake. We saw Christopher Zapriotes crash there, but he was coming from the right side to the left, which is exceptionally dangerous. Yosef Venus went into the curve late, but he was coming back over to the right, just getting that little bit of help a little bit earlier onto the curve. First of four Germans, it's David Nissler. I have to say, I really like the green sled. Yeah. That's nice. Not important, but <laughs> really nice position here on the sled. This is looking like a nice run. So stretched back. Yeah. Not breaking that position for a second, but he is already a tenth and a half back on Burzins. Oh, no! And that... Got another oh, one! So unfortunate. Oh, and lost his sled. That's really oh. too bad. Oh, I hate to see that. That 11-12 combo where we just saw him crash is such a tricky spot. It can look so easy, but it can be one of the most challenging spots. There's small corners, but if you don't time your exit of Kreisel, man. You have to time it so right. Fast. You have to, oh. Hopefully he's okay. That hurts. There's, there's so much pressure in curve 11, and curve 12 isn't much of a curve, it is a wall. That's the one we see, the camera is looking up yeah. into it, and it literally just looks like a wall these athletes are getting thrown up At into. Top speed. And so any amount of, of too much pressure there, too early, too late, it just wants to tip you. It is, it, the whole purpose of 12 is to try to tip you, and you gotta stay calm there, but you also have to be ready to fight. He's up, it's good to see him walking. He'll get checked out from the medical staff on site. Second sled loss today, and it is still, it takes a while to settle because we've got that low point where it's uphill on each side, and you can, I mean, that's the speed. So say it's so high in the end of curve 11, this is 12, and he just gets that pressure a little too early, and it just bumps him. And it's so challenging. He's fighting to get back on his sled. He's doing everything he can, but... It's tough. And then with that pressure in curve 13, probably just ripped the sled out of his hands. He was headed for a 13th place finish at World Championships at home, but now I think because he didn't, so he's now disqualified because he did not finish with his sled. Yeah. So if you crash and get back on and finish and cross the finish line in contact with your sled, it is a finished time. Um, with There's rules on every track of where you are no longer allowed to propel yourself forward. So if you crash um, out of curve nine, I think you can still paddle, but like out of curve 14, you can't then propel yourself forward. You can't paddle the sled. You can't use any um, force to gain momentum. You can just get on and let gravity do the trick. From Team USA, Johnny Gustafson has been at the top waiting for the green light. Summer, for you, how much does that affect you if there's a crash and you're sitting on the handles waiting to go? It depends. Um, 
and it's it's kind of preference by athlete too because yeah. we call it getting iced right. because you're sitting on the ice. So if someone crashes before you or loses something in the track, you get iced if you're waiting for the track to clear. Um, I always get up right away because you don't know if it'll be 10 seconds or 10 minutes. So I just I get up off the ice, I undo my booties, and I just take a step back and then reset. Right, because they have to give you some time. They have to. They sometimes don't always, but yeah. um, they, they are supposed to. Johnny is looking pretty relaxed. He He's pretty good at adapting. Um, so yesterday, actually, in the sprint final, his neck strap came nice. undone before this run. Oh, right. And so he went down in his run with no neck strap. He's trained every run with a neck strap for years. Um, and he had a pretty decent run. Oh, a little bit of height there on 12. Um, all that to say, Johnny getting iced, I think he probably handled it very well. We are seeing some mistakes that could be attributed to that. Really? really? 16. <laughs> oh, Johnny. Oh, my gosh. How much time lasts? Not too bad. He kept his spot, he but I'm sure he was hoping spot, to climb. But he knows now that he could have probably oh. climbed a better run. At the very least, he held his spot. He was 1,600s ahead until that mishap there oh. at the bottom. Oh, that's a Hate gnarly to corner that. to go late into. I mean, mis mistakes happen. That's racing. But he's had a really good couple weeks, a really good attitude, and just I hope he can just put it behind him because he's been sliding so well, and that's just one run. It just happens to be the important one. Right. A wild card here called by Summer Bridger over the break. Jonas Mueller on the handles. Had a tough first run, but still managed to He was going get a second. very fast yes. until his massive mistakes. And the fact that he had such massive mistakes and he's sitting in 10th place right, right. now is almost absurd. So I think with a clean run, we can expect to see him in the leader's box riding the elevator quite a few spots. He already has almost a two-tenth lead. Right, he was sitting, he was having a second place run before things got out of control. A bit of pressure there out of nine. It looked like it was maybe a bit too early that he brought it over to the Kreisel. A little high in the end of 12, but not like we've oh. seen. Small hit there before 13. Yeah. Big skid there out of 13. Oh. Maintaining two tenths, is it going to be enough to climb like you predicted, I, Summer? We I, will find out. You know out. what? This has not been a great run. No. Um, so he held his spot, but that would have been a, a, a few places higher in the yeah. first run. But not much. I mean, he had mistakes. His, his first run until his major mistake was much cleaner. And this run, we just saw small mistakes kind of all the way down from the exit of curve nine. And here, just a little high there, which sends him with that height over into the wall. Just basic geometry. And then he yeah. doesn't have a proper entrance into curve 13, which then we saw in the run, he hit the entrance of curve 14. 10 sleds remain here in men's singles at the Altenburg World Championships. I'm Bree Schaff, joined by Team USA's Summer Britcher, studying the action before her singles race tomorrow morning. And we've got Timon Graham Pignolo from Germany on the ice. Although I, I think I need a lot more studying because I had two predictions and they <laughs> both. It's all right. They have so nothing great, to do with <laughs> you tomorrow. <laughs> different start, different event. Behind Mueller. Behind Mueller by already over three tenths. It looked like he had some difficulties up at the start there. He, I think he might have, and Mueller's mistakes were further down. But again, he's already over four tenths back. We do have to remember that Timon um, Gran Cagnolo had a third place bib. So he was the third one off the ice in the first yes, round. Yes, that's right. And now he's finding right. himself starting later. And that does have an impact. And he's young, not too many world championships under his belt. He's going to drop at least four spots here. Oh, nope, three. OK. Just behind Johnny Gustafson. So Johnny picks gains up a spot. spot. Jonas Mueller gains a spot. So now Johnny can do no worse than 11th. Jonas Mueller is in 10. 11th, yeah, you're right. See if we can get a look at where things went wrong. Oh, oh, here it is. Just oh. 
over to the right. He doesn't hit, but he just misses that, and it takes a longer, wider approach. It's not a disaster. I mean, it's not a four tenth disaster, but tough break. Back to the top for Leon Felder of Italy. He's currently we have 14th to overall. I think, though, as well, Jonas had mistakes, but I think if he'd had a clean run, he would have gone much faster. Yes. Leon sitting in a good position after the first run. Nice and level in curve four. His entrance to five. Those, up, those upper corners are uh, smooth on a never, another level. The first time I came to the track, <laughs> I could not believe that a corner could be that smooth. It is, yeah, Altenburg has a reputation for quality ice, and it's, it's well earned. Leon's having a pretty decent run here. So maybe my prediction about Jonas moving up wasn't too right. off base because Leon is even two with and a rough ride back. And he's late. A late to 16, that is a lot of time. It can seem like it won't be, but it is a lot of time. He brought back some of that lead. We can attribute that to Jonas's mistakes in the second round down low. But Jenny Gustafson will not gain another spot, but Leon Felder drops Jonas Mueller. Moving up. No worse than 10th place for Leon is. Yeah. Good result at World Championships. He's currently ranked 14th overall. His best finish has been 10th in Innsbruck. So tying a best finish at Worlds is, yeah. is no, no small feat. Take it. Kaspers rinks on the handles from Latvia. Eighth after run one. Rings has his work cut out for him. He's so sitting in third place rankings, 1500s back. Less than two tenths back going into the Kreisel, though. Ooh. I think we may see, if Rinks has a clean run here, I think we'll see him pull ahead of Jonas Mueller. Oh, 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 oh I should just no. never speak. Oh, my goodness. And we have another crash there in that 11-12 section. It is tricky. He's on his sled. He gets try and get this He's finish. finish. Oh. They're just such quick pendulum swings out of Kreisel. He'll get a downtime. He'll finish 20th. Well, I think with Gintz crashing there, I think I'm looking at the sheets. I right, believe 19. that secures the U23 championship for Timon Gran Cagnolo. Oh, interesting. So, Good job keeping track of finish, that. But yeah. I, I think that that's the last athlete eligible um, from the remaining sled, so. That's, um, congrats, uh, Duh, even watching the replay, you feel like you can will him back direction. down. Uh, great job getting back on that sled to get his finish. Sitting in his best position of the year, it's Alex Verlazzo of Australia. Phenomenal season that Alex is having. Yeah. Does Alex have a partnership? Who is he partnered with? With uh, Canada. Oh, right, right. Mm -hmm. so he's with the Canadian team. He was with our team for a few years. Um, and now he's with the, with the Canadian team. Sixteen hundred thousands back. Um, that's a blink of an eye. Solid line out of corner nine. Hit. And he lost, wow, a lot of time in that eight, nine section over a tenth back. So he is losing time. He's losing time to Jonas Mueller, so. Yes. Yeah. Who has a bit of a lead on second place, even. Nice run here. He should still maintain spot over Freddy there. He found it. He found top seven. Jonas Mueller. A wow. top seven. This is huge for oh, Australia. That's incredible. 
Oh, oh it's an amazing, amazing result. So great. I mean, he has a shot at moving up still. Anything is possible. Best result at World, World Championships. I bet his family are so happy oh, they came out to this race. Is so great. This is a fantastic run. I mean, not even the tiniest spray of ice no. there. We've seen almost every sled skid some amount there, and he had a perfect exit. He found that time all the way down to the bottom. Wow. He is going to be celebrating yes. <laughs> that one. On the handles is Tucker West from Team USA, sixth place after the first run. Fastest starters in the field. Oh. So powerful on the start. He did have a small wobble there. Oh, the start no. marker is 7040. So that is, he was six thousandths. Oh. I say, oh no, what an incredible right. start. I'm so sorry. He was gunning for Amazing. it. You called it run one. He, but he's a Yono phenomenal Yono is athlete. gunning for the start record, and he was so yes. close. Tucker was just six thousandths off the he's start record. He's got next record. week if we can get he some weather. He does have weather. next week, but this was. The, the thing about the weather is this isn't great for track record, no. but when the ice is a little slower, it's better for getting that start record. Right. So you have a little more grip. Right. He's having a really nice run here. A little high there, but great correction. Ooh. So smooth. Coming around corner 14, Tucker West. And he has quite a lead here. A top six finish would be great for Phenomenal, Tucker. Phenomenal, but he's in 10th overall. And he and holds it. With tenth, a tenth of a second over for Lotso. At least a top six for Team USA's Tucker West and the top finish by an American today. Well, in this race. In this race. <laughs> <laughs> and there we have it. Great performance from Tucker. I think in that second run, he looked a lot more calm on the sled. He just, I mean, look at this height here. That is a mistake we've seen a lot of athletes crash from. And he handled it so calmly for a perfect entrance right to 13. I mean, he just, that was beautiful. And I did uh, uh, get a message that his wife is up and watching. Yes. So <laughs> of course she's she'll up. Be, she'll oh, be Jerry. celebrating that yes. top six as well. Congratulations to them and congratulations on their wedding this last summer. And back to the top for Felix Locke. Fifth place after the first run. Just five sleds remain to determine who will be crowned world champion. I'm Bree Schaff alongside Summer Britcher. Now this is gonna be some tight racing. This is one of those duos where we saw a very small gap. Just three hundredths in the first run between West and Locke. Locke is already back, but Tucker is known for his incredibly fast start. He's losing time. This is gonna be a track that Locke could find time on. Well, that was nice. A beautiful position of a straightaway there. He's not gaining, he's not losing, he's holding at two hundredths. Bit of a loop in Kreisel. Wow, 3,000! And it's in the green. This is going to be so Oh close. my gosh. Felix Locke is through and down. And he's in first. 600, he found so a lot of fit. time in the bottom of this rack. I mean, this is what keeps Luge exciting. Yeah. It is time to the thousandth of a second. No other sport can say that, and it is thrilling racing. 200 off of his first races. run. That is incredibly consistent. Not surprising from the top six men in the world, the consistency we're seeing, but he was behind until the last split. Very powerful paddles there. We see, and he stays a little more, a little stable. He doesn't have a little wobble there. He's nice and stable. His body position when he makes his corrections is drastic. You see his left leg down, his right leg up, but if it works, it works. He's had three podiums this season. He's currently third overall. It's Austria's Nico Gleischer dropping in. One spot away from a medal. And he's in, in the green. green. He's binding time. Five 
five. Hundreds of a second over Locke with a lot of track to go here. A lot of track, but he is heading in the right direction. He's building that lead. Really nice. Locke found a lot of time in the last two curves of the track, but and even more time, he's almost up to a tenth. Late to curve 16 there. It's gonna cost him enough hundreds. Five hundreds in the lead. Okay, so that's a fourth place, at least for Nico Gleischer. Three sleds to go. Yeah, Alex Ferlazzo getting to hang out on that podium for a little while. Until right now. Great showing today for the brothers Gleischer. We are down to the top three. The medal hunt is on. It's Dominic Fischnaller from Italy. And Dominic was about four hundredths of a second ahead of Nico Gleischer after the first run. So this is, again, some close racing. Dominic is a very consistent slider. Um, he's very methodical. He's, I think, all of his results in the top six or... He's uh, a seven, a, seven. a couple okay. sevens, a couple but sevens, still but fifth still overall. Mm -hmm. I mean, his worst finish, finish was yesterday, and so he's making up for that. A massive lead this high up on the track. We'll see at this next split if it's trending in his favor or out of it. It's a long track here. And he's gaining Ooh. up to almost two tenths. Fairly level Kreisel, really nicely done. <sighs> Good correction. It's hard to see if you don't know what you're looking for, but he had a lot of pressure. Oh, no. oh Dominic, no. Oh, no. Oh, he's on his sled, but oh. the medal is gone. Oh, that's so unfortunate for Dominic Fischnaller. He had it in his sights and yeah, I mean, that's that's racing. I know that just sounds like such a cop-out phrase, but no. if you're not ready to put it all on the line, you're not ready to get a podium. It was and all there. He but. was putting it all on the line. He was, I mean, that's why we see a lot of the times some of these, what you'd say, more experienced, more competitive athletes crashing in spots where yeah. other athletes are not. It's because they, you're laying back into a mistake. You're not ready to fix things right away. You're trying to fix it the calmest, most subtle way possible. Oh. And your sled has less control, and just that bump was just too much. They're so, so much unfortunate. In that corner. But the speed is there. He knows the speed is there, which kind of hurts all the more. Oh. Well, Nico Gleischer can now do no worse than a bronze at Worlds. We've got. David Gleischer on the handles. And that um, bumps Ferlazzo up into yeah, a sixth top six. place finish at World Championships. We used to celebrate top six with an extended podium. Um, uh, not at Worlds anymore, or do you do uh, it? Post-COVID, COVID we stopped celebrating. Ah. Um, stopped doing an award ceremony for four through six. It's interesting how that changes that because it's such it a is. pace. Yeah, and it's it's we, you know you pick a number kind of randomly. Like, yeah. Okay, we pick three, and then so six was an accomplishment. Yeah. But now it's like okay, so is it top ten? You know right. what makes what's Gleischer. the Gleischer by five hundred? Gleischer v Gleischer. <laughs> Which Gleischer will be on the podium, or both? At least one of them. Very nice curve thirteen there. That was very well done. Oh no! Oh, oh no! No. It looks like it will be Nico. David is down and out. How far is he going to drop? Sixth, Sixth place. place. Wow, wow, he's just behind Jonas Mueller. Alex Verlazzo is now fifth place, at least. Tucker West, fourth place. And a fifth, yeah, wow. Wow, with one sled to go, you Max Longenhan having the season of his life. What a race. We said when that put the Felix started, Locke on the podium that the uh, women's doubles race had a lot of exciting twists and turns. Yeah. And this men's race has not been disappointed. It's had a lot of disappointments for the athletes. My heart goes out. 
But for the spectators, what an exciting race. Brother wasn't too sad. <laughs> yeah, no brotherly love there. He's just happy to get another spot. Oh, man. Number one. That might have been an angry yell. Yes, it's <laughs> true. You could have been upset. Number one, it's Max Langenhan chasing a world championships gold medal. Got quite a cushion here. Three tenths of a second. This is, as they say, his race to lose at this point. This is four tenths of a lead. This wow. is his race to lose. Wow, I mean, he's generally a fairly consistent athlete. Anything can happen. Almost five tenths going into the Kreisel is a massive, massive lead. This would be a big win for Langenhan, who finished second in the sprint yesterday. Oh. Well done. He is in the clear. Wow. Max Langenhan is going to be the this world champion of Altenburg, Germany in 2024 by with three the quarters of a second. Line. This is the max we've seen for the past year, with the exception of the last two weeks. I mean, that's what we've seen out of most of the World Cups is a almost absurd lead. Have you ever seen a three-quarter second win? I have. I have, actually, but it's rare. Yeah. <laughs> Luz is usually yeah. so tight. Congratulations that's to Max Langenhan. Nico Glerscher popping up to a silver medal and Felix Locke bumping up to a bronze. Tucker West with a great finish there in fourth. <laughs> Love to see good sportsmanship between teammates. Easy to have good sportsmanship when you're sharing the podium yes, together. Yes, yeah. That is a first and third for Germany on home ice. We had wildly varying podiums yesterday, but Germany is, did today what it's known to do, which is dominate a home track race. He looks amazing on the sled. I mean, that was a great run for him. Wow, two out of the three races done for the day. Yeah. And two different um, countries standing on the top of the podium. Wild day here. Max Langenhan takes the win over three quarters of a second back as Nico Gleischer, Felix Locke with the bronze. Tucker West in fourth and Alex Verlazzo of Australia in fifth. Jonas Mueller did make quite a jump there, he Summer, did. to sixth place. That rounds out our top six. And David dropped to seventh. Kasper's Rinks had a crash. So Lucas Pecce jumps up. What a day. What a day. That was some exciting racing. We will have a flower ceremony shortly. Get these gentlemen on the podium. The true ceremony will be held later tonight. That's a great shot of the wind <laughs> here in Altenburg. It The wind is ripping out there. take a wild stab and say this is this our first race that hasn't had a Latvian on the podium this weekend yes I, so far this I weekend. think it might be we had let's see um, they won in men's double sprint uh, second or third for Christers in men's singles um, Alina Vitola had a, a second or th uh, third yep. in women's singles and in women's doubles yeah the second U Upita yeah yeah and then earlier today we saw um, Latvians on the podium, right? Yep, our first race yep. without Latvians. They've had a strong weekend. Max didn't look too certain about being lifted up there. I wouldn't be either. <laughs> Little top heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, the race is over. He's yeah, world champion. Yeah. You know, the rest of the season, this is yep. this is the... He's got a team medal epilogue. to go after tomorrow. What a fantastic crowd oh, out here watching the race. crowd, great There's environment. There's nothing like racing at home. 
and in Germany where there's such an appreciation for sliding sports and of course well, friends and family traveling from all over there's Europe. an appreciation and I think it's it's all of the wonderful food stands and drink stands that make that appreciation yeah, easier to yeah. have there's too many rules it's in Blue North America and some donuts <laughs> One time in Park City, we had a waffle stand Ooh. at a pair of bobsled race, and it was oh, wow. amazing. That sounds amazing. There's waffles, waffles on sticks here. Yes. Too. Max Langenhan, 2024 world champion. I can't say I'm surprised by this podium, but it was surprising how it happened, yes. how it all played out. Exactly. The what way we got race. there. The way we got there. This was a really exciting race to watch. Huge win by Germany, who was looking a bit questionable yesterday as far as their dominance on home ice. And of course, we have a very exciting men's doubles race coming up later today, where some athletes will be looking to make up for a tough race yesterday. Stay tuned. Doubles, men's doubles coming up, our final race of the day. Tomorrow we've got women's singles where my co-host Summer Britcher will be racing. We wish you, wish you the best of luck. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much for joining me today. Stay tuned. One more race this afternoon. It will be exciting. Okay, that last run, uh, wow, 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 wow. Kind of brutal, kind of exciting. It's, it depends on which side of the which side of the fence you're on. Uh, we can see our guys up there, Felix Locke and Max Longenhan doing their TV interviews. And uh, they literally got off the stand. You're good. They got off the stand and immediately went over there and like climbed over the fence. They scaled up onto that little studio that they have up there. Uh, so very cool for him, Max Longenhan. Uh, is our world champion. He took silver yesterday in the sprint championship, but today he became our world champion and he came up and he was excited. He, I think he had over half a second. It was seven tenths of a second in the bag. I don't even know why it was close on the first run. Uh, the second run, he just blew it out of the water. It's like, nah, he's, he's in his own race. He's in his own world. That's how fast he is. That's how good he is. Uh, so again, congratulations to him. Um, Nico Gleischer. Ooh, that was a surprise. He was sitting fourth after the first run, and then he moved up into second place. Uh, unfortunately, the story of the hour is David Gleischer, his brother, crash. Very brutal. Uh, he was sitting in second, had a chance to take first, but uh, didn't go his way. And then same with Dominic Fischnaller. He was sitting in third, uh, ha also had a big crash, but way too late. I believe it was into 13, um, and it just fell apart, totally fell apart. That being said, though, a few people moved up. So Tucker West, USA, finished fourth. This is a major boost to his season. Uh, his best finish this year so far. He hasn't had, he hasn't gotten that close to the medals uh, in a couple years. And then Alex Perlazzo from Australia coming in fifth at World Champs. That is massive. That is so massive for him. I'm so excited for him. Uh, it's such a big deal. So what's happening now besides this crowd going crazy? You can see Max's fan club up there. 
They are living their best life. They were just singing over and over for him. Uh, he's really working the crowd. Everybody is loving him. Um, so once they finish, oh look, they finish right here. They're coming around. We're gonna do our medal ceremony for sprint. There's Natalie Geisenberger, his old teammate. It's kind of cool actually. I saw Felix, he was getting emotional when he made the podium. He wasn't supposed to get the podium. He was supposed to get fifth, but with those two crashes, uh, that's how it worked out. So he's doing his interviews. Um, he got a hi from his, he got his hello from his old teammate, Natalie. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a little bit of a break and then we're gonna come back to our sprint uh, World Championships medal ceremony. Uh, we've got our athlete of the week, David Gleischer. Uh, here's that for you. David Gleischer, Neustift. Austria. I was 12 years old when I started with Luz. Um, it's kind of a family business uh, for us. Uh, my dad was a uh, former Luz athlete and then my younger brother started first with the sport and after being at the track nearly the whole winter and watching him I decided to also start and yeah, started and it made a lot of fun and so I uh, stayed there. Yeah, Luge is a yeah, high speed sport where yeah, maybe some small details can decide if you're going to win or have a little problem and mess up and so I think it's because of this it's very interesting and very yeah, great to uh, watch. that there is no more war. My favorite track is Altenberg. The track which is most difficult, uh, maybe I don't know, but the track I don't like, uh, I like at least is Winterberg. My favorite athlete is Rafael Nadal. My favorite food is Wiener Schnitzel. My favorite vacation spot, well, I, I don't care where, anywhere with my family. I would be like to be a dolphin. Imagine having the elite performance of Goodyear now on your Skechers. Enhance your traction, durability, and stability in any condition, on any terrain, with Skechers featuring the top-tier performance of premium Goodyear rubber. You haven't pushed your limits until you've experienced these two trusted brands on your feet. Get all-season performance with Goodyear and Skechers. We're back with our FIL studio show. We've got our eyes on Max Langenhan right there coming out with the gold. He is our world champion. So everybody's getting quiet. I think we're going to start our medal ceremony right now from yesterday. It's for our sprint world championship. Uh, unfortunately, it was not what uh, Max wanted. He came up second, but he totally redeemed himself today. He's checking out his times right there. Don't worry. It was a lot. It was a lot, Max, don't worry. Seven tenths of a second. Usually like, I mean, just to give perspective, if you win a race by like a tenth of a second, starting. if you win a race by a tenth of a second, that is a ton of time, yet alone seven tenths of a second. Uh, yeah, major congratulations to Max. That is a massive amount of time. You can see everybody's giving him hugs. Now, I don't want to interject on interviews because I don't know when we're starting. I thought we were just going to start. We've got the kids ready over here with the medals. They're getting ready to go. Um, so I think we're kind of in that stalling period of like, should we wait? Should we chat with people? 
Um, what should we do? I, last time with the Latvians, I almost went too far. So, um, yeah, we'll wait and see. Let's let's see. Actually, you know, what? I'm going to talk to Marie Louisa. Marie Louisa, are we starting soon? We are starting soon, and um, you know, I don't know where Matthias is, so it okay. looks like I have to take over. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna get back to your job. You're coming out of retirement. Going <laughs> on. Do you, do you miss your job? Don't lie. Don't lie. She used to be the sport director of FIL. This is her first year of retirement. Never thought she'd retire, but you're living your best life. Rouge was my life, but I'm happy now. Yeah. Good. Being Happiness. A yeah, it's nice, huh? It is. Yeah, I, relax. I feel the same. Always relaxing. It's nice to not be on a sled. Yeah. It's nice to just be here and to work. So I would love to talk to them. I don't know if we're starting our medal ceremony, though. I don't know. Let's, let's get chatty, though. Okay, wait. We were at the top of men's start, and it did, it in fact, look scary. How did your runs go? Uh, not the best run today. It was a little scary, for sure, but uh, good, uh, good experience, bad race, but we have next week, so. Hunter Harris from Team USA, you made it, though. You got to Altenburg. Exactly. And then Rhiannon, I know, wasn't, wasn't your best, but how you feeling? Um, I'm pretty happy. Fifth place is still really good. A little disappointed. We had a little tap before 15 both runs, but... You know, it's learning. We're still young, so we got U23 silver, I think. Yeah. So, you know, it's something. It's what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, Rhiannon Weiler from Team USA. Guys, thank you for coming to join me. I know we were, I was trying to chat with people, but it's awkward because we're starting the medal ceremony. Anyways, good job this week. Consistent, girl. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. Not six, so. No, not, not six. Anyways, love it. Thank you guys for coming to chat in Team USA, uh, saving the show when waiting. Yeah, so this is what happens. They, they clear everything out. Uh, they have everybody wait. So we are going to get into these medal ceremony for the sprint championship. So I'll hang back and I'll let them do the talking. So, damit legen wir los. Wir wollen natürlich jetzt diejenigen ehren, die hier die Medaillen umgehangen bekommen. Und da starten wir mit Platz 3. Third place, die Bronzemedaille, also Bronx Medal. Representing Latvia. Bronx Medal goes to Christos Aperiodes. Christos Aperiodes with Team Latvia. Had a crash today in the World, in the world Championship race. But yesterday did well in the sprint championship, came up in bronze. And look at the sun is out. Oh my gosh, I see blue skies. What a day here in Allenburg. It's been a crazy weekend with the weather. Representing Germany, silver goes to Max Langenhauer. Max Langenhauer, our current reigning world champion, coming up with silver in the sprint championship yesterday. Ziel. Mit einer hohen Geschwindigkeit kommt er dort an, weiß, wenn nichts dazwischen kommt, werde ich hier Weltmeister. Das ist so der Fall gewesen. Holt sich die Goldmedaille im Sprint. David Leitsch aus Österreich. Und damit David Gleischer coming up in first. He is the Sprint World Champion coming up with the gold yesterday. The race did not go how he wanted today. You can see the confidence he wanted on his face. Uh, his name was called, but still to be a Sprint World Champion. Also Christoph Aperiodes. Bronze. Max Langenhahn Silber und David Gleischer, der Österreicher. Goldmedaillengewinner im Sprint der Herren, also im Einzelsprint der Herren. Das sind die Ergebnisse. Die Medaillen sind verteilt und damit, meine Damen und Herren, all right, now we're going to listen to the national anthem from Austria.
Aber damit bleibt er für den Weltmeister im Spritz. Der Allen. Aber da gibt es auch entsprechend noch die Geschenke. Wie gesagt, überreicht von der Konstanze Jakob Ulrich Franz und Frank Ulrich. All right, Max said he's got to go do a German TV interview. I tried to interject. I tried to get him, guys. He is the man of the hour. He said he'll come back afterwards, though, so we'll have to see, keep track of our world champion over there. Um, but yeah, truly incredible racing. That was wild. Uh, the Gleischers had some failures. They had some wins. Oh, go ahead. You can go ahead. You're good. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's crazy at the finish right now. Everyone's going everywhere. Um, but right now, they're honoring Marie Louisa. She was our previous sport director for the FIL. Uh, she's come back as a spectator. I was just talking to her. She's pretty funny. She's funny when she's not working. When she's like chill and relaxed, she's a funny human. So uh, they're honoring her right now. So I'll let them, I'll lay off and I'll let them talk. She's had such a history of keeping Luge going. Like, she truly was the backbone of the sport. They honored her back in Winterberg, uh, but of course, they're honoring here at World Championships as well. She has been in every facet of Luge. Um, she's the one that puts all these World Cups together and made them happen. So now the job has transferred over to Matthias Boomer, uh, who's also doing an incredible job. Uh, so it's kind of fun just to give her one last little farewell. <laughs> It's a little hard to hear, but she's pretty much just saying thank you to everybody. Uh, I'm keeping my eye on Max, though. Don't worry, guys. He just went to a second interview. Uh, we'll grab him after this one. Hey, coach. Hey. I'm going to squeeze in right here. I'm going to get chatty. Hey, Dwight, really quick. So I know we honored Mary Louisa in Winterberg, but we're honoring her again for World Champs? Uh, each, it's really more the venue. Oh, okay. uh, each venue is really uh, honoring her for years and years of service. So, so this is uh, Altenburg's turn to say thank you. Ah, okay, Dwight Bell with the FIL. Big part of getting this FIL studio show together. So will they do it like at the other venues as well or just here? Yeah, uh, the, each venue will want to give her a, a special thank you. So I'm not sure where she's at yet on how many venues are left. It's a world tour. Yeah, it's a little bit of a farewell thank you tour. So yeah. How are you liking these world championships? I feel like they've really done a good job with all of it. Yeah, they've done great. You know, they're a regular stop on the World Cup circuit. So 
very experienced, and uh, last year they uh, watched very carefully the last World Championships in Oberhof, and they've got a great team, very experienced, reliable venue, and they always put a great race on, uh, and the fans are great. We're at capacity. The, this venue holds close to 4,000 people, and it's sold out today and tomorrow. Wow! So uh, in uh, Oberhof, we were at capacity, but they have a bigger capacity, so we were close to 10,000 there a day, whereas here it's close to 4,000, so. Wow, incredible, thank you for the stats. Yeah, Those are helpful yeah. stats. Yeah, I feel like there's so many heads like along the track and everywhere. I feel like this has really been like an elevated luge race. It's been fun. Yeah, it's it's great. This Look at this atmosphere here. I mean, it's unbelievable. Fans are having a great time. Our sponsors are here, all the stakeholders. This is our biggest event outside the Olympics, so. This is what we look for. And you just came from Korea, right? How did that go? It was great. Uh, still a little jet lag, but uh, but yeah, we had a, a really good event, the Youth Olympic Games in Korea. Um, a lot of countries represented, in, in particular Asia. We had a lot of Asian countries represented there. Uh, and it was really cool to see the next generation of athletes that are, that are aspiring to come here. And a lot of uh, different countries are on the medal stand. Koreans did a great job. The upper echelon of the IOC was there. It's a big deal, and uh, we had a lot of fun. Cool, incredible. Thank you so much, Dwight Bell. Uh, yeah. Thanks for all your help. I'm keeping an eye on Max. So he's he's done one interview, another interview. He said he would come back to me, but I'll, I'll wait and see if he does, if he keeps his word. He might not, though. So uh, I understand when you're world champion, you've got a lot of places to be. Um, he also still has another race tomorrow. So he'll be back for the team Stoffel, the team event. Um, but again, it's just so cool. He's such a good guy. He's so fun. We showed his athlete of the week earlier on, uh, so you can guys a little bit. You guys can get a little bit of a personality. So uh, we're gonna take a little bit of a break. We're going to take a little bit of a break. My face is getting frozen, uh, and we'll be back after this. Imagine having the elite performance of Goodyear now on your Skechers. Enhance your traction, durability, and stability in any condition, on any terrain, with Skechers featuring the top-tier performance of premium Goodyear rubber. You haven't pushed your limits until you've experienced these two trusted brands on your feet. Get all-season performance with Goodyear and Skechers. Okay, we're back at the bottom. Okay, I've been, I've been meaning to talk to you, but I know you've been busy. I know, so come, come over here. This is Alexander Reich. Yes, I want to talk. This is Alexander Reich. He competed with Leitner Reich back in the day. When did you retire? In 2010. 
2010, so 14 years ago. Yeah. Wow. So we slid together. It was the beginning of my career. It was the end of your career. But now Patrick Leitner, your top man, is now a coach. We've seen him on the show. But now you're here. So tell me, what do you do exactly for Team Deutschland? Uh, currently, I'm working for the German uh, Bobsled and Luge Federation and especially for marketing, athletes management, the events at Königsee. Hopefully we have Königsee in two years again yeah. in the circle. And yeah, that's uh, what I do. I'm cool. And how does it feel to see Max win today? I mean, that was a pretty, like the crowd was crazy. This was so loud, it was so insane. Did you think he would win by that much? It was uh, exciting and amazing. The race today, especially the men's race, and uh, the people here are fantastic. Yeah and I'm happy about the good results. Do you miss sliding at all? Uh, not really, <laughs> but I miss the people and so I'm happy to be here at the World Championships and met all the friends yeah. from the former time. Well, you were such a big part of the German program, you and Patrick, so they're lucky to have you still part of the program. Thank you for being here today. We're gonna move into the doubles competition. This was your competition. Yeah. What? Uh, who do you think will take it today? I think it's a, it's a hard race. I think as the favorites, in my uh, opinion, are still uh, the post Tobis. Uh, but uh, we have seen today uh, uh, tough races, and uh, the track is very fast, and the track is not easy to slide. Um, it, it will be uh, not easy, but uh, I hope for sure for German uh, for the German guys but also good luck to the others and especially accident-free races. Yeah, accident-free races, we love that. We're going to take a look at last year's race in Oberhof, the top three for the men's doubles competition. Here's a look at that. In last year's men's doubles world championship, in one of the biggest performances of their career, Armin Frauscher and Yannick Mueller took third place in the men's doubles race. The two Tobies, many time world champions, finished second behind their now retired teammates, Tony Yeager and Sasha Benekin. All right, there was our quick look at what happened last year in Oberhof. So we're heading into men's doubles. Uh, it's a, this is the final race of the day. Um, I think. I think my girls are in the booth. Uh, we'll have to see Bree Schaff, two-time Olympian for Team USA. Uh, they were with bobsled and skeleton. She's been commentating all day, doing an incredible job. So Bree, what do you got for us? Girls are in the booth. I've got Diana Eitberger with me from Team Germany. So I like to consider the booth a little bit of you know, talk therapy after a race if you've had a difficult day. So yeah. Diana's going to talk us through the men's doubles race, but also what's been so tricky about this world championships on a home track. So what would you say, you were just explaining to me that just the varying ice conditions. Yeah, and also the conditions of the weather the whole week. Um, every day was very different and it's hard to prepare a competition like this um, to to be the best. And I think it's it's uh, like a bad bag of wonders today Yeah. Um, for all competitions, also for tomorrow, um, who will win and who will take yeah. the title. It's been wild. How is it for you? I'm sure you've been asked this a lot. How is it for you watching the women's singles races? Are you so focused on learning doubles that it's like you can't even think about one more thing? No, it was also hard for me yeah. um, yesterday when I um, look for the others, uh, other competitions and the sprint races. Um, I don't know to who to the um, reigning I world was champion talking. in sprint. Yeah, but my emotions can handle it. Also <laughs> yeah. for the others, not and yeah. if my teammates um, will compete. I'm al always saying um, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I can't watch it anymore. It's too hard for me. Yeah. And um, for that, uh, yeah, I keep my fingers crossed for everybody because I got um, goosebump. Yeah, yeah, goosebump. Um, today in the moment when I had not such a good competition, but I saw that um, the double Eagle Kip yeah. was winning. It was it was so amazing for me, and it uh, yeah, it looks like my emotions are yes. well, fair for everybody. I'm very <laughs> excited to hear your insight coming into this race. Kate, we're going to throw it back to you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
The third and final race of the day at the 52nd FIL Luge World Championships here in Altenburg, Germany. We have men's doubles. I'm your host, Bree Schaff. So pleased to be joined by Germany's Diana Eitberger to give us some insight into this track that has just thrown monkey wrench after monkey wrench into everyone's plans, namely the Germans' plans. So weather, as you mentioned when we were on the studio show, it has made it very hard to just get consistent and pick your equipment. So tell us about the nuances of this track yeah i think um the most important fact is to be good at a start and have yeah. a good speed or take the whole speed into the track and then um with curve nine um this is the breaking point for yeah. everybody so mentally um, and physically <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and it's not easy um, to to manage this curve, but uh, yeah, you have to, uh, there is a, a matrix for it, I don't know, nobody tell me the secret <laughs> spot uh, or the secret lens for it, and so I think if you take this at two, uh, two times in a good, in a good line, then um, it could be that you are, uh, uh, yeah, uh, type for for a medal. And Diana, talk us through the rest of the track here on the POV. Yeah, Altenberg is one of the most difficult track of the world and also out of uh, Kreisel from 11 to 12 and curve 13. It's very uh, important to uh, um, find a good line and to uh, <laughs> um, yeah keep the head uh, wide yes. in the back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And um, also to manage all the risk in your in your feet, and yes. you want to be fast, and so the whole track is full of um, full of. That's points. a great way to put it. Yeah, there is just risk at every turn. Our start list. We have 26 sleds registered for the race today. So we will be going from, it, it's interesting because it varies depending on the seated group. And then there was the race to determine then the first three orders. So bear with us. It's going to be a very exciting race. It's not necessarily you know logical to the viewer right now of who goes what, where, and why. But it will be an extremely exciting race. Diana experienced her own exciting race this morning in women's doubles. So to kick things off, we have Team USA's Dana Kellogg, sorry, Dana Kellogg and Frank Ike. These two guys had good results in the pre-run. Um, they ah. are made on Thursday for um, the start number if you're not in the seating group. Right. Yeah, now we will see the first uh, exit of nine. Uh, it was okay. maybe not the perfect yeah. uh, line. I heard a little bit scratching and uh, yeah, but um, it could be more disaster. Um, right. So they handle it very well. Yeah, this morning there was a lot of ping-ponging through there. Kellogg and Ike are going to set the pace for us as the sun starts to set over corner 14. Yeah, and except from yesterday, I think today we will see very fair competitions um, yeah. about the conditions. So, um, right. Time to beat 42103. And what Diana's talking about is it was pouring rain yesterday, and so there was a puddle <laughs> of water yeah. at the end of corner 14 that was really wreaking havoc on that doubles race. Well, the doubles, actually, men's doubles had a little bit more consistent. They had the drier weather. Things started to get rainier and rainier. And by the time we got to women's doubles, <laughs> it was Yeah, it was, not, it was not easy for us. Um, 
I think also the young girls, uh, also me, yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, young in the sport. Um, yeah. We have to learn a lot, and we need we need a lot of runs to um, to keep the con consistency. Yes, con consist yep. The consistency is difficult, yeah. and and like you said, you're learning. And doubles is a new discipline for Diana, the reigning sprint world champion from last year. Back to the top, we've got Marcus Mueller and Ansel Hauksa. Hauksia, Team USA. Start time. Uh oh, that no. was well managed. Do you think their weight helps them in corner nine? No, I think it's um, it's depend from um, the setup or the yeah. material of the sled. You can, it's yeah, it's it's hard to make the decision if you want to stay clean out of nine or want to be fast. You oh see, yeah, um, he lost uh, he lost One a little bit of time of a second ahead of their teammates. So. <laughs> We have to risk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're going down at six thousandths of a second ahead of Kellogg and Ike. Yeah. yeah, and that's, you know, it is, it's such a risky gamble, especially from those lower starts in corner nine, because we've seen some people crank it through there and be, have a perfect line and be perfectly slow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This, this is fun. Yeah, you see, definitely um, the most time um, you uh, you will go to the right side yeah. and maybe play ping pong, of course. Yeah. And have a very good setup, but um, I think they are very young. Or let me know. Let me see. Yeah, they are very young. It's it's beautiful to see um, that there are also young teams yeah. too um, that they um, can make the experience uh, with a competition like this um, at the real world championship, right. not the juniors. Um, so. Our third U.S. team in a row, Zach DiGregario and Sean Hollander. They are currently sixth overall in their, I would dare say, the most experienced U.S. doubles team, and they are 22 and 23 years old. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can give them a hug. <laughs> yeah, they, sweet babies. Yeah, yeah, but um, oh no! Yeah, uh, this is what I mean. Yeah, um, it's hot, hot leading for me. Yeah, that happened yesterday. They struggled with that as well in the sprint. They finished 13th. That's too bad. And we will cut the field today, so they need to beat six people to get a second run. And maybe to explain how difficult it is, um, today the track is um, one second faster oh. than yesterday. And wow. you can do everything fine with the setup and with the material and also um, with the plan for, for the track. But if you are one second faster than the last run you get, um, um, it's hard to, yeah. to make it in your, in your mind. Yeah, um, the timing, the feel. Yes, it could change a little bit, and, and also, yeah. It's a third place for Hollander de Gregorio. They're going to have to watch. Now that they've gone off in the beginning of the order, it's a long wait and watch to see if they get a second run. It's also not a good joke to, to bring the piece of paper on the right side, make your move. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. Maybe we can change it. Yeah. <laughs> No place for a move on this, no. on this position. <laughs> Certainly not. To the top for Ivan Neglier and Fabian Malier of Italy. Well, sorry, that's Mueller. I'm looking at yesterday's list. <laughs> sorry, so many star lists in front of me. That's Mueller Frauscher of Austria. Yannick Mueller and Armin Frauscher. The Austrians have a good uh, good setup for today. Um, I also read in the uh, com commentary at, uh, at the channel, uh, and you see, oh. uh, yeah, it looks it looks nice and it looks easy. Yeah. Um, now these guys really struggled yesterday. They finished 15th, had a bit of a mishap, so they are looking to show what they can do. Mueller Frauscher are ninth overall. Get into the finish. Threw and down. Wow, three tenths ahead 
of the Americans. We have a new leader early on in the men's doubles race here. And do you think there will be a new track record today? Because yes. at a um, woman double, yeah. there was a very, very good new track record, I think. Um, Five or four tenths. Yeah, and the sun is going down, so we're getting colder because the men weren't close. Uh, Tucker West got close to the start record, yes. but the men were a bit of a ways off, but they've had a fresh spritz. It's getting colder. We could be back into those ideal conditions like you had this morning for women's doubles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Very interesting. Up at the top from Team Italy, we have Ludwig Reeder and Lucas Guffler. They are 12th overall. Best finish so far was yesterday, ninth in the sprint. And looked very well. Oh, nicely done. <laughs> How weird was that corner nine for you the first time from the lower start? Oh, um, the problem was I I didn't imagine it from from the juniors. Yeah, it's too long. Yeah, too, too long ago. <laughs> uh, but we have to handle it every year if you go to to the team relay. Or yeah. Oh, right. You do pop in yes. and out. Yeah. Um, Reader Guffler in second behind Mueller Frauscher. This track is for me always a uh, box of Pandora. Yeah. And sometimes it's good and sometimes yeah. not, but there are no point for, for me. There are no, there's no point where you can, where I can relax. Yeah. yeah. So it is an intense track, but I'll tell you, nothing feels better than doing well on this track. You feel like you really conquered a beast. It's so funny. We last year we had a training camp and. Of course, I was as a single slider. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of ice crashing for... Uh, In the straightaway. Now. Yeah. Please. Yeah. This cost, of course, this yeah. cost a lot of time. Back to the top for Emmanuel Reeder and Simone Kainzwaldner of Italy. I'll be very curious, what did your teammates think of the ice yesterday, your men's doubles teammates? Yeah, we are always, uh, we are also, they were also confused. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not easy to make decisions for, for the race today. What I want to say, we had the training camp yes. Yes, uh, last year, and uh, Natalie Geisenberger, she was asking me what I'm doing. I said, yeah, I try to, to do the double because we have more um, Yeah. And she said, yeah, it's a good decision. Everyone you don't do from the top is a good run. <laughs> <laughs> So, Second fun. place for Reader Kainzwalder. Yeah, it's it's funny because I the few times so I drove a bobsled. The few times I rode in the back, it's a very different experience from lower starts in Lake Placid. You go to the top and it's beating. Yeah. <laughs> Still many sleds to come. Twenty to be exact. Yeah, today we have. Um, we see uh, the focus of um, the exit of nine and how the ice is crashing and everything has to be perfect if you want to 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 have a medal. Yeah. Do you think that affected the men at all watching the women's race and how difficult of a time the women were having out of nine? Mm. Probably not. Yeah. Oh, that was a good line. But well, they, they don't look happy. You see no. the emotions in the face. Yeah. And there are my special rockets from yeah. White Check and Cuba. Yeah. Um, in the training, um, <laughs> the most time we, we try to beat us. Yeah. <laughs> they, are, they, uh, they are sad and they say, hey, why are you so fast? They're just three tenths of a second yeah. um, in the training. Um, but yeah, they didn't 
do it to the sprint, but hopefully yeah, have better results. They edged just out of the sprint, Kimoluski Kowaluski of Poland. And I was watching the sprint via the timesheet, so I couldn't. I had no idea what happened, what exactly went wrong in their qualifier. Just the, the time wasn't there. 1700s back behind Mueller Frauscher. Probably a good run. It's okay for them. And um, yeah, clapping hands. Just bump. <laughs> they are happy. <laughs> Look like. <laughs> So today they beat me. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the race is within one, the races. Just yeah. one tenth. Half a second. No, five or six. Um, yeah. Yeah, you guys had a tough exit of nine there on your second heat. Just a little bit high out of 12. and But he tried to keep it, uh, keep it smooth. Their experience shows, one of the more experienced doubles team out on tour. We will head back to the top for Team Latvia's Edwards, Sevich Mikusevich, and Lucas Kras. They are they finished 10th yesterday, which is so far their best finish of the season. Ooh. They have a very big skid. Yeah, in the corner. Yeah, it could be that they are too early tonight. Uh, and then because crank. there's there's no speed, there's no pressure, um, the sled doesn't hold on the uh, in the curve and so it's hard to manage it. Yeah. Um, you're just thinking about the exit. Yeah. <laughs> It could be that um, that it worse, but it looks like that they, uh, yeah, managed it well, very well. Nice exit of 14 there. They're throwing down two hundredths behind Mueller Frauscher, who stood in the lead for quite some time now. So currently, we are Austria, Latvia, Italy. We have not seen a German sled yet until this next one. There's always dedicated Latvian fans on hand in most European races. It's easy. He's working hard yeah. to see it in the face. Yeah. But yeah, no, he tried to relax. Yeah, that was a corner nine face. the top for our first German sled, we have Moritz Jäger and Valentin Stoite. Juniors and ah. um, they beat all the others except from Wendlard and Olam und Gubitz and so they got the, ch uh, the ah. chance to, um, to be part of the World Cup team and also um, at this World Championship. but too early on the starting corner. Um, this is why it costs a lot of time. Ah. Now we will see. Yeah, they finished 11th yesterday. Line. Too bad. Yes. They are throwing down eighth place, just ahead of Di Gregorio and Hollander, who had similar issues. Yeah, I, I think for our team, it's very dark time. <laughs> dark yeah, weekend. Dark, dark weekend, time. But uh, oh yeah, it's been tough, especially for men's doubles. Absolutely, and we know what what pressure there is if yes. you look for the world champs last year. Yeah. We uh, take, I think, nine of ten medals or oh something my gosh. like that. Right. Yeah. And, and another course, home world. Of, yeah, of course. Yeah, you see, there's <laughs> no other saying everything without saying everything. Yes. 
tough break. It does not look good for a second run for Jaeger Stoite. Yeah, and also if you are sad for these young boys, it's, it's learning. Yes, it's learning. yep, it's all learning. I'm sorry, it's, I'm just a mom. So yes, it's, it's all data. It certainly is. To the top for Thomas Stoy and Wolfgang Kindle. Interesting pair. That's such an interesting pair. First overall, Kindle had a very rough run in the first heat of men's singles, and I understand he's also sliding with a broken foot, so hopefully that was not exacerbated in the men's singles race earlier. You understand right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is. watching that crash was brutal. Yeah. They're having a very good run and a very good season. They finished with a yeah. silver medal yesterday in the sprint. Nicely done. You see, um, Thomas is always try to, to bring the head back yeah. um, as he can. And yeah. Almost three tenths of a second, new leader, Stoy and Kindle. It's just a remarkable season for athletes that have only just paired up. Obviously, they're both very experienced, but it's been really incredible to see what they've done. Yeah. And Kindle, of course, doing double duty. Absolutely. I'm impressed of it. Yeah. It, um, yeah. Also, he tried to... It, it looks so easy. Yeah. Like, he didn't... Like, they both uh, didn't do anything else. Yeah, it is, it is quite remarkable how well they've done this season. They've put themselves in a good position on this first run, but we have German Sluts to come. But first, it's Ivan Neglier and Fabian Mollier of Italy. Get that drop. Oh, no. Did a drop, let us start. Yeah. Six hundreds back. We'll see if that crushed their velocity a bit. It takes a few timing, guys. Yeah. But normally, we would see it costs a lot of time. Yeah. Sixteen hundreds. If you don't have the speed from the top, and it's not easy to to, um, to take it in a run. They are seventh overall right now. They finished fourth just off the podium yesterday. They know they have the potential, but the start really got them there. Three tenths back, fifth place. And just like that, your podium chances can be gone. They're not too far out. I mean, Stoy Kindle have quite a lead. They are nearly three tenths ahead of everyone else right now. But yeah, Nagler Mollier. Three, three tenths, uh, three hundredths of a second. Yeah. Until the podium, but yeah. there are a few, few pairs to go. Uh, yeah. yeah. Namely, Tobias Wendell and Tobias Alt at the start, looking to make up for a rough ride yesterday. Yeah, the track is clear. Bon is fry. They are decorated with a lot of medals. They have the experience and they um, very professional. And I hope today it will be better than yesterday and um, they find the right line. Seventh place yesterday, but as Diana said, some of the most experienced, not just experienced athletes, but experienced at winning, and winning is a skill. Oh, oh wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> just hold my breath for, yeah. for, for a second. Um, ten of a second. Leading time to destroy Kindle. Just, it took a lot of work to make it from nine to Kreisel there. 
but they're putting themselves in a good position. Second place to be exact, two tenths back. But we have no idea what is going to happen. The women's doubles race was wild. Yes. Anything goes. You need two runs. Yes, you do. <laughs> We've got Austria, Germany, Austria, Latvia currently one through four right now. I'm excited. There are also a few doubles coming. You can uh, make a good spot, good position after the yeah. first one. Now we have Hannes and Paul. Olemunder and, Gerb and Gubitz at the top. Third German team. Quick paddles and they're off. Oh, looks like rough, but the starting time for for these two guys mm. is very good. No, no, little skate there. This costs a lot of time. They were the top German doubles team yesterday, with a sixth place finish in the sprint. And they are fourth overall, but that is separate from Worlds. Worlds is a completely separate race here. Wow, they are far, three tenths back on a clean run. Not, not really clean. Uh, oh. out of out of nine, they had yeah. a big skid. But uh, we'll, no. we'll get into the details. Ooh, seventh place. Uh, he's shaking the hat. <laughs> not very happy with the no. run, but yeah. Yeah, the world champs are made for own histories yeah. and um, own stories, special stories. Yes, so yeah. You see, um, uh, name in the list um, you never expected. Uh, yeah. Be there. Now you see a little skit there, feet down, but. It could be worse, of course. Right. Of course. <laughs> yeah, I missed that skit. That was a big one. They'll have some time to make up on the second heat, but they are a ways off of the medals. Ah, that is doable. It's been a wacky race. We are at the top four sprint world champions, Bots Bloom, who won yesterday's race. They were early off in the start order. Today, they are a bit later off. That looks good. Oh. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Doesn't matter. No. They got that right back online. Yeah, you see how um, the men could handle such situations. Yes. And with the girls uh, or the women's doubles, it's hard to manage it because there is no... <laughs> Not so much experience in the in the feet or right. in the legs. Through and down, second place, just 1,200s back. Some races, that's a lot. This race, that might be a little. Bots Bloom are looking to climb back into gold for the second heat. That puts Wendell and Arl in third. And we are not out of the woods yet for the medal contenders. We still have got Chuck to go, who took bronze yesterday. Wow. He can just steer it. Yeah. <laughs> not handle it, he yeah. steer it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy because the most time you see what could happen if they uh, in the entrance of Nye, yeah. and oh, they right. lost a high, and you think, oh, it could be it could be so dangerous, but they managed it very well. Yuri Gott and Ricardo Schoep in the track from Austria. Took a bronze home yesterday. They are fifth overall. Crazy. Straight out of nine. Wow, that will help 300s behind Stoy Kindle. 
This is the last true contender for a medal. And Heat won. They are in the green, pulling ahead of Stroy Kindle. Can they keep this momentum going? That hit's going to cost them. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. But maybe not. We're, <laughs> we're talking hundreds here. Got Shep are through and down. Have wow. Five hundreds of a second. That puts Wendell and Arl in fourth position. Bots Bloom <laughs> in third. <laughs> he, and Ricardo doesn't <laughs> understand what happens. <laughs> It's funny. It's, those are very different races. The ones where you come up and you are so surprised to see yourself <laughs> in a good position. Yeah, they really absorbed that hit well out of 14. A little pause here for our current standings. Got Shup and Stoy Kindle. Austria, Austria, one and two. Team Latvia, Bots Bloom, our winners from yesterday in third, and Wendell and Arlt chasing a medal. But they are nine hundredths out from bronze, but anything can happen. It was a wild race this morning in women's doubles as I'm joined by Diana Eitberger, who experienced that very personally <laughs> today. And I'm very <laughs> grateful that she's here joining me. I'm Bree Schaff in the booth to commentate this men's doubles race. We've got Devin Wardrobe and Cole Zajanski of Canada. Oh no, trouble at a start. Yeah. Maybe if you you watched a lot of Curve 9 today, yes. maybe you can <laughs> give me a plan of it because I don't understand. <laughs> That's true. I'm not sure anyone has seen so closely Curve 9 and watching it, especially through a coach's eye. It's been so wild because, you know, you can't go with the textbook line. You're going from a lower start. That corner, as I've said today multiple times, the corner was built for top speed. It was built to go from the top, so you have to change your plan and figure out how to manage the, the 0.75 pressure. <laughs> I took my first run down in Altenburg, was on a skeleton sled, it was from Dom and Start, and I just was baffled by the whole track. And I can't say it got easier when I moved up to the top. It just got heavier on my head. <laughs> yeah, you see, they, they give everything at a start, but it seems like nothing nothing happened there. Yeah. <laughs> but out of nine, it was so pretty good. Yeah. The speed was lost. So this is the result after the first run. They had the 14th position. 14th for Canada. For this moment, they are in the second run. Because yeah. They're just oh, right, right. Now we're waiting. Everyone's, especially those that had a tough first run, are waiting to find out if they get a second run. We've got Romania's tutor Stefan Handerich and Sebastian Motzka on the handles. So Romanians also have two, two doubles. Uh, we were with them in a group this week. Oh, it was uh, was a pleasure because oh. um, it's a good feeling with Raluca and we are very big waves, but it works. They're um, such a nice crew. Yeah, on Wednesday there was a lot of wind. I think 80 kilometers per yes, hour. Yes, Wednesday was crazy. I've never seen clouds move that fast in the sky. So our coaches they tell us to cancel the training and. Me and Saskia, I say, I have to go to the training. Yeah. And the two guys, they are finished now at 15th place uh, or 15th position. They ask why why we don't do <laughs> training. And I told them, yeah, our coaches, they are standing at the track. And they they mean it's um, it's too dangerous for make the day. And his eyes were <laughs> wide open, like, what did you say? I said, yeah, I don't know. My English is not so good, but this is the thing I can tell you. It could be, it's a good in lottery. Yeah. And, and he said, oh, it's the, it's the same as every time. <laughs> well, for yeah. us to, to, make a, to make a good training here. Right, right. Their lottery so. is every run. 
<laughs> so it was so funny. And That's so really funny. Now they, they have the teammates there. Um, now, Vasil Gitlin and Darius Serbin. That's a great shot at the angle. Really nice. Tenths of a second behind Gatshop. This is the battle for a second run now. They are currently losing. They're going back and forth, 16th and 17th. That will help. Now it would Whoa. be very tight for my teammates. Yeah. For Juniors, Jigan, Stoiter. Right. They are edging closer and closer to that 20 mark. We still haven't had 20 sleds down the hill yet. Eight more to go. We've got Raimunds, Valkalvis, and Vitaels Jägerovs from Latvia. This is the shoot your shot section of the start list. Oh, these, oh no. This team's trying to get in for a second run. Not looking good for the young Latvians. After an overcorrection there. And these guys had a good qualifier run a few days ago. Oh no. Oh. They may get edged out of a second heat. 19th place for Latvia. <laughs> Tough break. They finished eighth in the sprint yesterday. Yeah, but this sport, what we are doing, is, is racing, it's yes. dangerous, a lot of risk. Um, yesterday, the youngest Latvian double uh, took the bronze medal yeah. into the sprint. And if you're looking um, at the time of the uh, training for the, the whole week, we see um, all the normal, yeah. uh, normal, uh, normal um uh, pairs like Ikle Kip and what is Upita doing, what is yeah. uh, Matthias doing and something like that. And no one's oh. watching the young Latvians. <laughs> she has 42-4 yeah. in the training. Oh. We have a 43-0 oh, wow. in this training. I say, okay. Gabo Huang and Jun Yipeng of China in the ice right now, struggling a bit out of corner nine. Looking for a top 20 in a second run. Yeah, and today the youngest uh, Latvian double, they crashed. Right. So oh, that's sad. It could be in this day oh, no. like this and on the other day. Yeah. Very different. Place 1.6 seconds back, 19th place, edging out Bogalvis and Yegorovs. Just six sleds remain here in heat one of men's doubles. I'm Bree Schaff, joined by Germany's Diana Eitberger, calling men's doubles at the FIL World Championships here in Altenburg. A 
And of course, I'm not here just for commentating. For commentating, <laughs> I'm from learning. Yeah, yeah studying. <laughs> uh, taking a very close look because you've got a team relay tomorrow. Sakei Jubai and Shuo Ho of China. Oh, oh, nice. Back in the mix. Yeah, he uh, just want to be. Uh, uh, he just want to have a safe, a safe trip. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it looks, uh, it looks like this. Uh, yeah, 17th place. They have, a, they have a shot at a second run here, just ahead of Jäger Stoite, behind Gitlin and Serbian of Romania. It would be well done. Uh, yeah, well done. But maybe I think it would not be um, necessary. Mm. Yeah. Oh, the he safety like tap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, harder to have the confidence when you haven't been sliding that long to just absorb that little tap on the wall. From Slovakia, Christian Bozeman and Michal Mako. They go ahead of the light. It seemed like the sound was after they went, but. Oh, getting it back under control. Yeah, we feel everything. Yeah. What happens yes. in this part of the track? <laughs> uh, this were a little bit rough. Yeah. Out of the out of ten and. Oh, oh. Okay. okay, but there's a lot of tension in the face and a yeah. lot of tension of the body. It looks not so confident, but uh, 20th place, right on the edge, now, behind De Gregorio and Hollander. Yeah, now we have to we have to keep our fingers crossed that they make it to the second round. Yeah. Four sleds left. Maybe Vavracek and Shmi can hop up in there. <laughs> Track is clear for Korea's Xinyong Park and Zhongyong Cho. This is the second home track for them. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Before they had a home track. This were the home yeah. track. Yeah. <laughs> and they're here, and the Youth Olympic Games are happening in Korea in Pyeongchang. Luz just wrapped up, as I understand it. There was all three disciplines were won by Italians. Yeah, good. Ooh, they're climbing the ranks, currently 17th. Park and Cho could get themselves a second run here. It's looking good for the Korean team, the single Korean doubles team. 16th place. Ahead of Gitlin and Serbian. Behind Hendrik and Mochka. And now the result from now, it's it's so crazy. Yeah. Um, the Americans are the next on the Right, position. on the chopping block. Buzzman and Mako just got edged out.
Yeah, it's a world championship. It is. Three sleds remain to the top for Ukraine's Ihor Hoi and Nazari Kachmar. And anyone, so now do Gregorio and Holland are trying to figure out if they need to warm up again. How long does it take you to warm up between these? Do you do another warm up before your second run? Um, we don't have time. Oh. Uh, we didn't have time today uh, because there was just half an hour. Right. And so you have to prepare the sled and um, it's not easy uh, to find the time. Right. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Now. That is quite a short break. They are second. Gaining a little, but they're 22nd. Does not look like they will get a second run. Hoy and Kachmar are done for the day. Not too bad of a run, though. Through and down. Young. The top of the track, Vadim Makievich and Bodin Babura. The Ukraine. Babura. Also, Ukraine, Start Vergabe, Zeitpunkt, Trent is Kia, Team Ukraine. Oh, a little bit too early. Oh, no. Left side, oh. the trouble happens. Oh, get it in, get it. There we go. Oh! Look, that he's in his head. Yeah. Already down to 25th. A lot of time is missing, so. Yeah, that looked like a difficult settle. Through and down, 24th place. For our final Ukrainian sled. Does it look like his arm is sticking out a little more than normal? Normal, yeah. So the last sled is coming now. Um, Thomas Vavracek and Maciej Shmi of Slovakia. Start time, 15. Yeah, beautiful it's line out of nine. Bad. I feel like they have a chance. Knocking one more sled out and getting into a second run here. They're a very experienced team. They've been around for a while. Beautiful run until now and looks very smooth. Just five tenths of a second behind. They qualified for the sprint, their 11th overall. They are through and down 14th place. Oh, and that knocks out De Gregorio and Hollander from Team USA. Nice run. Wow, but also crazy like the yeah. other competitions <laughs> in this morning. Yeah, um, wild. Sehen wir dann in Lauf 2. Es führen die 
They finished 12th in the sprint yesterday, 14th in the European Championships. They are not out of place. They just happen to be the last sled off of the hill. So they'll have some better ice coming up in the next heat. Got Shope in the lead. Joy Kindle in second. Bots Bloom in third. And Wendell and Arlt are chasing a medal down on home ice here. Mueller Frosher in fifth. As you said, Diana, it is a wild race, wild world championships. It's going to be an exciting conclusion here in the final heat of our racing today, Saturday, at the 52nd FIL Luge World Championships. Stick around. I'm Bree Schaaf, Diana Eichberger. We'll be back to call a very exciting finale of men's doubles. Okay, FIL Studio Show. I don't know what number break this is that we're taking you through. Is this our fourth or our fifth? It has been a day, day two here in Altenburg. We had women's doubles this morning. Then we just watched our men's singles. We went to the top of the track. Uh, we had a good uh, in-between uh, in between race run session for you. We saw the Germans <laughs> grilling bratwurst at the top. That was incredible. Uh, and then we just witnessed our men's doubles. So I'll take a look at the times in just a second. But I wanted to show you this side of the finish. Um, it, I, like before there was so much energy for the men's race but now people have kind of cleared out a little bit these booths right here they're nice and warm this is where all the announcers sit uh, and then this is the studio up here for ZDF where we saw Max Langenhan and Felix Locke they hopped over right here and then we just get the whole finish to ourselves look at this aren't we so blessed okay come with me or you can stay there but I'm gonna look at times I'm gonna talk you through times and the situation of what is setting up so Austria, Austria, Latvia, no German on the podium. I don't know the last time I've seen this at a World Champs. Um, so it's kind of cool. So Yuri got Ricardo Schupp. They are ahead. Um, it, and it's, pr it's insane, actually. They had a 10th place start. Um, pretty slow, if I'm, if I'm being honest. But then they just really caught up time so fast. It went from 10th place to a 5th place, 2nd, and then ended up in 1st. So either those guys i mean that's what we would call someone who really they're a bottom gainer they really speed up towards the bottom of the track they tend to do better when the tracks are long because they may not be the fastest starter but they really drive through those curves nice they can read curves really well to help kind of gain speed with it so then stoy kindle it's a second austria team uh they were beating them for a good amount i wonder if they messed up towards the end so sixth place starts uh well ahead of their teammates uh immediately went into first but then a little bit of a mistake at the bottom um i wonder what their 15 16 looked like for them and then bots pluma they were our sprint world champions yesterday the fastest start wow that is a really fast start the fastest start of the heat and then they slowly bled time so you can tell a lot about a team by looking at their time. So like Gotten Ship, slow starters, fast drivers. So they have a really good feeling for the track. Bots Pluma, fast starters, maybe slower drivers. Maybe this isn't their favorite track. Maybe they were a little early in some entrances, maybe a little late. The, the details of the sport can really drive you nuts. Um, they really, you have to get down to the specifics of how to get down this track. And then we have Germany in fourth place of Wendell and Arlt. So um, I'll be interested to see how this shakes out for the next run. What will happen is I believe we're taking our top 20 uh, and so the, the last couple sleds won't get to race. That's what we did for the men's race. Uh, so only the top 20 will get a second run uh, coming into the second run. So kind of interesting today. Again, been a day. We started early this morning uh, with women's doubles. Uh, and then we just saw the first. So we have one more run for the day. Remember, it was just an hour ago when this was just going off. They were playing bangers. We had our, we had our guy. I don't know where he went. Uh, he was back there a little bit getting everyone pumped up. Um, but yeah, it's been a great day. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a little bit of a break. We're going to show you some goodies and then we'll be back.
Is this how you imagine a family business with over 150 years of experience? We have to disappoint you. We are Eberspecker. We shape the clean mobility of the future and inspire our customers with smart solutions. Developed and produced by dedicated people around the world. Eberspecker stands for reliable automotive systems and components. Our aim is to offer the best quality in every application. And therefore, each of our products reflects our passion. Eberspecker, driving the mobility of tomorrow. Environmental friendly heating with renewable energy. That's what the name Hagasna has been standing for, for four decades. Maximum heating comfort, innovative technology and lowest emission standards. A heating system from Hagasna can be recognized by one thing above all. Decades of reliability. Whether pellets, logs or wood chips, change to a biomass heating solution by Hagasna. Biomass heating technology. Okay, we're back from our commercial break. So this is an interview that we've been trying to set up all, I've been getting a lot of emails about you guys, you know, BMW is coming to town. We got to talk to them. So this is who we got. We got Tim Holtzmuller. I've been practicing his last name. And then Julian von Schleinitz. Julian and I used to slide together way back in the day. He, were you a junior world champion? Yes. Yeah, I remember, because he was, he was that good. That was 10 years, that was, that was way back when though. So you, so now you're with BMW, you've left Luge, now you're doing all, we're gonna get into what you do. But Tim, I, we talked last year at Oberhof. I mean, has much, how, how was your year? How was your summer? Oh, summer was fantastic. I mean, it's been a year, I haven't seen you. <laughs> I know, it's a shame. <laughs> we always meet at world championships. What a joy. Which, which is great. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, tell me what, I know you've explained to me what you do for BMW, but rem remind everybody again, like what your job is with them. I'm responsible for our corporate communications for all sport engagements worldwide. So to answer your previous question, uh, over the summer I was busy looking after our golf engagements, tennis and all other sports. So it's not only winter sports, but um, that's what we focus on this weekend. Okay. And then Julian, you are like, I know it's super technical, but what's your official title? I'm a data scientist. Data, that sounds technical to me. So what are you doing exactly for Luge? Because you have the background in sliding, but you've got the background in BMW. So this is an interesting combo. Yeah, so um, we started, I, I did my PhD thesis um, about some uh, closely related, related topics to Luge at BMW Motorsport. And it was about race driver evaluation, but about our BMW works race driver, so for DTM, Formula E. And uh, out of that, we then started to develop some systems also for Luge. And so the similar methodology that we used in that sports, we now can apply here with the, we called it BMW Data Coach. Do you think, you're like, man, I wish I would have had this as an athlete. <laughs> I, I did have this as an athlete, so I developed this together with uh, Felix. And you were doing it while you were competing. That's, I mean, you have your PhD. I guess I'm not surprised. I guess that's intense. That's so cool though. So, so now, like, what does that mean exactly? Like, how does that affect athletes and sliding like what's the nitty-gritty of that if you're to explain it with people that don't know what that means I mean uh, you know it from sliding you go down this track it's very very fast a lot of things are happening and you are glad if you are in the finish and did not make a major mistake but there's a lot a lot of small stuff that is going on and if you lose 100 in each corner then in the end it's two tenths again so um, we focused really on the small stuff and we can now with this data coach we can now every bit of the driving line we can analyze like a black box in an airplane. We have all the data, so we know what happens. The athletes can go back, go up there, drink a coffee, and look at their runs. 
and see uh, until a very, very fine detail. What was the speed? Where did I make a mistake? Was there maybe a drift when I drove? So this is what you can do with that. And some athletes, they, they really like that. I have so many thoughts and questions that this interview doesn't allow time for because I'm just thinking like when I was an athlete, that data is so valuable because really you just have to remember all that yourself because we don't have... So anyways, wow, I can't even get into it. But first, when did BMW start this partnership with Sliding Sports? Well, it actually started way before we became official sponsors. So back in the 1980s is actually when we started working together with the German national team on various projects, uh, looking into different aspects, technologies, materials, and on how you can evolve and at the end of the day also make the sport safer for the athletes and be quicker. That's what it's all about. Speaking of quicker, speaking of Schnella, if you look at the history, because we all know Germany is so dominant, do you see a direct correlation when BMW got involved and then all the gold medals that Germany has won? Have you have you been intrigued to look this up? Yeah, absolutely. It's nothing else. <laughs> I, that's This is the speed secret, is BMW. <laughs> Don't, don't tell everyone else, but it is the secret. I mean, if we could get like, I'm speaking just for Americans, like if we could get like Ford, hey Ford, you want to come join? But BMW, uh, you guys are such an asset to the German team. And, and I know, I mean, for people that are listening in, like it's such a special relationship to have, like to have a car sponsor for like a speed sport. Whereas most of these other teams, uh, they just have their coaches. Like they don't even really have like the funding or the technology or the science. So it really kind of shows like, what the German program is doing and how you guys are seriously so fast and you guys really dominate just about everywhere. So looking forward, like what are you guys working on to help you guys even get faster? Yeah, we have a, a lot of projects going on currently. They're not only in Luge, even some in bobsleigh with something for Skeleton. We can also apply this data coach there. But there's also other technologies where BMW as a tech company can really bring something here. So 3D printing, for example, is something that we're also losing. Uh, using in Luge and um, yeah there are lots of other topics and we of course are constantly working on these uh, data topics because what is really the important thing is not just to have the technology and to have good athletes but what we are doing and this we did now over many many years we brought both together because you have to translate what comes from the company from tech you have to bring it in the right language for athletes to understand it and and this is really where where I think we produce the most value currently. Do you have computers in your sleds? Like, are you like, how do you track all that? Well, yes, we we have. I wouldn't say computers, but we have the sensors yeah. in the sled, in the practice sleds that we use uh, to collect all the data. Um, and it's the same sensors we actually use in developing our cars. And just just to add on what Julian just just mentioned, yes, of course, we're looking into different aspects that we can contribute. But I think at the end of the day, what's what's most important is that data and technology is not taking over too much because the athlete is, is still the one who's running and doing the sport. He's the center, which is similar to, I think, everyone's workplace. You know, it's still the employee who's doing the work, who's controlling the machine and production, etc. So it's it's a tool to help and support the entire team, the staff, and the athlete, but it's not taking over. It's there to help. And, and I want to interject on this. Like, the German athletes are so proficient and so good at what they do that you can test on them. Like, they are so consistent in their runs that, like, you can throw things at them, like, oh, can you test this or do this? And they have such consistency. Yeah, I mean, you have a bit of... <laughs> it, in practice, uh, it's not that easy and um, some athletes are good with this, but some are not. So this is really something that also changes and varies a lot in the team. But there's also a lot of work in the background and this is exactly for what this is for. So even when you think this was a really good run and you know it yourself, maybe it really wasn't that great. It looked maybe good from the outside, but you maybe know there are two areas where I can improve. And there we have now a very honest and brutal objective system that shows you every small little bit mistake, which is really hard because there is no perfect run. And now we can see it. <laughs> well, if you guys would have ever had to test things on me, I would have crashed too much. So I would have not have been a good test subject for you guys. So you're lucky to have like feel. I mean, you're Felix. You're lucky to have Felix. I mean, he's good enough. So it, it would it would be interesting to have you make another run at some point with one of the test slays just to get the data. 
you know, one time, one time I did get a good look at a German sled and I felt the runners. I didn't tell anyone I did this. Like 10 years later it comes out and I was like, there's no way I can run this sled. It was way too round for me. So I still would have been a mess. But thank you for your vote of confidence. I appreciate that. Last question I want to ask you guys, is there anything that you have found in Luge that you have been able to bring over to cars? Yes, so what was very interesting for us when we did the um, Bob Simulator at BMW Motorsport, there we simulated, of course, a driving model of a bobsled, which is the same basically for a luge sled. And there it was really interesting to test our motorsport simulator on like banking angles in corners, so on these bank corners of over 90 degrees, because with a race car, you usually you don't do this. And there we indeed found some areas of improvement where we also could improve the motorsport uh, simulator. So fascinating. This is so cool. I could really like, this is really interesting, especially coming from a past athlete. I feel like you've really found your thing. Luge, Luge is in the past. Now you're moving on to bigger and better things. So congratulations. No, I, I wouldn't say that because I, I really like what I'm doing here. And I really like this, this Luge also family here. It's really fun to do this. And to be honest, I very much enjoy this to not sit every day in the office in Munich, but also to be here uh, one day or the other. Well, let me just tell you, Team Germany is very lucky to have you guys. You guys are racing a totally different race than a lot of these other athletes. It's like your biggest competitor really is yourself and the data that you guys are finding. So, so I, I wouldn't say that. Look at the result today. So there was no medal in, the, in this competition. Well, that's just because the runs were, you know, we, you can fix the runs, but when you're slow, speed is hard to get. So. So when when your when your athletes are on, you guys are really like your next level. So when you see all the medals that Germany wins, know it's the guys behind the scene uh, that are making it happen. So thank you for joining me, uh, Tim Holtzmuller, Julian von Schleinitz. Uh, congratulations with everything that you're doing. I just love it. The BMW, you guys look great. Imagine having the elite performance of Goodyear now on your Skechers. Enhance your traction, durability, and stability in any condition on any terrain with Skechers featuring the top tier performance of premium Goodyear rubber. You haven't pushed your limits until you've experienced these two trusted brands on your feet. Get all season performance with Goodyear and Skechers. Okay, I grabbed a special someone to come talk to me. This is Kitya from the Latvian team. I, the, your last name, Bog, Bogdanov. Bogdan Bogdanova, yeah. Bogdanova. Yeah. Bogdanova. Okay, it was okay. Kitia Bogdanova. So I grabbed her because I had a specific question. So I'm seeing a lot of success with the Latvian team. Uh, they finished, her and her partner Marta, they finished third at the European Championships back in Eagles. And then you finished third at the sprint competition yesterday. And how you said, are you 18 or 19? I'm 19. Yeah, you're 19, she's 18. This level of success, are you surprised by it at this age on the senior level? Well, we have worked very hard. We've been a, we've been a double for six years, so a long time. Uh, but we definitely did not expect this. So it's like, it's crazy. We can't believe it, yeah. You've, you've earned it. It's really cool. The, the nerves at the senior level are so much higher than the junior level. So I'm curious, like, why do you think Latvia is so good at doubles? So like for context in history, 6'6", six, six, they are Olympic medalists. They have pretty much led the program in doubles. And then Bots Pluma, they were the young team. Now they're leading. And then we have two amazing young girl, Latvian girl teams. So what do you, what's in the juice in Latvia? What do you think? Well, I like to believe that it's the communication. We're friends. Like we're not only like partners. We don't only do luge together. We do well, for example, me and Marta, we do everything together. I believe that it's the same for Bots and Plume. They're friends, they're very close. Well, uh, Anda and Zana, they're just started racing together and they're also friends. So, yeah, I believe that being friends like makes takes you places. Yeah. And what about your sleds? Have you worked a lot on your sled? Do you work on it during the summer or do you guys all have the same kind of sled? Well, for women's doubles, it's like, all the nations have like pretty similar sleds but like the steels are different and stuff so yeah we don't work on them in summer usually but the, in winter we spend hours working on sleds okay so tell me this if you were not sliding what would you be doing i honestly don't know i'd probably be i don't know i can't imagine my life without sliding like what's your favorite thing to do when you're not training sleep me too I feel that. I feel that. Did you do sports before this? No, actually, no. 
Also, sliding is life. It's everything. Are you from Segulda? Uh, no, I'm from Riga. Okay, so how did you get involved in this whole mess? Like, how did you how did you arrive here from Riga? Uh, my dad is uh, friends like with uh, one of the gold medalists in the Olympics, Vera Zuzulia. Oh, and she offered me and my sister to try luge, and we loved it, and we stayed. So simple. It was just so it's so simple, and you saw it, you loved it. It was easy. Well, I feel like in Latvia they really cultivate and they really create like a good team energy, and you guys have always been competitive. So Bots Pluma, I think they're currently sitting third. Is that what it is? Yeah. What well, did they have a good first run? Uh, hopefully they do have a better second run, but it was okay. Yeah. yeah. Do so you think they got time for the second one? What? You think they got time? Meaning, like, you think they can make up more time? Yeah, I definitely think they can make up. Okay, cool. Okay, we'll have to see. Kitchia, thank you for joining me. I know it's your first year on tour. Some people get nervous being on camera, but I appreciate your effort. Your English is incredible. Did you? Is are you? Were you just born with this? I don't know. I just learned it somehow. You just, learned just a smart girl. You're just a smart girl. Okay, thank you for joining us. So we're showing a feature of Meet the Teams Latvia. Who's your favorite teammate besides Marta? Uh. Who's the funniest teammate? Funniest? Yeah. I don't know. I'd say Pluma. Pluma? Yeah. He is pretty. He is he's funny, yeah. He's very funny. Okay. Here's Meet the Teams with Latvia. Sigita Bērziņa, Sigulda, Latvija. Viktorija Ziediņa, Salaspils, Latvija. Elīna Ieva Vītola, Sigulda, Latvija. Francesca Bona, Sigulda, Latvija. Selina Elizabeta Zvilna, Ropaži, Latvija. Sani Ozoliņa from Sigulda, Latvija. Anda Upīte, Rīga, Latvija. Lūkas Krasts, Alūksne, Latvija. Kīns Bērziņš, Sigulda, Latvija. Mārtiņš Bots, Sigulda, Latvija. Eduards Ševic, Mikaševic, Rīga, Latvija. Roberts Blume, Baltazars, Latvija. Kristars Aparjots, Solkrasta, Latvija. Okay, here we are with FIL Studio Shoes. So they were showing dancers earlier on. Again, I don't know how they're out here. It's so cold, but they're fun. They're good. They're putting on a show for this crowd. So kind of just want to watch them for a second. Go girls. Okay, what we're going to show you, we're going to show you the top 10 of the men's doubles uh, where they're currently ranked overall. So here's a look at that while you watch these incredible dancers down here at the finish. Men's doubles, the World Cup standings, five races into the season. Always great to see Poland in the top 10, Himalevsky and Kovalevsky. The Austrians, as you might expect, are well represented with several teams in the top 10. Same with the Italians. Now, the most intriguing part of men's doubles this year is the fact that five different teams have won each of the five races, including this American team and the Austrian team sitting in fifth place. Orlemunder and Gubitz of Germany have had top results in every race, including a couple of podiums. And then victories as well for the Latvians, currently in third. Wendel and Alt, the great Olympic champions in second, and the brand new team of Stoy and Kendall leading the World Cup standings heading into the World Championships. Man, I am just, I'm dancing with them. I'm in it. I'm in it. Okay, we are just a few minutes away from this World Feed coming up. We're going into the second race for our men's doubles. We've got our commentators, uh, Bree Schaff, former Olympian for Team USA. Uh, is there some, are, are we vibing back here? See, I, mean, I can't even focus, can't even focus. Okay, Bree in the booth, what do you got for us? This is our last time I'm gonna come to you uh, for the day. So what are you thinking going into this second run? I'm gonna pop a surprise question to Diana and ask, okay, Diana, what do you think the chances are that your teammates, Wendell and Arl, are gonna pop up into a podium position in the second heat? I, I hope it for them because there's a lot of work um, still in the sled and also um, right. these are one of the oldest and the fastest on uh, at the start, but um, it would be a hard, hard task, hard, uh, hard challenge for them and I keep my fingers crossed for them. All right, Diana's keeping her fingers crossed for her teammates and it is going to be wild. Certainly a shakeup here. Second heat doubles has been nonstop action. So looking forward to it, Kate. 
Finish. So a little bit of a time check coming into the second run. Uh, we're just a few minutes away. So these girls just finished. This guy's going to get this crowd hyped because he's good at his job. He's going to get them going. He's giving them directions. There he goes. Yep. Yes. Oh, I love this song. I love this song. I'm learning all the songs here in Germany of what, what gets people going. Uh, we've got the mascots getting ready. They've been here a while. Ready? We know. The links. Oh, sorry. Oh, am I doing it right? The links. I'm mirroring up for. <laughs> Go to the rabbit. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't want to get in the way. He's got the camera right there. Okay, guys. We're heading into the second run for men's doubles. Uh, everybody, sit back. This is the last run of the day. I know you're sad. I know you're sad. We'll see you at the end of the race, and we'll crown our champion. Welcome back to the somehow sunny second heat of men's doubles here in Altenburg, Germany at the 52nd Luge World Championships. I'm your host, Bree Schaafboin, joined by Germany's Diana Eitberger, fresh off the ice this morning in the women's doubles event, here to give us all of the nitty gritty and the ice burns of what is going on at the track. So Diana, we were trying to think if there might be a track record here today. We didn't see anything even close on the first heat, but second heat, it's getting colder. Who knows? Yes, I am very excited. Um, the track is the same like the yes. first run. And of course, um, you need two good, um, two clear runs to um, to be in the medals. And every mistake is costs a lot of time. So, yeah, I'm interested in who will be the world champ after the second run. Top three after the first heat. The gold medalist from yesterday's sprint event, Latvia's Bots Bloom, are chasing shinier and shinier medals. But it's Joy Kindle in second place. They were second place yesterday trying to hold on to a medal. And got Schuck of Austria surprised themselves with this first place position after heat number one, but it's Germany's Tobias Wendel and Tobias Arlt who are hunting down the podium on home ice at a home world championships. So contrary to what Diana and I thought in the first heat, it's actually 18 sleds that we got cut to in the second heat here today. So Diana's teammates got cut. It's actually Gitlin and Serbian of Romania that will be first off all the way down to Gotchup at the top reverse order from Heat 1. And we still have a good crowd here on hand. It's been quite a day. Altenburg has put so much into hosting a festive event. And Vasila Gitlin and Darius Serbian are looking to improve their position after run one. And today there are beautiful conditions for a real uh, good, for a really good um, competition. Yeah, um, fair competition, totally even. Yes. All right, we'll see. Everyone should be fairly consistent here in this top 18. So we'll see what the ice is doing, if it's changed at all from heat one to heat two. I saw them out there working hard, spritzing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, no. I blew it. It happens again. <laughs> yeah, again, it happens. Corner nine in doubles, worst enemy. I hope ooh. nobody is. Um, uh, making the TV off because <laughs> we, we are talking about the same things all the time. But that's what's but going on. It's really haunting everyone. Yeah, now it's it's a little bit colder. The ice temperature is one, uh, one um, degree colder than the first run, of course. Um, there is fresh ice yeah. and um, it makes a difference. Um, but it could happen for everyone. We see it. Uh, we saw it in the in the men's race. Um, also, yeah. um, the athletes who were at the podium after the first run. Yeah, Gitlin Serbian are over a second off the pace of their first run, but they did not have this disaster out of corner nine on run one. Back to the top for Korea's Jin Young Park, Jung Myung Cho. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if they have a clean run, we can compare it to their first run downtime of 42.488. They are faster at the start. Handle it very well. Yes. Not surprising to see them in the green. Now they are in the game. Yes. <laughs> Maybe to climbing a um, few spots. Right. That's the fun of heat, too. You know, even if you're down in the mix here in the later sleds, you're still looking to hang out in that leader's box and climb. 1.2 seconds in the lead. Lead Park Cho. Complete World Championships. 42.26. Okay, that's, yeah, two tenths faster than Heat 1. So maybe yeah. we can look for the track record yeah. in this run. Yeah. Um, it's a 41.388. Got Shup for a 41.45. Oh, it's going to be close. That's exciting. Except our fastest athletes are going to be 40 minutes away. <laughs> yeah, but um, we're talking about the good conditions. Yeah. Maybe we could hold a yeah. little bit. And, uh, the weather's been consistent today. I'm sure that the Korean team will climb spots with this. With such a good it's a run. good run. Tudor Stefan Handrich and Sebastian Motzka of Romania on the handles. 16th after run one. It's calm settle. Also faster, two hundredths of a second. Great crowd on hand. Oh, oh correct. no, everyone seems to know where to stand from nine to Kreisel. It's getting into red. Yes. They're already over two tenths back. So far, we've already had a lot more hits out of corner nine on second heat. And I hate to bring this up. I know it's a sore subject, but that happened in the women's race as well. All the second heat, corner nine, got so many people. And as you predicted, Park Cho, stay on the leaderboard. Absolutely too high out of nine, ah. and then he's overcorrect, uh, makes an overcorrection there. Uh, now the the drama begins. <laughs> drama rama into the Kreisel. But yeah, they um, the television asked me um, if it's good or not good to to have such a crowd in yeah. the finish. I said it's absolutely good because. Yeah. They, Devin Wardrobe and Cole Zajanski from Canada on the ice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, other times it's like you slide in an echo chamber. It's nice to have a big crowd out here and feel some energy. And yeah. Luge, is, you guys tend to be so chill and even keel that it's nice to get some, some screams and some horns and some bands yeah. and some waffles. <laughs> See the Canadian double, they have a little mistake out of nine, but handle it very well, and now they are in lead. They'll maintain their position, 15th, two tenths over Park Cho, he climbed a spot. What makes uh, competition so hot is um, a state today, as of yeah. today, is how many runs will they all have in such conditions like this? Yes. Not so many. And right. so, uh, of course, we have a world championships, and we are looking for the world champs who, uh, who handle these conditions um, at its best. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, but to your point, you guys thing. didn't get to train like that. You didn't get to rehearse yeah, yeah. this specific. But, I mean, that's the weather has been yes. all over the place. Track is clear for Thomas Vavrachek and Mache Schmid. Popped way up into the mix. The last sled in the first heat, 14th, down the hill. I 
little bit too early to seven. You mm. see the feet were jumping <laughs> out of sled. Good. Big lead over Wardrobe and Zhezanski. Beverjack Shmi are through and down. They will hold their spot, maybe even climb. They've got the good, clean ice. You know, of course, as we just mentioned, they were last off the hill in Heat 1, so now they have the advantage. I'll be curious to see if they can rise above a few teams here. Great run. It's also nice to see that somebody's happy. Yes, yeah. <laughs> somebody's not happy. Just, not just being sad or... Yeah, they made it out of nine. Yeah. yeah, congratulations. These corners look so different with doubles and women than from the men's start. Yeah. <laughs> That's a wild swing through there. We had a few crashes there in men's. It's nice to see it. Low line with slower speed. From Team USA, Dana Kellogg and Frank Ike. Oh. This will very rough. Yeah. This is not the breaking point. Yeah. Nice exit of nine. Expanding ever so slightly over Vavracek Shmi. Yeah, this is going to be tight. It's a good looking run. They are expanding that lead. Kelleganite threw it down two tenths of a second. Maybe they can ride that elevator a bit here. This is crazy. Yeah. Because everyone is nearly two seconds. Uh, right, two, two tenths, yeah. Two tenths of a second faster than the first run. And Oof. And we're seeing some nice, clean runs here. Lower rankings may be fighting for that team relay spot, maybe a team relay medal. Do you know the, the rules for being in the team relay of um, the team of America? You know, I do not recall if it's the fastest heat or best finish. What are, what are the rules with Germany? Best finish. Best finish, yeah. So I have to go to the team relay team Yeah. Yeah. Game on. That'll yeah. be exciting. Excited to watch the first ever women's doubles and team relay. And you have a, have you been training your reaction start? Just yeah, we we train the reaction uh, start Un. and also the relay um, at the German Championship. Oh, excellent. Yeah, we've got Marcus Mueller and Ansel Auska on the handles from Team USA. They Duking have it also, out. Yeah, they have also the chance to yes, be part do. of the team relay. Yeah, also. they are just. What is that? Six hundreds ahead of their teammates. Uh oh, 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 oh! We're back online, but that's going to cost some time. Going into the red. Bleeding out a bit here. Corner nine really cost them. That's higher up on the track. Not too much, just seven hundreds. They're going to fall to second position behind Kellogg and Ike, who will be racing the team relay for Team USA, I would imagine, unless it's, well, let's look at the downtime. That was 7.204. Yeah, same, yeah. same, but same thing. Um, they have um, problems out of nine, of course, yeah. and also looks like a very rough uh, Run. Yeah, not very synchronous. Yeah. <laughs> but newer teams make details. sense. <laughs> yes. That must be difficult to synchronize that when there's such a size discrepancy with you and your partner. Yeah. It was so like your nice. Longs are, your arms must be like twice as long <laughs> as, your, as your teammate. But um, my partner, Saskia, yes. she's so good in it. Oh, because cool. Because we don't have so many starts, but she is 
able to um, just get in sync with you. Yeah. Very cool. We've got Ludwig Reeder and Lucas Guffler on the line from Team Italy. They were 11th after Heat 1. Going to try and climb into the top 10 here. Nice. It's interesting how some manage, they get the little height on the end of nine, some manage it no problem. Yeah, yeah, this is what I try to learn. <laughs> <laughs> how so it we're works. here studying. Now they're finding some time in the bottom. Oh, oh this would be hard. Even with Kellogg Ike. And they're in the red. Kellogg and Ike are going to jump up a spot. Down second place by five hundredths of a second. Yep. Near perfect weather when you combine what's good for spectators and for the athletes. It's not too cold for the spectators, not snowing or raining like yesterday. Hardcore fans yesterday hanging out. Back to the top for Team Poland. Wojciech Kumilewski and Jakub Kowalewski, 10th after Heat 1. Did not qualify for the sprint event. Showing what they're made of here in Altenburg. Polish rocket. Yeah. Oh, smooth. That's beautiful. Got a 1500 advantage. Oh, oh. Some experience fixed that. to try to fight. And three hundredths of a second. This is tight now. It certainly is, and they are falling behind Kellogg and Ike. Through and down. Oh, third place. They drop behind Reeder and Guffler as well. They can do no worse than 12, I believe, but still, that's tough to drop, drop spots. We are into our top 10. I'm your host, Bree Schaff, joined by Germany's Diana Eitberger, calling the action here on men's doubles. Teammates now. Yes, your teammates, son, is Orle Müller and Paul Gubitz. Ninth after run one. With a, some things here and there to clean up. Bonus fry. Uh, maybe a little bit better than yeah. And five seventy five is pretty good. Uh oh. Oh, oh, much better than the first Got round. Right back online. Diana, what is the best thing to do if you take that hit on the right wall out of corner nine? Yeah, just take it. Yes. And let us let on Whoa. the side. <laughs> um, New leader, but they are looking to climb spots over three tenths of a second. Orlando Gubitz. Yes. Um, just take the the little hit. Yeah. Um, if you want to to make it clear, and it's too dangerous to to make this overcorrection, and then your sled is yeah. breaking out. Um, yeah. Too much risk. Yeah, they did a great job. 
Coach Patrick, our coach Patrick, he told me to the German championship, yeah, just take the hit, take, take the hit. But my sled was breaking out before I take oh. the hit. <laughs> I, I can't come to it's a different <laughs> story if you're already in a skid. Oh, no. On the handles, eighth after the first run, Ivan Negler and Fabian Malier of Italy. Oh, oh. Good morning, Mr. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> as, I just keep thinking that they need earlier height. Like, why are they getting that height on the end? This could cost a lot of time. Yeah. Three hundredths of a second. Now, if you put the head wide in the back, it could be uh, four hundredths. Find the time at the bottom of the track. They finished fourth yesterday. Oh, they maintain. Negler Balier, at least eighth place. Is that a time that can give them some climbing? Yeah, maybe. Our final Italian team of the day. We're going to head back up soon. It'll be really interesting to see how all of this plays out in the team relay. Yeah. At the top, Emmanuel Reeder and Simone Kinswaldner. were a little bit oh, oh. he's not fit, finding his handles a little bit to get settled in there oh boy oh chasing down their teammates already in the red it's not looking good it's just two hundreds now but that is going to explain oh that's already gone over two tenths Yeah, the trouble began at the start. Right. It's so hard to, and as you, obviously, it's so important to just get relaxed and melt in your sled. And if you can't get your handle, really tough to get relaxed there. Oh, a half of a second back, all the way down to sixth to Reader Kinswaldner. That's so true. Uh, you see the sled is turning from left oh to yeah. side in the back, so it's not very round or um, consistent. Yeah. Uh, it's breaking out. He wants to. Uh, he still looks just high. He's fighting. Yeah. Sixth after run one, Edward Sevich, Mikulsevich, and Lucas Kras from Latvia. Tenth yesterday, this would be their best finish if they can maintain their 15th overall. Oh, get it. I'm interested in if this could be faster than taking yeah, the hit. Or right, right. Now he. 900s. So far. For these guys, it is faster. Yeah. To put feet down on ice. 900s, yeah. Just maintain rather than bleeding. It looks like they will have their best finish of the season, a sixth place for Latvia's Savage Pickle Savage and Lucas Kras. Great day for those guys. Great days for, for Latvia. Yeah. 
also yesterday uh, yeah. what you see and today also. Yeah, they podiumed in every race prior to men's singles. Men's singles, they were not on the podium. Oh, but Christopher Zapriotes had a gnarly crash, but he did podium the day before. The great experiment. Diana's taking it all in. <laughs> well, let's see. They didn't lose time. They put I their take feet everything, down. Yeah. every information I need for tomorrow. Yeah. So I thought when we were talking about what race you should do, I was like, mm, maybe men's doubles. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't watch women's doubles. Ah, the most coaches say if you watch three sled, it's like you like taking a run yeah interesting yeah because you feel you slid so long that i'm sure you feel it in your body when you're watching so your body can mimic it we're back to the top for the top five i'm your host brie Schaff with diana eitberger from germany and we have yannick Mueller and armin frauscher of austria in the ice this were very rough um, they try to uh, keep the sled um, out of the wall in seven uh -oh. mm -hmm. That's a lot of time. 300's back. Oh. Making that look like men's start. Doesn't say anything. Oh, can they chase it down? Savage Mikkel, Savage, and Krass looks like they're going to climb a spot. Second place for Mueller Frauscher. Top five for Latvia. We still have two Austrian sleds to go, the final two, but here's what you were referring to, Diana. Oh, no. That angle of approach is no good. Now, here we go. My fingers crossed. Tobias Special. Wendel and Tobias Arlt of Germany, the last German sled in the mix, fourth place after Heat won. Triple gold medalist chasing a world championships medal. Olympic gold medalist. Rough. They have a 10, but they are not looking behind, they're looking forward. Oh, 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 oh. Anything goes. This doubles race is wild. Wendell and Arlt are usually so consistent, but Diana, as you've been telling us, the ice has not been consistent. They're expanding their lead. Yes. I think he's a little bit more relaxed after nine, and now you see yeah. he's lying back. Finding the time in the bottom. First run was a 41.72. What's this run? 41.55. That two tenth gain that most athletes have had. They've locked in a top four, and that's not what they're looking for. Now they sit and they wait and hope to take down just one team for a world champs medal. Mm. Wow. It was almost like he was steering with his face as well. Just get it back online. Servus zu Hause. Servus. <laughs> to the top for yesterday's sprint winners, Martins Botts and Roberts Plume. This is such a fun team to watch. 
Beautiful synchronicity in their paddles there. Oh, they, it's time to catch the medals. Yeah. Oh, 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 no! Done. Done, a huge mistake there for Bots Plume. They have a gold, but they have lost a medal here in doubles. It was just in my mind for a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> for a minute, for, for a few seconds. Like, there's nothing win. Yeah. They're already the down moment. to fifth. Oh, that's a tough break for Bots Plume. Another race without a Latvian on the podium. They're through and down at fifth place, just behind Negler Mollier. So Wendell and Arlt have at least a bronze medal with two sleds to go. Now their teammates, depending on what happens, Sevic McSevich could bop up in there. Who knows? Tough break for Bots Plume. Oh, the fight. I'm watching and making the exact same face. <laughs> yes. Hot. Just trying to get, it's a replay, and you're trying to get that sled back online to the top for Stoy Kindle of Austria. Second place yesterday, sitting in second right now. Oh, a little bit. That's not going to help. Also they do have two tens to work with. Oh, this is so crazy. You don't yeah. see anything when he comes out of nine. Yeah, and works. completely laid back. The first run was a 41 5 0. The second, this is a lot. They have a lot in the bank. Yeah, they're barring uh, anything. Oh, 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 oh. They have three tens. Those feet should not stop them from a medal, at least a silver medal here at World Championships. Another, at least silver medal for Stoy Kindle. Ooh. Wow, that was a wild ride. Right on the edge of disaster. <laughs> and it's a great finish for Kindle, who has been struggling with a broken foot was doing very well in men's singles and then broke out I told in nearly a crash. Underdog stories. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Somehow Kindle's become the underdog story. <laughs> yeah. Very accomplished athlete doing double duty now. So impressive to watch these guys. Yeah, absolutely. I remember one race when um, Thomas Doy was um, breaking his foot in Sochi. Oh, right. And he comes back to, to Altenberg to a World Cup and he wins. <laughs> he came with the... Oh, my gosh, with a walker. Yeah. <laughs> Out of the finish. Wow. Area. Final sled. It's Yuri Gott and Ricardo Schupp. First, after run one, looking to take home a gold medal. Ooh, this is... I'm so excited now. Oh. Great exit, losing a little bit of time. And thousands of a second behind their teammates. One thousand of a second. Wow. It's still anything goes. I can't handle <gasps> my emotions. One hundreds, but there was a struggle oh, of Thomas. Oh, yeah. Now they're, they're in the green. In the green, but only by mere thousands. Got shot. Take home the win by four hundredths of a crazy. second over Stoy <laughs> Kindle. This is huge. Wow. They won a race in Winterberg. They took a bronze in Lake Placid. There's a reason they're sitting in fifth overall, but this is still what I would call a surprise win. World Championships. Well done. Crazy. This is so crazy. Yeah. Sevich, Mikulsevich, and Krass. Latvia ends up fourth. Um, 
crazy races. Yes. And when I remember last year, the World Champs, the Austrians, they want to have a medal in... So beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just got it from, uh, from Jonas Müller yeah. in the men's race. And yeah. this year they they got so many. They got so yes. many. Yes. <laughs> got <laughs> <laughs> uh, That was well done. Not easy to do a pun in another language. What a finish for today. Gottschalk take the win. 400s behind them are their teammates, Stoy and Kindle. Wendell and Earl pull out a World Championships medal. It is bronze, and they are 3,500s back. What a gap between the rest of the field and the winners here. Very, very exciting. I'm not feel very well because of tomorrow of the team relay because my yeah. teammates now yeah. there's a world champ yeah of course there's a bronze medal yeah <laughs> and me the pressure this is on <laughs> but I'm sure they have full confidence in you you've been sliding such a long time Diane and it's so great to see yeah. you bring your experience to women's doubles there. I like that we're still calling it a flower ceremony when it's really a stuff, stuffy ceremony. We call them stuffies in the U.S., or my niece does anyway, the little yeah. stuffed animal. It's great because you can take that home and keep it forever, unlike flowers. Flucky Fluckerson, the mascot of World Championships. They will have their official awards ceremony tonight in Altenburg. Crazy. And Gatschup were not not especially the losers of last year, but I yeah. think they crashed it at the World Champ or yeah. they have a lot of troubles and, and <laughs> issues and this year is so different. Yeah. Huge congratulations to our podium. Absolutely. It has been so diverse here. This race is good. to race. Yeah, it's great good for, for the sport. sport. Yeah, it yeah. makes it so fun to watch. You know, all of the press leading up into this was Germany, 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 dominate home track, but the weather has dictated otherwise. Look at the wind spinning in <laughs> the toy down there. Maybe is that our 80 mile an hour wind no, speed? No, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> it is wild. They've got the world champion bib. And they will be racing, maybe, in the team race tomorrow. Yeah. I can't say anything for certain. The teams will decide. Um, normally, I think the Austrian have the rules for the fastest time. Ah. But for the world terms, I'm not sure if they... Right. All written into individual selection procedures. In the meantime, we've got a big win to be proud of. And it must be a big relief for the Tobies as well. Beautiful day at the uh, yes. Sachsen Energie Ice Canal. Yes. Well, that wraps up day two of World Championships here in Altenburg, Germany. Thanks so much for joining us for a very exciting day of racing. I'm Bree Schaff. Diana Eitberger, good luck tomorrow. Your commentary you. was fantastic, most appreciated. And please join us for, I'm sure, will be a very exciting women's singles race followed by the team relay tomorrow. Okay, wow. What a day, what a day, what a day. So Austria coming up in first. This is a big deal for them. Um, they won previously, let me look back. They won in Winterberg, which I think was only their second win of their career. I was gonna ask Bomi to confirm, but he's got a job to do. Um, and so to win today with, to be a world champion is just so wild. It's so wild. It also would have been wild if Stroy Kindle uh, would have taken the title because this is only their first year together um, as teammates. So Austria really went out big today. Uh, and the Tobies, they came up, uh, they came up on third. They were in fourth, I believe, if I'm double checking. And then they made up a spot 
Lucky for them because Bots Pluma uh, had a lot of issues out of nine. That infamous nine, we've seen it so many times today. The pressure is weird, the speed is weird, they're coming off, they're skidding all over, they're putting their feet down. So Bots Pluma, they were in the bronze position, but then had issues uh, coming out of nine, and you could see them as they came up to finish, just heartbroken. And it like, when I watch it, I feel heartbroken with them, but when I watch it as just like an employee of the sport, I'm like, oh, bummer, get them next time. But I, it's hard, it, it happened and it's, it hurts. They trained so hard for all of this. So here's a situation. We've got German TV, they all got set up right here. Uh, we've got Austrian TV doing their thing. Um, and because all of them were Austrian and German, I'm gonna guess that we're gonna be here for a few minutes because we will not do our sprint ceremonies until we finish with this but i just love i need to speak to i love how the austrians always have their red bull um here ah, if we can go i know they're like waiting just over there see yeah i want to see if we can i'm going to see if i can jump in here i'll uh, see she's got it i'm just gonna i just want to give you a hug Bring it in. you're a world champion congratulations thank you this is a hug seriously incredible Congratulations. Are you, is this doping? Uh, for you, yes. No drugs, right? You didn't do any today? Okay, good. Okay, good, good. I'll catch you guys. I don't want to I don't want to stop them because they're waiting for the TV thing, so I was going to turn them around, but uh, I just want to give them a hello and just a thank you because uh, truly it's just cool. The whole thing is just cool. So everyone's getting ready. We've got the medals doing their thing. Um, I don't know about you guys, but it has been just a long day. Yeah, I just went up to them, but then, you know, I don't know. This is, this is the hard part about after the races is that everybody, they got to talk to TV, they got to do all the things. But I just want to know, do they just hand them a Red Bull? Like as soon as they get off the track, are they just like, here you go, take your Red Bull, do your thing. Um, okay, this is what I think we'll do. Let's take a little bit of a break. We'll be back once they start the medal ceremonies and then we will start talking. Uh, we'll start looking at the sprint championship from yesterday. So I'll see you guys in just a little bit. Is this how you imagine a family business with over 150 years of experience? We have to disappoint you. We are Eberspecker. We shape the clean mobility of the future and inspire our customers with smart solutions. Developed and produced by dedicated people around the world. Eberspecker stands for reliable automotive systems and components. Our aim is to offer the best quality in every application. And therefore, each of our products reflects our passion. Eberspecker, driving the mobility of tomorrow. Environmental friendly heating with renewable energy. That's what the name Hagasna has been standing for for four decades. Maximum heating comfort, innovative technology and lowest emission standards. A heating system from Hagasna can be recognized by one thing above all. Decades of reliability. Whether pellets, logs or wood chips, change to a biomass heating solution by Hagasna. Biomass heating technology. The International Loose Federation is very excited to team up with DHL. Together with this special logistic partner, we hope to do things better. In the sport of luge, being on time, exact on time, is very crucial. So as in logistic business. So we hope to be on time with our sport and also with our logistics. And also helping environment with our sustainable shipping partner, DHL. We are the official logistic partner of the International Luge Federation. So we do the logistic for the equipment of all the athletes, the marketing material, the hospitality material, on all the things which are needed at the track worldwide. What? 
The city of Dresden, capital of the federal state Saxony, is among the top travel destinations in Europe. Its famous sites like the beautiful Baroque Old Town, the River Elbe with its unique castles, and the famous Canaletto view, named after the Italian painter, are well known around the world. Dresden is situated 150 km south of Berlin and always worth the trip. Okay, we just heard a loud yell from over here. I think this is uh, Ricardo Schupp's family getting a little emotional over there. So very, very cool. But really quick, I'm going to ask Leon Felder a question really, really fast. Leon, I just want to ask you really quick. Can you describe why Altenburg is so difficult? Like we saw a lot of people come down and have issues out of nine, even from men's start, a lot of issues. Like how would you describe this track? Uh, this track is just, uh, yeah, it's, it's scary. It can get scary really quickly. Um, once you, like, uh, even if you're slightly offline, like, ex for example, for men's start, if you're a bit too early in 11, then you're always going to have problems crossing to 12, and, and that's going to set you up not so well for, uh, for the entrance in 13, and then it's gonna, you're going to have problems, yeah. I feel like everywhere I'm kind of holding my breath, like, especially 11, 12. I mean, you saw your teammate, Dominic, like, just had too much height, and it just it's just minute little things. Does it ever just drive you nuts? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, if he, maybe he would have gone a bit later into 11 and he would have managed it too, but uh, obviously that's a that's, uh, sport and, and Luz, you know, we, we measure the time to a thousandth of a second and, and it's, it's, about, it's about the small things and yeah, that makes the difference. So how do you think the circuit is feeling going with one more week here in Altenburg? <laughs> Have it, let me boost your confidence. You've got one more week here, how do we feel? I feel good. I like Altenburg, to be honest, but I'm, I'm sure that uh, I might be the only one. Or like a, a lot of people will not be a big fan of that. Uh, I, I know that the Canadians will not slide next week, so they take a week off. And uh, yeah, probably not a lot of people are excited to slide here again, especially after such a, a big event. You know, after the season highlight, you have to do another race here. You know, I think the, maybe the air is a little bit out then after this race. Yeah. Okay, we'll have to see. We'll we'll be here. Canada can go home, but FAL Studio Show will be here. You'll be here. I'll be here. Everyone, yeah. don't look so excited. <laughs> don't, don't, look so, don't look so excited. Don't look so excited. Leon Felder. <laughs> Thank you, Leon Felder from Italy, uh, joining us. Okay, we're gonna get out of the way. I'm gonna I'm gonna hop over here to be by the medals, um, and we are gonna honor our start champions from last night. We didn't or yesterday we didn't get a chance to celebrate them last night. So here is our medal ceremony for our start. I mean, yeah, so, excuse me, not start for our sprint championship. <laughs> Der Vorsitzende des Sportausschusses des Deutschen Bundestages, Olympiasieger war 1980, Rick Blessett, Biathlet, neunmaliger Weltmeister. Also er weiß, worum es hier beim Sport geht. Wir begrüßen außerdem die Vizepräsidentin des RBSV, also des Rennen Moritz Gellem, Verbandes für Sachsen. Wir sagen herzlich willkommen und freuen uns, dass er da ist, den Präsidenten des Moritzschen Verbandes für Deutschland, Herrn Andreas Traunfetter. Und Einas Vogel ist der Präsident des Internationalen Rennrodelverbandes und ist ebenfalls mit dabei bei dieser Siegerehrung. So, und nun machen wir zur Tat. Wir beginnen mit der Siegerehrung bei Sprintwettbewerb der Doppelsitzer der Herren. Auf Platz 3, Third Place. Ausgestattet also mit der Bronzemedaille. Bronx Medal representing Austria. Bronx Medal goes to Jürgen Thomas Gatz und Ricardo Martin Schöpf. Congratulations. Third place, also der dritte Platz, die Bronzemedaille. Geht an die beiden Uwe Thomas Gatten und Ricardo Martin Schöpf. Und damit kommen wir zum zweiten Platz zur Silbermedaille. Second Place. Silverman. Representing Austria. Silver goes to Thomas Stoll and Wolfgang Hindel. Die beiden 
freut sich. Also, sind wir. Und auch hier wollen wir es wieder so halten, dass wir, bevor wir die Sieger auf das Siegermodell legen, wir uns nochmal ihre Siegerfahrt gemeinsam anschauen. Ja, Martin Spots und Robert Spielhöhe. Nummer 14, keine Bankberührung und dann Richtung Ziel mit hoher Geschwindigkeit und da mussten sie sicherlich auch, wenn wir jetzt keine Fehler machen, und dann haben wir wohl sicher und so war es dann auch mit über einer Zehntel Vorsprung, wir gewinnen sie und äh, wir bekommen jetzt von Dietz die Goldmedaille, Martin Spots und Robert Spielhöhe aus Und da werden jetzt natürlich die entsprechenden Medaillen vergeben. Bronze also für Juri Thomas Gatz und Ricardo Martin Schöpf. Silber an die Landsleute Thomas Stollen, Wolfgang Kindl. Und Gold geht an die Letten Martin Smotz und Robert Blume. Aufmerksamkeit für die Nationalhymne der Siegernation. Ladies and Gentlemen, attention please for the National Anthem of Latvia. All right, there is a look at our Latvian Sprint champions. Congratulations to them, a major win for Team Latvia. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, the Latvians really are bringing the heat with their doubles teams. The women uh, got second and third for the Sprint Championships. Uh, so again, congratulations to them. And then Austria pulling up silver and bronze. Uh, those medals look good around their neck. Auf jeden Fall, dass wir sie recht herzlich einladen zur Siegerehrung der heutigen Rennen. 18 Uhr am Skihang auf der Bühne werden dann also die entsprechenden Ehrungen durchgeführt. Und äh, wer sich jetzt vielleicht wundert und sagt, naja, wir haben jetzt äh, die Sprint-Wettbewerbe geehrt, wir haben die Siegerehrung durchgeführt, aber da fehlen doch noch die Damen. Ja, das äh, werden wir dann morgen machen. Die Siegerehrung in der Sprintwettbewerbe der Einsetzer Damen dann also morgen. Heute der wichtige Termin, 18 Uhr am Skihang zur Siegerehrung und morgen geht es dann weiter.
for day two. This got wild. Yeah, they need photos. Don't let them take them off. Don't let them take it off. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations, our champs. I'm sorry about today, but congratulations uh, to these guys. Okay, guys, that is the end of our day two. They are off. The Austrians have their little handler, and they take them off. And then we talked to the Latvians yesterday. Uh, they got more stuff to do. They also have doping control. So when I went up to Gotten Ship just then, or a couple minutes ago, the woman right there was filling out their forms for doping control. So whenever you finish in the top three, you have to go pee in a cup for them, which is kind of just comes with the sport. They got to make sure that everyone's playing by the same rules. I'll get out of your way. Um, so again, today that was wild. We started. We, I feel like we started when the sun was coming up, and now we're finishing when the sun is going down. Uh, women's doubles uh, started this morning, and then we had our men's singles. Max Langenhan uh, blew everybody out of the water. It was wild. And then for our doubles, uh, it was our Austrian team, the young Austrian team that came out on top. So tomorrow we will be back. So everybody, go to bed tonight. Go get some dinner. As soon as this camera shuts off, I am not saying another word for the rest of the day because I have gone way over my word count for the day. I am exhausted, uh, but this has been a lot of fun. Uh, thank you for joining us on this day two for the FIL Studio Show. Tomorrow we'll be back. We've got women in the morning, and then we've got Team Stoffel, our Team Relay. We're starting a little bit later, so for everyone that's going out and partying tonight, you get to sleep in tomorrow. You're lucky. Uh, you can say thank you to, to Bomi. He set up the schedule. Uh, so anyways, that is it for me. My name is Kate Hansen. I will see you guys tomorrow morning for women's, uh, I was almost saying women's doubles for the women's race for the women's world champions race tomorrow morning so we'll see you on our final day day three here in altenburg